Hey everyone, if you haven't watched part 1 yet, please check it out. The link is in the description below. Now, let's dive into the video. Are you done with your filmy lines or you have more to say? He said while looking at her. His expression was unknown due to the white mask on his face. It's not a filmy line and I have more to say. Hear me out. Roses are red. Sky is blue. You don't know my dear. But my love is true. She narrated in a loving voice as if telling a lovely poem to the large audience around her while enjoying and feeling every word of the lines with her heart. She waited for a compliment to arrive in her closed eyes position but no praise came. If you're gonna continue fooling around I'll leave then. He said in a cold voice. Okay, sorry. I won't do it. But can I ask you something? She said in a questioning tone while bringing her palm on her jaw to cover one fourth of her face as if thinking something. Say. He said. By any chance. Are you into boys? Even if you're into boys I will support you like a best friend. You can trust me, partner. She winked at him and blurted out the suspicion in her heart she was having since he rejected her. This girl is on another level with her thoughts. What does she do in her free time? Nope. He only said that much. Okay. I'll now start with the introduction of this training method that school uses. You can spawn yellow stage beasts of all three tiers. Just select the option to spawn the beasts you prefer. If you choose to spawn a random beast at yellow stage, the system will randomly send a beast at the yellow stage to fight. It can be any of the three different tiers of yellow stage. Either a normal, a mutated, or a king tier. Normal beast gives 1 point, mutated gives 3 and king tier will give 10. We are right now connected to the school server so all the kills you do will be added to your monthly point as long as someone doesn't attack the beast you are fighting. If I hit the beast while you're in combat with it then the following battle won't grant any points. Let me show you how it works. Nyla stepped forward and went ahead in the middle of the room. She selected the option spawn a random beast at yellow stage from the floating menu in front of her dot magic. Room transformed into a grass field and Rio was also standing there. A small breeze passed beside his cheeks and fluttered his crimson hair. It looked as if he was standing in real life and not a virtual world. He saw a two-meter black-colored rat with yellow stripes on its tail spawned in the distance from thin air. Its body materialized in a second. It looked at them with its yellow eyes and shrieked. Each. The sound made him clench his hand as it sounded around him. The horrendous beast raced on its four feet to attack the humans as if it was real. The ground shook as it bolted towards Nyla. Rio, who was standing a little distance away from Nyla, felt fear in his heart. This was his first time facing a beast. Even though it was AI, he was thinking how he would face such a terrifying beast in real life. She hovered her right hand to the side and a spear longer than her height appeared in her hand. It had purple stripes at its triangular head that had thorny edges. She gracefully revolved it in her both hands. Yellow flame was coming out from the tip of the spear and making it look beautiful as the fire danced and swirled around her body. However, the yellow fire wasn't hurting her even a little bit. It moved around her as if it was friendly to her. Yellow stage giant rat was getting closer to Nyla and Rio felt a little uneasy in his heart as it was going to hit her. When it was just a meter away, she finally moved her spear and a straight strike went towards the beast. A spear covered in scorching flame penetrated its body that burned the flesh making a crispy sound. Blood gushed out instantly with the smoke caused by the flame making the beast closing its eyes and staggering on the ground before falling. Nyla took out her spear from the giant rat head and turned around to look at Rio. The corpse of the giant rat disappeared after becoming shiny tiny particles. His mouth was wide open. He didn't expect this cheerful childlike girl to be this strong. She was even having that gentle smile on her face while thrashing the spear in the beast's head as if poking the cheek of her favorite teddy bear. A chill ran down his spine as he realized she wasn't the flower who needs to be taken care of. She is a cunning carnivorous flower that lures insects with her deadly charm, traps them, eats them, and then expels them when finished. 
She placed her left hand above her navel in an elegant manner and bowed towards him as if a dancer bowing to the audience after finishing their beautiful performance. Rio came out of his astonishment and heard her voice, Now, your turn. Show me what you got. Before he could reply, he saw a similar giant rat materializing and appearing in front of him. Beast was glaring at him with murderous eyes as if Rio had flirted with its wife. This time it spawned near Rio, but he didn't summon his beast soul. He told everyone that he was stuck in a snow mountain shelter for a month. If he brought out his sword then it would be suspicious. Moreover, he didn't trust Nyla. She was just a person he met today. Even if she was very friendly towards him right now, she could become the reason for his downfall if he didn't act carefully. He poured some amount of mana into his legs, his eyes, and his hands. He felt as if an immense strength was roaring to come out of his body. A blue light covered his fist and he looked at the giant rat which was glaring at him with hatred. Before the giant rat could move towards him, an unexpected scene happened. Nyla saw a figure race toward the giant rat at an incredible speed. He crushed the very grasslands beneath his feet as he marched by the impact of strength in his leg. In less than three seconds, he was already nearing the giant rat which was looking at Rio with mixed emotion as the hatred combined with surprise in its expression. Realizing the threat from the human, it howled in anger and thrust with claws towards the upcoming human. Rio dodged it by stepping aside as the movement of the giant rat was slowed down due to mana enchanted eyes. He stomped hard on the ground beneath his feet and jumped straight aiming for its head. Ads by Pub Future. He smashed his right fist into the giant rat's head making a bone-cracking noise with a hole and washing his hand in blood and flesh which made him feel disgusting. Blood gushed out like a broken dam, and scattered around him like dead missiles. An AI voice sounded in his mind as the giant rat became lifeless. Yellow stage normal giant rat killed. One yellow battle point gained. He let go of the giant rat corpse by withdrawing his hand. Magic. The corpse of the giant rat disappeared along with the scattered blood and flesh. It appeared as if no battle took place because even the grassland destroyed by his destructive foot's impact had recovered to normal. Clap clap. Nyla applauded and moved towards him while saying, as expected of my prince. Killing a yellow beast in one strike. That's what you will have to do tomorrow in class. By seeing your performance I can tell you would easily rank in the top 100 of the school's elite ranking. Ads by Pub Future. A puzzled look painted on his face, he asked, what's the school's elite ranking? Our school has an elite ranking for our students. It decides who is better than the others. Being in the top 100 at the Golden Seal Military School, where there are many geniuses, raises your value in the eyes of the Federation. She said with admiration in her eyes. You're just praising me for no reason. I'm only at the yellow stage. Rio said as he thought she was exaggerating it by claiming his rank in the top 100 of the school's elites. You don't understand, Rio. The military school runs for three years and the elite ranking counts everyone without considering their year. You killed the giant rat just enchanting your bare hands. Imagine what would you do if you had a weapon in your hand and you enchanted it with mana. You must remember that it requires talent to be able to use mana enchantment but you were doing it flawlessly. I can guess your strength. You are at the peak level of the yellow stage. I don't know how you did it but you won't lose to anyone at the yellow stage with the mana enchantment of yours. Nyla said with a hint of excitement in her voice as she looked at the charming boy in front of her. Unlike others who have 50 mana at the yellow stage, I have 100. That's the reason I can use more mana in mana enchantment but I need to be careful. I forgot that I should have zero yellow stats points in others' eyes. If I fight tomorrow in the arena they will all know that I was lying about being stuck at the snow mountain shelter. My double white stats points make me have strength at a peak level of the yellow stage since you only need 20 physical powers to be at the peak of the yellow stage. I didn't expect that even if I didn't use my beast soul, I would expose myself. Now I can only hope either Nyla doesn't look at my records or she doesn't betray me. Rio thought inwardly as he exposed himself in front of her and worried about it. Hello, Rio? Why are you looking at me like that? Am I that sexy for you? Sweetie, have you got mesmerized by my beauty? Ah, I'm melting from the embarrassment. 
She placed her both hands in front of her face as if hiding from Rio and can't look into his sea green eyes. I'm going offline. Thanks for the tutorial. Saying that he took off his VR helmet. Nyla looked at his disappearing self and saw his name turning gray on her friend list. Her evergreen happy face became devoid of brightness and she took off her helmet as sadness flickered in her eyes. She stood up and went out of the bedroom. Rio took out his phone and searched on the internet Does a VR helmet keep the record of a practice battle at military school? Can anyone see my battle points? Many search results came out. He clicked on the first one and started reading. After finishing the article, he sighed in relief. So I'm safe as long as we don't especially record the match and I don't make my battle points public. That means I can farm points today. I need 19 more yellow battle points for this month. A bright smile bloomed on his face realizing he could make more points today alone. He felt bad about Nyla as she helped him a lot and he just left her virtual world like that. If I didn't meet Leah first I'm sure my heart would be stolen by this crazy girl. She is better than those people I have met in my life so far. She is a nice friend. He mounted his helmet back and went into the game. The empty room appeared once again with the transition effects. He checked his friend list which was only composed of Nyla. It showed a gray icon beside her which indicated the title offline. Unlike before when it was a green icon with the title online. He looked at other menus floating in the corner of his site and found an option to spawn a random yellow stage beast. He selected it and the surroundings changed to grassy fields. A giant rat appeared, similar to the one before. But Rio didn't use the mana enchantment this time. Ads by Pub Future. He summoned his king's silver bloom sword. A large double-edged sword with a blooming flower shape on its yellow hilt. Rio waited for the giant rat patiently. As expected the AI programmed beast marched towards him to attack after observing its prey a little. The beast was getting closer every second. Rio tightened his grip on the hilt of the silver bloom sword. As it was just a meter away, he swung the blade in a curve and cut apart its body into two as if a knife threw the butter. Rio walked away from the corpse and its body leaked blood while the top part slid down from the bottom causing him to feel unpleasant. Yellow stage giant rat killed. One yellow battle point gained. Rio practiced with the giant red for 10 minutes and killed around 14 giant rats. He had a total of 15 yellow battle points and to gain little resistance towards the bloody scene. I wonder when the mutated giant rat will appear. I only need 5 more battle points. He thought the game only spawns the giant rat but it was actually different. One needed to kill a certain number of giant rats to unlock a different yellow stage beast. He killed two more but after that, an abnormal giant rat appeared. This was a four meter tall giant rat with two tails. The yellow stripes were similar to the old ones but thicker. Is this a mutated one? Unlike before, it didn't rush toward him and only watched him like he was its prey. Rio didn't move either and observed what it would do. Ads by Pub Future. After two minutes passed, it finally decided to attack him. Each. It howled in anger as the sound reverberated in the area. Rio felt his heartbeat getting faster in fear engulfing him even though it was virtual reality. This time he used mana enchantment on his eyes and legs so he could see the upcoming giant rat. He felt the ground shaking as the giant rat marched towards him while aiming at him with its reddish-yellow eyes. I should check how much damage I can do to it without mana enchantment. My sword is a king tier, the worst should be a tie, it shouldn't lose to another king tier beast of the yellow stage. Beast was about to collide with his body and tear it apart but Rio moved and sliced at its body. The giant rat's flesh was stabbed by the sharpness of the blade and blood came out but it didn't cut it apart like before. The defense of this beast was a lot more than the previous giant rat he fought with. He failed to kill it with one strike and appeared behind the beast. It's strong, let's end the fight quickly. He didn't waste another second and enchanted his silver bloom sword. The aura of the sword in his hand doubled and its valor could be felt in the air. Magic. The four meter tall giant rat felt a threat directed towards its life as it turned around to look at the silver bloom sword with a fearful gaze. The beast was already close to Rio and he didn't let it run away. 
He stomped the ground with his mana-enchanted legs and launched himself towards the beast's body in the air like a rocket crossing the distance in a second. Deadly Sword's blade came in contact with the body of the four-meter-tall giant rat and passed it as if the body was made of fluid. Rio landed on the ground while he heard a thud and splattering sound behind him as half of the beast body fell down scattering blood and its organs around. Yellow Stage King Giant Rat Killed 10 Yellow Battle Points Gained I finally have 27 yellow battle points. I have enough for this month. After attending class tomorrow I can go back to the land of Azura. Rio excitedly said. He turned around to see the corpse which made him feel nauseous. How will I handle such a gruesome sight in a real fight? He sighed inwardly and logged out of the game. It was already 3 p.m. and he was done with his lunch. Leah might be sleeping right now. I should cultivate since I have nothing to do. He sat in a lotus position on his bed and closed his eyes. He used the breathing technique as he used the first time in the land of Azura. After a minute passed while sitting in the lotus position, he could feel the familiar world energy coming towards him and going into his body. Magic. He felt a tiny water droplet like strength entering his body every 30 minutes. This feeling made his body and mind enveloped in calmness, but the accumulation of strength was slower than the land of Azura. The world energy in his room at military school felt one third compared to the room at Empress Villa. After an hour passed, he forgot his surroundings and entered a deep meditative state. He didn't realize how much time passed, but when he opened his eyes again, it was still light outside. He checked his phone to see the time and realized it was 8 in the morning. This is unexpected. Did Leah not try to send a telepathy message last night? I have one hour left for class. I should get fresh and prepare. I can go straight to her after finishing my class. Hope she isn't mad. Ding. A message arrived on his phone and he checked his phone. There were eight unread messages. Hey, what are you doing, Rio? Wanna have dinner together? You said you would pay the next time we have dinner together. Ads by Pub Future. Don't ignore me. Rio? East Wind? Are you there? Good night, Rio. Have a beautiful dream. Hey, Sleeping Beauty, good morning. I hope you had a good sleep. Why do I feel like the invention of the phone was a mistake? How to handle this girl without being rude? I should just reply to her now. He typed a message and sent it to her. Morning. I'm going to class. After sending the message he went to get fresh and take a shower. After 45 minutes passed he opened the door of his room and walked out towards his class. Sun was hiding behind the dark clouds as it appeared rain might pour down today. The battle training class would be happening in the classroom of the first year for Section A. He entered his classroom which was half filled with students and went to sit on his favorite last seat. Ads by Pub Future. A glamorous lady with brown hair arrived after 10 minutes. We will start your first battle training class. Many of you may have already heard about a game called Kingdom of Beast. It is a game based on virtual reality where you can fight different beasts on various stages that you might even encounter in the land of Azura. We at military school use this game to give you combat training and experience for your future battles. Not only that, you can even challenge your fellow classmates for battle. This helps us to reduce the death rate in the land of Azura as the students will have some battle experience and make fewer mistakes while facing those deadly beasts teacher Milena explained. She pointed to the VR pods, you guys would understand better after seeing it so go and pick one of those helmets to put on your head. Some students, who already had experience with the VR pods, started going and mounting the helmets on their heads. Others, who were not familiar with it, observed their other classmates and picked a VR pod, and followed their steps. Rio also moved towards one of the pods and lay on the white reclining chair. He put on the VR helmet and his AI watch flashed. He logged into his account automatically and appeared in an empty hall. Teacher Milena instructed other students to create an account and asked them to join a private room called One a Golden Seal. Rio looked for an option to join the room and searched for One a Golden Seal. He found the private room instantly and entered it. The school internet was connected to his VR pod so he didn't require any password to enter the room assigned for his section. 
He appeared in an empty space with others of his classmates but unlike before it wasn't the same. It was a coliseum and Rio and company were on the higher level where seats were present but they were all standing in a spacious place where the seats ended. There was grassland in the middle which was at the lower level. It was big enough to play a football match. Some students were amazed at seeing the arena around them as it was their first time using the VR pods. Others didn't look that bothered and just waited patiently. Teacher Milena was standing in front of them as she was also using a VR pod. This is a virtual battle arena. Here you can fight a beast and gain experience. I won't explain much since seeing will be much better than listening to it. Who wants to go first and demonstrate to us how it works? She introduced the fighting ground for them and looked at them with inviting eyes. A girl hovered her hand in the air, I'll go. Her black dress made her look bewitching. Her face was painted with a proud smile and her brown eyes looked at others as if they were beneath her. Her shoulder-length hair which was brown in color was tied in a ponytail. She looked to be the same age as him. Okay, Talia. Select the Enter Battle option in your menu. It will send you to the middle of the arena. Teacher Milena guided her. She followed her instructions even though it was not needed and appeared in the middle of the arena. When Talia went to the middle of the arena, students started discussing among themselves. She is Talia Malin, one of the star students in our class. I heard she is already at the purple stage. Yeah, she is considered more talented than her sister, Nyla Malin. Even if she is more talented, the queen of my heart will continue to be the purple fairy, Nyla. It's not just you. Nyla Malin is one of the new generation's top beauties. Along with the older daughter of the Havenglow family and the young lady of the Cloven family, she will remain the national crush. Rio heard these murmurs around him and thought while gazing at Talia in the arena, they don't look like sisters at all. Be ready. I'm going to spawn a random yellow stage beast. Teacher Milena's voice sounded beside Talia in the arena as she nodded. It was a virtual reality so even without enhancing voice with mana, communicating at a larger distance wasn't a problem. A normal giant rat materialized a few dozen meters away from her. Talia didn't wait for the beast to attack her and rushed toward it like a demon. Her dress fluttered in the wind and she was already nearing the beast. A spear appeared in her hand that was similar to the one Nyla used and she stabbed it in the body of the giant rat. The beast cried in pain before collapsing on the ground while blood scattered around her. Beast was only at the yellow stage and she was at purple so this outcome was natural. Unlike the flames, one Nyla used, Talia had only attacked with brute strength. Some students cheered for Talia as she finished the beast in one hit while others were busy in their own battle as if not interested in her. Rio wasn't surprised because he could do the same with the king giant rat beasts and he had even seen Nyla doing it more gracefully. Ads by Pub Future I'm sure Nyla's strike was a lot stronger than hers. I don't understand why people call this girl more talented. He was lost in his thoughts and kept staring into the stadium with a doubtful gaze. Teacher Milena commanded other students to try. Except for three students including Rio, everyone entered the grassland. Some worked in groups to fight a yellow beast while a few students handled it all alone. However, they all struggled to fight the beast as this was the first time for them and they were not at the purple stage like Talia and one other girl, who was also from one of the seven silver sword families. Their movement was not as polished as Rio who was bullied by Helia in training. Students practiced and got injured badly during the battle. After they passed a threshold of damage which was considered death by the system they appeared around Rio. Since it was a virtual reality, they respawned in a safe zone after taking fetal damage and dying. The pain sensor they felt during the fight was adjustable so many had kept it below 20%. Rio was observing Talia from start to end as she was fighting other beasts. She didn't use those flames at all even when a king giant rat appeared. She struggled a little while fighting with the king giant rat but she was able to kill it with three strikes. Does Nyla love to show off where there is more to it than what the eye see? He stared at Talia with a doubtful gaze as many questions formed in his head. At last, Talia came back to the sitting area where Rio and the company were present. A brawny guy with black hair walked to Rio and asked want a duel? 
Not today Rio looked in his direction with dreary eyes and replied with a stiff voice as if he wasn't interested. I thought you would have at least some courage to accept a duel but the trash son of the Havenglow family only knows how to hide behind his mother. He chuckled with a mocking smile. Rio frowned at his harsh comment which took a turn to be worst. Although he had expected this to happen in his new school but he didn't expect it would come this soon. Other students heard their conversation and chimed in. Ha ha ha. Brian, don't bully him. He will complain to his mama. I didn't know he was a weakling that can't even fight a beast in a virtual arena. Such a coward. Students laughed while surrounding him and made fun of him one by one. Teacher Milena heard the commotion and raised her eyebrows as she went toward the troublemaker. Silence. She glared at all the laughing students with a cold glint in her eyes. The laughter came to a stop as they feared she would expel them. Magic. Teacher Milena had kicked out a few students in the past for causing trouble in her classes at military school even from the big families and the school didn't question her why. For this reason, everyone was fearful of her and didn't want to be in her bad books. He can't participate in the battle because of special circumstances. So don't bother him when you don't understand the reason why he is not going into the arena. She explained to the students in a fierce tone but she didn't tell them why he cannot fight. She had especially received orders from the headmaster to take good care of Rio and she was told of his special circumstances that he was stuck in a snowy mountain. Rio didn't feel difficulties with those harsh comments as he grew up hearing far worse. It had become natural for him to endure it easily and he had a good resistance towards such bullies. It was nothing compared to what he had faced in the past. He selected the option from chat to send a whisper and said thanks. Don't mention it. Teacher Milena, who was standing nearby, closed her eyes once slowly as if telling not to worry about it, which her words expressed. The class ended as two hours had passed. Rio walked out of the teaching building and started going in the Grand Du Garden direction but before he could go far he saw a familiar figure appearing in front of him. Caught you, Rio. A sweet melody voice filled with joy sounded and a girl in a green skirt with a white top appeared in front of him. What do you want, Nyla? He frowned and stopped in his tracks. He wanted to go back to the land of Azura as soon as possible and didn't want to get dragged by Nyla. He was feeling bad for not responding to her text but he saw it late which wasn't in his control. He thought inwardly, she didn't wear a revealing dress but her charm only enhanced. She deserved to be in the top three beauties of the new generation as the students were talking. Your heart but I know you won't give me that easily so let's have lunch for now. She said with a cheerful smile. I get to know you, Rio. I'm studying you closely. You're my favorite subject. You might try to push me away so I don't catch feelings for you but you're way too nice and don't want to be rude. How can I let go of such a sweet guy? Feelings can be developed slowly but being good friends with each other is the first step to building any good relationship. She knew she was shameless to him when it comes to teasing him and said things boldly. However, she was doing things to weave a good bonding between them. If they spend more time together they would have this opportunity. So, she had made plans to find him outside the teaching class as she knew about his schedule and had a classmate's sibling in his class. When his battle training ended, she came right away to ask him to go for lunch with her. Rio was about to answer her but another girl appeared near them and her voice sounded beside him, Hey, you should be careful of this girl. I'm warning you as a good classmate. She caused her own mother to die when she was born. Ads by Pub Future. Talia was standing beside him and acted as if she knew him. Her tone indicated she was saving someone from a monster. Nyla's face lost all its happiness as she heard such provocative comments about her. She thought he might misunderstand her and believe Talia's words. Before Rio could respond to this newly arrived human, Talia said in a hushed voice, Do you know her mother was a bit asterisk H? Dad doesn't even think she is his daughter. You wouldn't want to befriend a girl like her. Nyla, who was standing in front of him, had her eyes filled with tears after hearing a curse towards her late mother. She turned around and left with a rushed step while wiping her face with the white sleeves of her cloth. Rio's heart ached to see the cheerful girl cry and leave. He even replied to her coldly when she greeted him first in the morning that nicely. 
He felt as if anger engulfed him and turned his head to look at Talia with coldness flickering in his eyes. I don't even know you and you came to bother us. Who do you think you are? Why do you have to put your nose between other people's business where it doesn't even belong? What's your problem? Do you have some screws loose in your head? Why did you have to talk badly about your own sister? I didn't know the youngest daughter of the Malin family has such a wicked heart. His loud voice was heard by other students and they started looking at the duo. Talia was unprepared and never thought this boy would snap at her because she warned him about Nyla. Nobody had talked to her this harshly. Ads by Pub Future. She had everything power, money, and beauty. She was not used to getting berated by others. Boys would talk sweetly to get her favor as she was from one of the strongest families in the Federation. Her face became red from anger and she gritted her teeth. You're really a trash as the classmates were saying. You can't even fight a yellow stage beast but you have the guts to talk to me like that. If you're daring enough then show me in the battle arena. She said with a hatred-filled voice and glared at the boy in front of her. She knew he wouldn't accept her challenge so she talked about the battle arena. Besides, even if he accepts he wouldn't be in the purple stage like her who had a great family background. She knew this guy got his golden spoon two months ago. She was planning to go after Rio and seduce him as he was the only son of the Havenglow family. Even if he was an adopted son, his value was shown yesterday morning when his second mother came to leave him at school. She didn't get a chance in the class as there were many students and she wanted to do it outside the classroom. Magic. She found a good chance when she saw Nyla and him talking and he was cold towards her stepsister which indicated he didn't like her. So she came to add fuel to the fire. She thought he might like it as Nyla's engagement was recently broken with him and he didn't like his ex fiance But she was wrong, for Rio, Nyla was his first friend and it angered him when she talked bad about her. I don't have time to waste on someone like you who runs around insulting others. He said with dreary eyes. Hearing his reply, a smile was forming on Talia's face as she was going to insult him more as she thought he feared accepting the challenge but his next reply caused her blissful moment to vanish. However, I'll fight with you in the battle arena but what benefit is there for the winner? He said to her with an amused expression on his face and coldness glinting in his eye, making the audience stare at him as if he was okay in his mind. She didn't expect him to accept her challenge so she was taken aback. When someone became 16 years old they could get their AI watch from the Federation which was like a license to enter the land of Azura. Talia also got her AI watch on her 16th birthday but she had the support of the Malin family which helped her cross the yellow stage faster than others. Malin family used their contacts to make the superiors at Talia's yellow shelter assist her fight yellow stage beasts and increase her yellow stats points which helped her to enter the purple stage. Compared to Rio, who got his AI watch last month, Talia had it for five months. She didn't take long to respond as she was confident in her strength and thought nobody was her match in the same age group. The loser will apologize. She spoke with a proud smile. If I win, you have to apologize to Nyla. He said with a cold smile. You think you can win? Ha ha. I like your humor. She mocked him with an amusing voice. Some of the other students who were surrounding them also burst into laughter along with her. Looks like someone's scared. He said while his eyes glinted and lips went upward forming a provoking smile on his face. You? She glared at him with killing intent. Remembering his background she hid the bloodlust while clenching her fist and said, Okay. I'll apologize to her if you win. What if you go back on your words? He set up his net and beckoned her to fall for his plan with his provocative smile. His old habit of inviting people to his trap was something no one knew. I'm not a Malin if I go back on my words. She gritted her teeth in anger. Rio turned around and started walking towards the Grand Dew Garden while waving his hands in the air without turning back see you on Monday. I'll fight with you at the battle arena after our lecture class. The commotion had caused a big crowd. Gathered students had watched the duo early and started among themselves after Rio left. He can't even fight a yellow stage beast. How will he fight someone at the purple stage? Ads by Pub Future. He is a fool. Don't forget he is from the Havenglow family. 
It's not hard for him to reach the purple stage if they support him. Then why didn't he fight the yellow stage beasts and accepted Brian's challenge? Maybe he finds them too easy to waste his time? Didn't you see he was showing no interest in Brian's challenge or his harsh comments? We can't say that now. Let's wait for Monday, we will find out the truth. A second-year female student commented while looking at his back view while he was leaving, he is so cool. He defended our classmate, Nyla. What do you mean defended? First-year and second-year students started discussing the incident that happened earlier. The news spread like wildfire and many in the school find out how Talia came to make fun of her sister and Rio took a stand for her. The students didn't hear Talia insulting her mother as she was using a hushed voice but they all saw Nyla leaving with tears and Rio snapping at the younger sister. The majority didn't like Rio and but there were some who were supporting him for standing up for Nyla. Most of the supporting voice was female students who cheered for Rio as he defended a girl. There were even rumors going around saying things like, Rio and Nyla are childhood lovers. Malin family is bullying the older daughter and separating the two lovebirds. The rumors were just gossip for people to entertain after all. Our Rio, who was unaware of all this, was standing in front of the second floor of his apartment. He was hesitating if he should ring the bell or not. After collecting some courage, he pressed the switch for the doorbell. Ding dong! He waited but no response came. He rang the doorbell a few times and the door opened slowly. A girl, whose eyes turned red from crying, appeared. Her hair was wet which indicated that she had washed her face before opening the door. What do you need? She said with an emotionless face. I thought you might be sad so I came to check if you're alright. He said with a bittersweet smile. Thank you for your concern but I'm alright. She spoke with a straight face and a chilly voice. This frozen beauty is so cold. Wanna have lunch together? He asked with an awkward smile as he wasn't used to this side of Nyla. No, thanks for asking. You should maintain a distance from a girl like me whose mother was a bit asterisk H and who caused her own mother's death. She said in an annoyed voice. She continued speaking as if she didn't want to give Rio chance to talk, I'm going to the land of Azura. So bye. Saying that she closed the door in his face and went to her bedroom. She sat on the bed while wrapping her hands around her knees and started tearing quietly. Rio was an orphan but he didn't have a stepmother or stepsister who reminded him that he killed his parent. He didn't have a father who avoided him as if thinking he is the reason for his mother's death. Nyla's past wasn't happy either. She had a family but one that caused to hate her own existence. Magic. Why didn't I die instead of you, mom? How long do I have to endure? I wish I was never born. She cried like a little child and lay down on her bed while hugging her teddy bear. She was feeling as if she should kill herself. She was hating herself. Anyone who would see this cheerful girl tearing up so adorably would want to give her a warm hug and wipe those pearl-like tears. But there was no one here, she was crying all alone. She didn't know about things that happened after she left so she misunderstood Rio. Rio was downhearted as he walked back to his room. He took out his phone and checked the school database. The phone second mother had given him had some special privileges that he didn't know about. When he scrolled down to other students' names he was able to see their information. This is amazing, I can look at their shelter's name. Let's check which shelter they are at. He checked his classroom students' shelter names first. There were many names but he only recognized the three from the list. Name, Talia Malin. Shelter, Purple Dawn. Name, Brian Cunningham. Shelter, Yellow Skull Post. Name, Sophia Wilson. Shelter, Purple Tower of the Outcast. He paused at the name of Sophia Wilson. Another Silver Sword family. He didn't think much and kept the phone aside. He stood up and his face was painted with a sense of thrill, finally, I can go back. This time I need to register at a shelter, otherwise second mother won't let me go to the land of Azura until she rescues me from my imaginary snowy mountain. He walked out of the bedroom and entered the portal capsule. A word tag teleport flashed on his AI watch. He tapped it as his eyes glinted with joy. Although he could use astral recall, 
but it would not let him use it again to come to his room at the Grand Dew Garden. Ads by Pub Future If he used teleport at the castle to return, it would send him to the school's gate portal capsule which he used the first time to go to the land of Azura. Right now, his point of return was set to the school's gate so he changed it by using the one he had in his room. If the next time he used any teleport in the land of Azura to come back he would arrive at his room since he just set it as his point of return by using it just now. The portal capsule door slowly made a gap in a big hall and a figure came out of it. There were some guards standing with blue color armor with purple stripes on them which went vertically down. They knew he was a special human who even the emperor favored so they didn't stop him and let him go without questioning. It was night in the land of Azura as the moon was shining in the sky among the glimmering stars. The garden was as beautiful as before. He could see the fairies moving gracefully around the rainbow tree. I'm finally back. It feels great to be here. He was happy as he walked towards the Empress Villa. What if she is sleeping right now? He thought inwardly and approached his destination. The female guards were standing in front of the gate. When he tried to take the path to move inside they put their spears in front of his way and said with a stiff voice, you cannot enter. He scrunched his eyebrows and felt annoyed. These two had seen him with Leon many times entering the Empress Villa yet they still stopped him. But I live here. He retaliated. They looked at each other with hesitation then one of them spoke her highness is currently resting. You need to wait until morning then we will ask her if we should allow you to enter or not. He rubbed the middle portion of his forehead as he faced these unreasonable people. They aren't fully wrong. They don't know my real identity so it's fair enough. Let's use astral recall, then. After thinking peacefully he calmed down and decided to use another method to sneak into the bedroom. He turned back and walked away as he didn't want to do it in front of these guards. The guards were gazing at his retracting view and the two female guards started discussing with each other. I hope we didn't anger her highness. Ads by Pub Future. She will understand why we stopped him. It's her resting time so we can't let a stranger enter. Do you really think he is a stranger? She was even angry at the emperor after he got hurt that day. I thought that was just a rumor. Didn't you see how she was supporting his body when they returned to the villa? Even Yami is treated coldly by her highness after that incident. Their discussion continued for a while as they weren't able to see the crimson-haired boy who found an empty dark space behind a tree where nobody could see him. He didn't want to disturb Leah's sleep by using telepathy. He didn't even know if she was sleeping or not. Although he could ask Leah if she was awake, he wanted to give her a surprise. He cast astral recall by thinking about it in his mind. Magic. A white light enveloped his body and his figure vanished from the garden. A white light flashed near the couch as Leah stood up from her bed seeing a figure appear on the couch covered in white light. The light faded away and a boy with crimson hair was standing there beside the couch. Hi, wifey, I'm back he waved at her and a bright smile blossomed on his face. Their eyes met and their faces were painted with different expressions. Rio was smiling ear to ear while Leah's face was enveloped in surprise. He could see the color change in her eyes emotions as they turned from sorrow to surprise and in the end it became euphoric. Leah moved towards him and rushed footsteps and threw herself at him as she embraced him with both hands. Seems like someone missed me here. He chuckled and teased her. Bang! His leg was kicked by her naked foot but she didn't let go of him from her grasp. It's the best feeling to be hugged by the most beautiful girl of both worlds. His heart felt a warm sensation as she was holding him dearly. Her clutches on his back were tight as if she wouldn't let go of him even if he wanted to leave her grasp. Her ample twin peaks were tightly pressed on his chest, her flowery scent was invading his nostril and her cold skin, which was as soft as the newborn baby, was filling his heart with pleasure and giving him ecstasy as if he was in seventh heaven. It feels like home when I'm with her. He also missed her and didn't like much in the human world without this lady next to him but he was bad at expressing these emotions. Hugging last time before returning to Earth was unexpected and he thought they might meet late so he embraced her in the heat of the moment. But he never imagined hugging her after going back as he considered it would be too soon to hold each other this close as they didn't go far in their relationship. Regardless of that, Leah had a different opinion. 
After the prisoner's incident, the last hurdle in her heart was shattered and the gap became nil as she accepted Ryo completely. Therefore, she didn't feel shy to embrace him closely and last time it was him who hugged her all of a sudden so why can't she do the same? She separated from him after a moment and asked with a sorrowful quiet voice, for how long are you going to stay? An hour maybe, he lied as he wanted to see how she would react. Ads by Pub Future. She turned around and went back to her bed. Hey. What happened? Say something, Leah. He walked to the bed and asked, dot magic. She didn't reply to him and changed the direction of her face so he couldn't see her. It looked as if a daughter was ignoring her daddy after throwing a tantrum. I can stay for the whole night but that will be risky. You know second mother would get mad if I use a portal capsule to come here before she finds a solution to rescue me from the shelter I'm stuck in as per the made-up story. He tried to explain his reasons but she kept giving him the silent treatment. Okay, I surrender. I'll stay for a week but what reward will you give me for taking the risk? He said with a mischievous smile. The devil first fabricated his plan and put the trap on the ground to make her believe him. His real intention was to stay in the land of Azura for a week from the start but when he saw her being impatient about not staying here he made his strategy. Anything you want. Her sad voice sounded beside him as she turned to stare at him. He sat on the bed and said while looking at her with a mischievous glint in his eyes, how about a kiss? He pointed at his cheeks with a bright smile which took him a lot of courage to ask but he thought at most she would bonk his head but it would be better than the silent treatment she was giving. Why are they both acting weird? Women are a mystery. I'll never be able to understand them. Leah raised her eyebrows at him and looked at his mischievous filled eyes. She understood he was just kidding but she was going to tell him in her own way that he shouldn't play with fire. Leah moved her right hand towards his collar to grab him into her grasp and dragged him onto the bed which caused him to lie down on the bed. Rio was taken aback as he felt a strong strength holding his shirt and he was forced into the bed in a lying position. He was helpless as Leah was a lot stronger than him in strength. If she used this much strength in bonking my head I would have died countless times. He thought and gulped nervously. Ads by Pub Future. She pushed him onto the bed beside her and climbed on him. Rio sought his waist between her thighs as if she was riding a horse. Rio was taken aback as he saw her wild action. His heartbeat became faster as he felt her two buttocks falling on his waist. I was only kidding, I promise. He said nervously as he saw her hot gaze. Her beautiful fairy-like face was staring at him as if he was her meal. Her lips were forming an evil smile which sent a chill down his spine. She unbuttoned his shirt one by one and his naked chest appeared. He could feel her cold fingers touching his bare chest as she slid the shirt down his shoulder so his neck could appear. He shivered and waited for the outcome. He knew she wouldn't harm him so his imagination was running wild. Leah could hear his fast heartbeat and his nervousness was pleasing to her eyes. She dived in with her face and bit him on his neck. Her teeth stabbed his flesh as pain invaded him and sent an electrifying shock through his body. She was neither forceful with her actions nor she was gentle. It was enough to give him pain and pleasure at the same time at perfect equilibrium. She stayed in that position and waited for him to scream but he didn't show a such reaction. The young boy was suffering from the pain of her love bite but she didn't do it hard enough to cause a bleed. He was currently enjoying her fairy-like body hugging him and her feathery juicy lips touching his neck. Her melons, which were too soft and well endowed, pressed together on his body which was making this moment blissful for him. For every man, this was a treasure land they all wished to experience once in a lifetime. If you ask a straight man, would they want to experience this treasure land, 90% would say yes without hesitating, in case they are daring enough, to be honest with their answers. This would tell you the level of ecstasy Rio was going through. As for Leah, this was the first time when she went so wild with him. Even though it was her mischievous plan but he was pleased and enjoying it. She raised her eyebrows as her plan failed to make him scream and continue to endure it. She let go of his flesh with her teeth and used her tongue to lick it in a round movement. She did it slowly with her warm affection and followed the path where her teeth left the marks. She was doing it to lower the pain she caused him after she felt bad about her actions. Rio felt an electrifying pleasure entering his body as her wet tongue made him feel tickled. 
The movement of her tongue on his naked skin was making him go crazy. He felt intoxicated by her sudden action and his body started getting hot. His hormones were going into chaos. Leah, if you keep going further then I will not able to control myself. Do you want to continue? He whispered in her ears as if drunken. Her face became beet red hearing his words as she understood what he meant. She stopped licking his neck and slid away from his body. Ads by Pub Future. She just lay beside him. Their shoulders were touching each other and both of them didn't know how to speak as a very hot moment passed between them just a few seconds ago. They were both looking at the ceiling. What was that? Rio decided to tease her again. A kiss, Leah said in a tiny mosquito-like voice. Did you invent it? He asked. No, but I have read in fairy tale stories that vampires used to kiss their husband or wife this way. She said while remembering those books she read in her childhood. So they also have vampire stories in this world? You kissed me, shouldn't I kiss you back? He asked with a flat tone as if asking about today's weather. You can as I'm already yours and you're mine. Don't you remember the oath? She turned towards him and told him as if it was all natural. I remember but I thought it would be hasty and you might dislike me. He said while looking into her eyes. Yeah. I dislike you a lot that I hug and kiss you. You became so intelligent after just living with me for a month. She said with an annoyed tone as she didn't like how he was very bad at taking initiative. As a man, he should be the one to paddle the cycle but she had to do everything. Are you making fun of my intelligence? He said while raising his eyebrows. What do you think? She asked back with an amusing smile. I saw you were sad when I arrived. Has something happened? He changed the topic as he remembered she was upset. Ads by Pub Future. She didn't reply to him as she turned around to avoid him. Don't do that again or I'll go back to Earth. He threatened her with his bold move. She moved again and hugged him as if not wanting to let go. She was holding him in a tight grasp. Did she miss me? But why? He couldn't understand her emotion at all as a maiden heart was a complicated mystery in this world that nobody could solve. She treated Rio a lot better after she received the dream from her eyes of destiny. She could see the future and that is what her eyes of destiny do. It would give her foresight of a future in small pieces and there was no way to stop these dreams to happen. As there were a few dreams she saw that took place in reality and she couldn't change their outcome even after knowing dot magic. However, after Rio came into her life these dreams started changing. All those dreams, which were worse than the nightmares, started transforming. Each of them had a new outcome after her grandfather's words came true. Little child, don't cry, these nightmares will change in the future. Do you think this grandfather of yours would lie to you? Just wait for that one man from the foreign land who will turn this world upside down. The moment he comes into your life he will crush the destiny with his undying will and change your fate. She remembered her grandfather's words as she finally believed him after she saw that boy with her own eyes. Her head was placed on his shoulder as she hugged him tightly and snuggled into his embrace. Her head was placed on his shoulder as she hugged him tightly and snuggled into his embrace. Rio sighed and accepted the reality. How was your first day of class? She asked him in a quiet voice. It was not bad. We had to fight a giant rat. He started telling her about his school and classes from start to end. He didn't even hide anything about Nyla. I'm lucky to have a friend like Nyla. I treat her rudely yet she never complains. Rio accepted his fault in front of his lovely wife. However, our dear Rio forgot the rule that every man should remember, never praise another girl in front of your woman unless you want chaos to embrace you. Are you missing her? Leah probed him. Nope, but today she was different and her stepsister was mean to her. He proceeded to tell her about the incident that happened before he came here. Her sister sounds like a demon, Leah said as she didn't think a blood relative could be this mean to you. She remembered something and continued, so you haven't eaten anything since Nyla closed her door on your face? She spoke the second part in an amusing voice as she find it funny how this little guy was rejected by Nyla for lunch who chased him first. Nope. 
His tone was downhearted and sounded as if he was bullied. Wait here. I'll ask Yami to bring food for us. She said with a gentle smile and sat up to go out of the room. A few minutes later, she came back and saw him sitting on the bed. She also climbed back onto the bed and sat beside him. Did you accept me in your heart already that you even hug me easily? He asked while placing his hand on his jaw as if thinking something. Is it hard for you to understand even after all that? She asked with an annoyed voice. So you won't mind if I hug you to sleep like a pillow? He asked her with a mischievous voice. You're asking as if you haven't done that before. She coldly glared at him. Ads by Pub Future. When? He frowned as if he was wronged for something he didn't do. The night we slept together. She said but her face turned red after realizing her sentence had another meaning. Oh. I almost forgot. He remembered the day when he was feeling down and Leah took care of him. She treated him with warm affection and care. She was even rude to her father for him. His heart was tickling with a hot feeling and realized their relationship started developing from that day onward. Footsteps were heard and a voice came from outside the door. May I enter, your highness? Yami asked in a polite tone. Yes, come in, Leah said. She was pushing a cart with food like last time. She raised her eyebrows seeing the person in the room who waved at her with a bright smile. How did he appear here out of nowhere? But it's better. Empress face has gained back its brightness which vanished a few days ago. Yami was delighted to see Ryo as it brought a gentle smile to her empress's face as well. She proceeded to place the food on a portable table like before. Seeing two plates, Ryo thought inwardly, she skipped dinner like the second mother? Are they sisters or something that they act in the same way? For how long you haven't eaten? He asked with a questioning voice. Her Highness often skips dinner these days, Yami replied. Ryo gazed at Liya who was looking in different directions to avoid his eyes. Yami left the room after placing the food on the table. Ryo proceeded to serve food to both of their plates as he saw Liya was busy avoiding his gaze. Ads by Pub Future She moved her eyes at the food and a smile bloomed on her face as Ryo put food on her plate. They proceeded to eat, Leah ate more than him as always but they were both joyful in their hearts as they ate together again. Yami came back to clean up and bring back the plates. When do you want to sleep? Leah asked him with a nonchalant voice. Let's sleep now. He said and lay down on the bed. She also did the same and lay beside him. Before Ryo could close his eyes, he felt a hand wrapping around his chest and a head placed on his shoulder. A smile blossomed on their face and they slowly closed their eyes as their hearts became serene in each other's embrace. The sleep drowned them as they both didn't sleep properly for the last few days. They both missed each other's existence beside them but didn't tell each other as they were both bad at expressing their feelings. The great saying was true you understand the value of something when it is no longer with you. These few days gaps helped them realize how much they wanted each other which they hid when they were together. The morning was bright and the glistening sunlight clearly showed the two figures on the bed in each other's embrace. Lia was hugging Rio as if he was her teddy bear. They were both lost in their dreamland but a smile was plastered on their faces. After some moments passed, she slowly opened her eyes and found herself snuggling into Rio. I wish I could stop the time and we could stay like this. Ah, I almost forgot. I should get that for him. It will help him in his upcoming missions. She remembered something and sat up on the bed. She gazed at Rio's sleeping face and inclined towards him. She was fearing he might open his eyes and her heartbeat was getting faster. Since she had come this close to his face she decided to execute the task she wanted to do. She pecked his right cheek and left the bed slowly without making a noise. She went towards the bathroom to get fresh which caused her to not see the boy's eyes which were a little open and peeking at her back. He kept pretending to sleep and smiled internally. After 30 minutes, she came out of the bathroom with wet white hair that was covered in a towel and went to her dressing table. Hearing footsteps, Rio finally decided to wake up. He stretched his body and yawned pretending that he was just woken up. Leah turned around to see him. 
they both looked into each other's eyes, not knowing how to start the conversation. They were both bad at expressing themselves at the initial stage of the relationship and they didn't want to talk about how they slept together hugging each other. At last, Leah decided to ask him about his plans and break the silence. Magic. What do you want to do today? She asked and turned back to continue to do her hair. I have to get to a shelter and register so the second mother doesn't stop me from using the portal capsule. That's my first goal. He said nonchalantly and gazed at her alluring figure. Ads by Pub Future. Ah, I should have remembered that you need to fix that problem first. Don't worry, we have a way to send you to the shelters we own but from there you have to walk to the one you want. Do you have any shelter's name in mind that you want to go to? She asked him while turning around to look at him. I know the names of a few shelters where some of my classmates have registered. It's Purple Dawn, Yellow Skull Post, and the Purple Tower of the Outcast. He said while remembering the names he read before coming here. Purple Dawn and Yellow Skull Post are at the border of Shamer Empire. So it's better you register at the Outcast. She urged him in a relaxed tone. Why is it better to register at the Purple Tower of the Outcast and not at those other two? He asked with puzzlement. Father will give you an answer to that question. Let's focus on registering at a shelter first so you can use the portal capsule openly and stay here freely. The Outcast has five shelters under humans which includes a Silver State Shelter. So going there will be better for you and save you some time. If you go from the Yellow Tower of Outcast to the Purple Tower of Outcast, it won't take you a long time compared to other shelters in a different area. As all the Outcast shelters are in one big region and they are all under humans. Lia explained and looked at his curious gaze. Can't I directly go to the Purple Tower? He asked as his eyebrows were scrunched. You will rarely find a Yellow Stage Beast near a Purple Stage Shelter. So you need to go to Yellow Tower first which is a shelter at your level. You can easily spot a Yellow Stage Beast there. Also, our Mistborn Shelter is near the Yellow Tower of the Outcast. So you have to go there first anyway. It will take an hour by foot to reach the Yellow Tower of the Outcast from Mistborn Shelter. She spoke while walking step by step to the bed he was sitting on. But I'm supposed to save those beasts from humans so going there will only be like a formality. He said with a bittersweet smile. Nah. That shelter is very far away from our empire. Those beasts aren't under our banner so you do not need to worry about protecting them. Ads by Pub Future. A beast under our banner will have our marks on them which are those purple stripes you see on the guards' armors at the villa entrance. Just avoid killing them unnecessarily while you're with humans. She calmly said and stare into his sea-green eyes which were finally no longer filled with puzzlement. As you say, my lord. Rio teased her while she was standing close to him. She avoided his mischievous eyes and spoke, I'll bring you to the teleporter tower after we do our breakfast. Let me ask Yami to bring the meal to our room. You should get ready. Okay. He said while still gazing at her fairy-like face which turned around to walk away. She went downstairs and didn't come right away. He decided to get fresh before having his breakfast. When he came back out of the bathroom, he saw Yami placing their food on a portable table near the couch but Lia had not returned. As he was thinking of asking Yami, he heard light footsteps approaching and a white-haired beauty entered the room. She sat beside him and waited for Yami to leave. As she left, Lia took out two old scrolls from her spatial beast's soul. They were thick brown paper similar to the one she gave him previously for astral recall technique, but the size was a little smaller this time. She handed the scrolls to Rio and spoke, learn these both spells. He was used to getting such things from her so he took both of the scrolls and put them on his lap as the portable table was full of bowls. Leah brought out a needle to give him like last time. He took it from her hand and pricked one of his left hand fingers. Two droplets of blood fell on both of the scrolls on his lap and started enveloping them entirely. It suddenly moved upwards from his lap and floated in the air. It hovered in front of them before burning in red flames. Rio wasn't surprised this time as it happened the same way with, astral recall technique, scroll. An AI voice sounded in his mind as usual. You have acquired the spiritual shock spell. You have acquired the disguise spell. 
A stream of knowledge flooded his brain and text floated in front of him. Spiritual shock attacks the soul of opponent. Those at the same stage or lower will faint and those at the higher stage will suffer from a stun effect, duration depends on the power gap. Mana, 20. Cooldown, 30 seconds. Ancient disguise, you can change the appearance of the body, limited to humanoid form. Mana, 10. He read the skill's information and looked at Liao with questioning eyes for an explanation. Spiritual shock, will help you during your upcoming missions that father is going to assign you. It will activate a human's AI watch to send them back to Earth. This skill attacks the soul so the brain sends signals to the AI watch that the body is in danger. Security mechanism will activate instantly and teleport the human out of the land of Azura for a day at least since the damage was only done to their soul and they can recover it after a good sleep. She explained in a nonchalant voice. Lia had tested this spell before so she knew this would help him. She wanted to make it easier for him as he would be facing his own race. Taking it slowly would be easier for him to handle the situation in the long term. Ads by Pub Future. She didn't want to force him to grow but develop slowly. Otherwise, she feared he would break internally or change into someone different. That's great, it will save me a lot of effort. Rio exclaimed in surprise. He didn't think that deeply about her motive to give these scrolls to him. If he figured it out he would realize just how much she cared about him. Be careful though as it won't work on those whose strength is greater than yours. You might need to injure them first to make it work. Leah warned him as she didn't want him to get harmed. Got it but what about the second skill? He asked with a curious gaze. That's, disguise, spell. It will help you change your appearance to the one you want. You need another getup that looks like an Azura. You can't use your Devlin form or a human to use the teleport tower as our marriage isn't announced to the Empire. She explained but her voice wavered as she remembered she never went out of the castle together with Rio. Okay, but how does this work? He asked and scratched his head with a bittersweet smile. Just use it you will know, Leia spoke with a gentle voice. Rio walked to the dressing table which had a big mirror. He cast the spell by thinking about it and waited for any transformation but nothing happened. It doesn't work. He spoke with a doubtful tone as his eyebrows become scrunched. It won't work if you just cast it. Try imagining your hair is green then cast the spell. She giggled and moved towards him. Okay. Rio said nervously. He closed his eyes and started imagining himself with long green hair. Unknown to him, a white fog covered his head before fading away. Magic. He could feel his hair growing and coming down his shoulder. When Rio opened his eyes he saw green hair dropping down on his shoulder. A gentle smile came to accompany him on his face. Don't get happy just yet. You need to make a perfect Azura getup that you will use outside the Empress Villa. Lia said from the side and took away his happy moment. Ads by Pub Future. He nodded and closed his eyes again. He relaxed his mind to think carefully and remember all the Azuras he met so far. That middle-aged Azura woman I met the first day? Nah. Guards? Nah. Emperor? Nah. Yami? Nah, Helia? Hmm. He found his target and smiled inwardly. If I take a similar appearance as her, people will think I'm her distant family member. After deciding who he would copy he started making changes to his appearance. A white fog covered his head again and started twirling around his face which caused changes to happen. His hair color became blonde and sea green eyes turned blood red. His face changed a little and gained a warrior-like appearance but it didn't lose the charm he had before. He still looked handsome but seeing him one would think he had spent time on the battlefield for so long. You remind me of that man in your new Azura form. A surprised voice sounded beside him and Rio turned around to look at her. Who is that man? Who are you talking about? He raised his eyebrows and glanced at Leah to ask in a voice filled with jealousy. Leon Reinhardt. She said while turning around to walk towards the windows. She gazed outside in the distance as if thinking of some memories from the past. Reinhardt? Why does it sound familiar? 
His eyebrows scrunched hearing that name as if he had heard this surname before. He looked at her back and felt she was very distant from him. He was my older cousin. Eleven years ago his mother got very sick from an incurable illness. All the priests in the empire failed to treat her. His little sister, who was only eight, asked grandfather for a solution as we had lost all hope to save Leon's mother. At first, he was reluctant to tell us anything. But her constant weeping and stubborn request caused him to break his silence. He told us that there is indeed a solution to cure the disease. It was the moonberry fruit that grew in the glassy river of the Blood Hill wilderness where a silver stage shelter of humans was present. If we wanted to save her, someone had to bring this moonberry fruit from the glassy river. We sent many warriors there but they never returned. The health of Leon's mother kept getting worse as days passed. The head priest told us she wouldn't last more than a month. His little sister kept crying seeing her mother in pain and dying slowly. Leon doted on his sister a lot and didn't want to see her in tears. So one day Leon decided to go by himself without informing us at all. Leon narrated the story with a sorrowful voice. Rio kept gazing at her back and listened carefully. He was afraid to say anything in the middle to interrupt her. She continued, when his sister found out about this she was happy that her mother would finally be saved. She waited for her big brother at the teleporter tower every day in the hope he would return. It caused my heart to ache to see my cousin's sister upset, so I accompanied her on a daily basis. Unfortunately, Leon didn't return for 28 days. On the evening of the 29th, we saw a space rift opening in the teleporter tower and a figure bathed in red blood from head to toe came out of it. He moved slowly towards his little sister with a gentle smile on his face which was not recognizable because of the injuries and blood. He left a trail of blood on the floor as he walked because blood kept dripping from his body. He handed her a crescent-shaped fruit which was moonberry fruit and took her in his embrace while kneeling on the ground. His little sister recognized him even though he was barely discernible and cried miserably while she was hugging him. Ads by Pub Future The head priest had run to the tower to heal him. His little sister separated from him so the head priest could heal him. Like a statue, Leon didn't move again. He was kneeling on the floor while looking at his little sister with a doting smile on his bloody face without any speck of life energy in him Leah's voice wavered at the end as she spoke in a downhearted voice. She looked downcast and lonely while she was gazing in the distance. Rio walked towards her and deactivated his, disguise, spell. He caressed her head which made him feel her silky white hair. She moved her sleeves upwards to wipe her moist face before turning around to look at him. Tears don't suit you either even if you look cute. He said in her own words she told him a month ago. I'm not crying. She said in an annoyed tone and didn't want to accept it. I shouldn't have asked about him. It caused you to remember a sorrowful past. Rio said in a bitter voice. Don't worry about it, she spoke while she tried to act strong so he doesn't feel bad. We should have our breakfast before it turns cold, he said in a hurried tone while pointing to the portable table. His intention was to change the mood as the tension grew and caused sadness to envelop the room. Okay, let's have our meal. Leah moved towards the couch along with him. Ads by Pub Future. They ate together and Rio talked about the school. Hearing his talk, Leah slowly regained a radiance on her face. After some time passed, Yami came back to clean and left while pushing the cart with emptied bowls outside the room. Don't you want to know what happened after he died? Did we save his mother or find out who was behind it? She probed him with curious eyes. I have those questions but I don't want them at the cost of making you upset. He mumbled. I'll not get upset but you need to know why we Azura hate humans. One of the reasons is the incident with Leon. His mother died on the same day as him as if waiting to go together to the afterlife. The head priest inspected his body and found a tiny piece of an AI watch stabbed into his flesh. We wanted to find the reason behind his death but grandfather told us that heavenly stars are aligning against us. Even if we went there we would have lost many lives since we don't have any shelter in that area. There are six red stage shelters and a silver stage shelter in Blood Hill Wilderness all claimed by humans. It's very far away from the Empire and an unknown location to us as we haven't explored it so we didn't go against his decision. 
She calmly spoke in a nonchalant voice. Magic. What happened to the little girl? He asked as a questioning glint flickered in his eyes to know about Leon's sister whose life drowned in the tragedy. She lost both her mother and brother on the same day. She couldn't accept reality and became depressed. It was hard for a little child to handle all this but she slowly healed from it. However, her personality changed completely. From a cheerful squirrel to a deadly beast who made a greater name just like her brother. She received the recognition of the Roaring Protector sword which Leon always carried with him. Besides the pair of brother and sister, nobody has ever been able to lift it. Leah spoke as if telling a heroic story. That girl in the story reminds me of that lady trainer who gave me combat lessons he mumbled as he remembered the black scabbard the blonde girl used to carry with her. Are you hiding something, Rio? Leah looked at him with a doubtful gaze as if asking him to say it himself. She knew Helia trained him who considered humans her mortal enemy. It was hard for her to believe she didn't do anything to Rio. I didn't expect her to find out this soon that Helia was my battle trainer. What would I hide? He chuckled and gulped nervously. Didn't she attack you? Her questioning eyes demanded an answer from him. She carefully observed his expression to monitor if he was lying or not. I don't want to cause bitterness between you and her to ruin your sister's bonding. She didn't attack me in front of the emperor but I knew she had some old grudges against me so when we were alone training I had already used, Devlin transformation, which caused her hatred towards me to reduce significantly. He lied with a smile on his face. He tried to keep his story as genuine as possible since he could see her suspicion-filled eyes staring at him. Leah sighed relaxedly as if her worry had ended. Let's go so I can register at the outcast tower. Rio urged her as he wanted to escape the situation. Leah nodded her head with a gentle smile. They walked together outside the Empress Villa where female guards were standing. Seeing Rio coming out of the villa they raised their eyebrows but didn't ask anything because Leah was accompanying him. Ads by Pub Future. Piper, did you see that? How has that guy gone inside without us letting him in? The female guard with brown hair looked vigilant. How would I know? Piper shrugged. Shouldn't we inform Her Highness of his suspicious activity? She was wary of Rio's action. I am having a bad premonition about it, Molly, Piper said worriedly. I'm going to tell her so he isn't able to sneak into the Empress Villa again. She said and hurriedly followed behind at a fast pace. Molly hurriedly moved towards the duo who were about to enter the castle. You will put us in trouble. Piper shook her head in disappointment and followed behind her. Your Highness, wait. She said hastily. Leah turned around to look at the female guards who were approaching them. The white-haired beauty didn't like anyone to interrupt her especially when she was spending it with this guy who would be leaving soon to register for his shelter. I have something important to tell you she said in a hurried voice. She didn't even realize the mood of the environment because of her hasty action. Okay, Leah said in a stiff voice. Your Highness, last night this guy wanted us to let him enter the villa and we didn't let him go as you were resting, he might have used some underhanded method to sneak into the Empress Villa, Molly said. Hearing her words, Leah's eyes filled with coldness. A chilly aura enveloped the surroundings. Even Rio who was standing beside her shivered and felt as if he needed to wear warm clothes. Ads by Pub Future. Plop. Molly fell on her knees as the pressure of Leah's aura was overwhelming for her to handle. Didn't I tell you he will live in the villa and not to stop him? She glared at her and said in a majestic voice. Sorry, your highness. I was wrong. Molly blurted out as it was very hard to face the aura of her highness. She was hardly able to pick her words and saying things in defense required her to think clearly. Molly didn't dare to say anything as she could feel this white-haired beauty wouldn't listen to anything against the boy. Don't bully her, wifey. They had good intentions and wanted nobody to disturb your sleep. Just forgive her. Rio said using telepathy. Leah calmed down as she heard his voice and spoke coldly to her, treat him as you treat me saying that she turned around to leave with Rio. Molly stood up and wiped the sweat from her forehead as she felt countless daggers had stabbed on her the moment Leah put her aura on her. 
You were lucky she calmed down easily, Piper said as she saw the duo entering the castle. Our highness is too strong. I don't even think a red stage beast would be her match. Molly said as she was astonished by Leah's strength. Leah and Rio entered the castle and walked out from another metal door exit to go towards the teleporter tower. Sun was glistening in the sky and causing their shadows to hug closely as they were walking alongside each other. They entered an enormous grass field which Rio recognized as this was the place where the battle arena was present. However, they weren't going to that oval-shaped building. Instead, they went toward another building which was in the shape of a lighthouse. It was around 60 meters tall kissing the sky and 40 meters wide taking its root at the bottom. However, the radius of the building wasn't constant as it diminished the higher you looked. At the top of the tower, it only appeared to be 10 meters with a spherical crown in the shape of a wheel. Two guards were standing at the entrance of the teleporter tower. They both bowed as they saw the white-haired girl coming in their direction. The guards frowned seeing the blonde-haired boy beside their highness. As they approached the tower, Rio's mouth became agape and he gasped in amazement to witness the majestic sight of the building. The architectural design was on another level as it expressed the importance of this place. Looking from far and observing closely differed. The last time when he came, he went to the other side to go to the battle arena and didn't come this close. They passed through the big gate to enter. Many Azuras were present inside the tower. They all bowed when they saw Liao before continuing with their own business. However, some of the Azuras stared at the new boy accompanying their highness with curiosity. There were four rooms on the first floor and spiral staircases were present in the middle spacious portion to go on the above floors. These stairs were like automatic elevators built using mana stones and magic arrays. Rio wasn't sure how many floors it had but he could see a circular ascended platform on each floor which was in his sight. Right in front of them, four Azura warriors walked to the circular ascended platform on the second floor that was visible due to the structure of the building. One of them, who looked to be the superior among them, took out a fist-sized brown paper that was engraved with complicated magic circles. He tore it apart which caused the paper to float around and magic circles started forming in front of them. A small crack appeared in the thin air which was swirling and sucked the standing warriors inside. Space rift closed as their figure vanished from the ascended circular floor. Whoa! Leah was going ahead when she noticed her partner wasn't beside her. She turned around to find out shocked Rio gazing in the disappeared warrior's direction. She smiled gently and walked to him with graceful steps. That's a portal array on the ascended platform. You can use any of these platforms to visit one of our claimed shelters. In that room there, you can ask for the teleport glyph of the shelters we own. Leah pointed towards a room to the right side. Rio came out of his dazed expression as soon as he heard her melody voice and carefully listened to her to not miss out on anything. Ads by Pub Future. She continued, tearing it apart while standing on the ascended platform will activate the magic array and send you to the inscribed shelter point. Rio heard her statement and realized that the magic array was a lot better than the portal capsule he used to come here from Earth. Azuras could teleport to the shelters they wanted, meanwhile, when humans used a portal capsule for the first time they would randomly be sent to any shelter in the land of Azuras, and safety was not guaranteed. They would have to walk to the shelter they want their AI watch to register for the point of return. You guys have more advanced teleporters than humans. He praised the Azuras after he saw their magic array at the teleporter tower. Magic. They entered the room Lia was pointing at earlier. Two middle-aged men and an old man were sitting behind a large reception desk. The trio had their eyes red as common Azuras traits. They all stood up seeing Leah's arrival and bowed their heads toward her. The old man spoke in a polite tone, Do you need anything, your highness? Teleport glyph, for Mistborn shelter. She said in her usual cold voice for outsiders. Yes, your highness. Oldman opened a drawer and took out something from it. Here, your highness. A fist-sized brown paper engraved with magic circles was placed on his spread palms and his head was bowed in respect. Leah took it and turned around to leave with Rio. They walked out of the room to enter the other room beside it. There was a circular ascended platform present here as well. Earlier Rio had noticed nobody entering this room for some reason so they didn't use the magic array present here. 
he thought inwardly probably it is reserved for the royal family. You know what to do, right? Leah asked while gazing at him as if he was her little baby who has recently learned to walk. Rio nodded in affirmation with a confident smile. Here. Stay safe and inform me if anything goes wrong. She handed him the teleport glyph. Thanks, my dear wifey. Rio took it from her hand and pecked her milky white cheek by inclining as they were standing closely. Ads by Pub Future. He could feel his lips pressing against her soft cheeks for a little before separating. Her flowery scent invaded his nostril in that moment of the second when he closed the distance. Liao was taken aback by his sudden action. She didn't expect him to be bold enough to suddenly kiss her on the cheek. However, she didn't know that when she pecked his cheek in the morning he was pretending to be asleep so he didn't hesitate to return it back. At the end of the day, she was his wife, his closest bonding, his family. She meant a lot to him which he wasn't able to express truthfully before. Although it was kind of a forced marriage but he was more than happy to marry her. He wouldn't turn down the proposal even if he had more options because he could feel the affection Leah showed towards him every time they were together which caused a warm ticklish in his heart. He started feeling that marrying her was one of the happiest things that happened to him whenever he spent time with her alone. He wanted to treat her with twofold greater love than she gave him. So his action was reasonable as he started to understand Leah. He climbed the ascended platform and tore the brown paper apart which was the teleport glyph. A space rift opened and his figure disappeared into it. Leah saw his figure waving to her with a smile before he vanished. An adorable smile was plastered on her fairy-like face because of the romantic encounter earlier. Her heart was fluttering with bliss as she remembered the feeling of his warm lips touching and kissing her cheek. It was well said that no one would be able to understand the secret of a maiden's heart. She stood there while gazing at the place where Rio disappeared for a few dozen minutes. On this day, Rio finally went to taste the flavor of the wilderness for the first time in his life. He had no idea that the unknown paths, mysterious landscapes, deadly beasts, new friends, and great adventures were waiting for him with open arms to unfold on the other side of the empire. Mistborn's shelter was present near the Monkline Mountains. It was a purple stage shelter in a cave behind a waterfall that hid it perfectly. A space broke apart and a figure was thrown out of it. The force of ejection from the rift was light so he landed perfectly on the ground. The floor was similar to the ascended platform at the teleporter tower. Black stone walls were implanted with magic stones which chased away the darkness. There were two azuras standing nearby talking to each other. When Rio arrived from the space rift they just glanced at him for a second and continued their talk. They appeared to be in charge of guarding the room. Rio hurriedly walked out of there as he wanted to go to his destination without wasting time. Outside of the room had a narrow corridor that was three way out. He didn't think much and took the middle one dot magic. It led him to the entrance of the shelter which was in the shape of the thorn stabbed to the ground in the cave ceiling as if beast teeth were closed together. Two of Azura's warriors were standing there and guarding the entrance. They saw a blonde haired boy coming in their direction. One of the guards tapped a fist-sized button on the wall as he was assigned this task by his superiors. Thorn-like barrier retreated and the entrance was big open for Rio. He could hear the water hitting the surface outside. He walked out of the cave and saw a mesmerizing scene in front of him. A gigantic waterfall welcomed his sight. A hazy mist formed all around its surroundings and caused streams of water to form into a river. It was a magnificent sight to behold. Ads by Pub Future. He moved ahead but couldn't avoid getting wet due to the mist which drenched his clothes. The warmth of the sun invaded his body as he stood near a place where he didn't get affected by the waterfall or its mist. The mistborn shelter was hidden behind the waterfall in a cave. He could see the river going towards the south. His left and right had mountains as it appeared to be a valley. He didn't know which way to go. Ah! I forgot to ask the location of the yellow tower of an outcast from this shelter. He scratched his head embarrassingly. Hey, Leah? He sent her a telepathy message. Have you finally remembered? Her amusing voice was heard in his thoughts. What remember? I was just missing my beautiful wifey. 
he refused to accept as he really did forget to inquire about it. You don't have to butter me. Just go 150 steps to the east and look for another cave. Go inside until you find a stone button. Tap it once to open the door which will lead you to the outside. She instructed him as she was well aware of his intention behind the sweet talking to avoid embarrassment. She knew that he didn't ask her about the location of his destination. She also didn't bother to tell him as she wanted him to contact her. Although he could ask the warriors at the Mistborn shelter but she believed he would rather ask her. Okay, thanks. I'm going. He started counting his steps one two three and moved towards the east. Soon, he found the cave as it was a small entrance. Barely one person could enter this hole in the wall. Ads by Pub Future. He walked inside and followed the narrow path. It was illuminated by magic stones which were placed 10 meters gaps as if there were to light up the path and show direction. After going for 15 minutes, he saw a fist-sized button on the wall similar to a mistborn shelter. He tapped it and a staircase ascended from the ground and opening was revealed at the end of the stair which was very high from the ground. He climbed the stairs and came out of the door which was at the very top of the cave. His eyes were invaded by sunlight which made his face scrunched. The sudden bright light after coming out of almost a dark cave caused this. This entrance was also hidden by a waterfall. He couldn't stop getting wet again and escape the area to avoid it. The entrance behind him close after he walked out. In front of him was another river with a valley. There is a river outside the cave you told me to enter. Where should I go now? He asked her via telepathy. Follow the river and you will find the yellow tower of the outcast shelter. Be careful of the beasts lurking near the area. Liao warned him about the danger. Thanks. I'll go now. He said to her with a sweet voice and started walking carefully at the edges of the river. The sight in front of him appeared to be a beautiful painting of nature by a great artist. He didn't experience going to places like this where Mother Nature spread its grace. He was mesmerized by its divine level beauty. The sound of flowing water made him feel relaxed. However, his peaceful time only lasted less than 15 minutes. A beast jumped out of the water and launched towards Rio, who was walking alongside the edges of the river. He saw a 50-centimeter entity coming towards him at an incredible speed. He activated Devlin movement technique and vanished from the spot. The beast hit the place where Rio was standing and looked around dazed. Rio was already standing 10 meters behind it and a double-edged sword with a blooming flower-shaped hilt was in his hand that he summoned. Ah, that was close. His heartbeat throbbed fast as the beast attacked him early out of nowhere. It was around 50 centimeters and 40 centimeters in shape. It looked like a meaty boulder but it reminded him of turtles from his world. The shell on its back looked as if it was made from metal. Two yellow stripes were present below its eyes. This wild turtle became enraged as bloodlust filled its eyes. It shot toward its prey again doubling the speed. Rio was prepared this time, he enchanted his eyes and his grip on the hilt of the sword tightened. As the beast neared him, he swung the king's silver bloom. The wild turtle's face showed panic as the blade made contact with its body. Agony danced in its eyes as the sword passed through the beast. Blood seeped like spray from the newly made leakage and its two halves body fell behind Rio as it stayed in motion due to the law of inertia. King Silverbloom's sword didn't even put the metal shell in its eyes as it cut it apart like tofu. Yellow stage mutated armored turtle killed. Absorb the core of the mutated armored turtle to gain 0 to 4 yellow stats points randomly. No beast soul gained. Rio raised his eyebrows upon hearing the notification. This was his first time killing a wild beast and it was a mutated one which made him wonder if they were really rare like others said. Unfortunately, he didn't even receive a beast soul. He turned around to look at the two halves of the armored turtle. Blood was scattered around on the ground along with its organs which made him feel nauseous. He was having a hard time staying here any longer as the rancid smell of blood was too strong. There was a tiny pebble-sized stone covered in blood in the middle of the corpse. It was glowing yellow as if it was a jewel. Is that the core of the beast? Ads by Pub Future. Rio took it in hand and moved away from the spot. 
He went ahead while inspecting the core in his hand. It seems to be the beast core but how should I absorb it? He looked puzzled. After carefully thinking, he remembered his first encounter with the beast soul. Should I inject some mana as I did for the silver bloom sword? Let's try. He mumbled. He stopped in his tracks and a tiny amount of mana flowed inside the pebble-sized yellow stage beast core. It changed its shape from solid to liquid and entered his palm making him feel his strength raised a little bit. Core of yellow stage mutated armored turtle absorbed. Two yellow stats points gained. Hearing the notification, his lips raised upwards forming a smile. His eyes shone with excitement as he tasted the fruit of battling and raising strength. But then the smell of blood, which splattered on his clothes earlier, pulled him back to reality. I need to calm down. One small mistake would have cost me my life. He said with a bitter voice. He stared into the distance as the river was going in a curve line. Without wasting more time, he continued walking. Another armored turtle shot out of the water but it was smaller in size and speed compared to the one he fought. He effortlessly sent it to the afterlife without even using mana enchanted eyes. Yellow stage normal armored turtle killed. Absorb the core of the normal armored turtle to gain 0 to 2 yellow stats points randomly. No beast soul gained. He didn't get any beast soul. He proceeded to absorb the core the beast dropped. Core of yellow stage normal armored turtle absorbed. 0 0.5 yellow stats points gained. Only 0 0.5? No problem. Something is better than nothing, I guess. He comforted himself and kept going. On his way, he killed 7 normal and 2 mutated armored turtles. He gained a total of 8 yellow stats points. Ads by Pub Future. The valley came to an end. The stream of water went east along the mountain's foot. In the north was a grass field with shrubs and trees. He could see a tower in the distance. It was approximately one kilometer away. Finally. He was tired of fighting the armored turtles so his face became bright seeing the tower in the distance. Behind the tower, the number of trees was greater in numbers but he ignored it for now as he wanted to register at the yellow tower of outcast only. He had no intentions of going on more exploration today. As he was focused on the tower ahead, he felt a tingle near his neck. Magic. Danger. He vanished from his spot as his intuition warned him of the threat. A beast had collided with the place he was in before. It was a mutated armored turtle that came out from the river as Rio was standing near the area where the stream of water turned to the east. A chilly sensation ran down his spine. He was not sure how he gained the six senses that warn him beforehand of the danger but he thanked his intuition for alerting him. Without letting the beast give it any chance to attack, Rio moved towards it using enchanted eyes and foot, stabbing the blade in its head. Beast didn't understand what went wrong as its eyes became lifeless. Yellow stage mutated armored turtle killed. Absorb the core of the mutated armored turtle to gain zero to four yellow stats points randomly. Beast Soul of Yellow Stage Mutated Armored Turtle Gained His bad mood from earlier diminished as he heard the notification. In his mind see, a yellow light flickered and a mutated armored turtle figure appeared. He was astonished even though this was his second time experiencing it. He put it aside for now and grabbed the yellow-colored pebble-sized core. A yellow liquid absorbed into though the palm into his body but he didn't feel any strength-boosting effect like before. Core of yellow stage mutated armored turtle absorbed. No yellow stats point gained. Why is it not giving stats points any longer? He frowned. The intense bloody scent caused him to scrunch his nose and he decided to leave this topic for the future. I'll look for an answer later. Let's register at the shelter first. He deactivated the disguise spell and ran towards the shelter using mana enchanted legs. The yellow tower was around 30 meters tall and 10 meters wide. The shape at the top was conical. He didn't find it that special as it paled in comparison to the teleporter tower which was one of a kind. Two human warriors in their early twenties, who were patrolling outside the yellow tower of the outcast, saw a figure rushing at an incredible speed toward their direction. Hey, Yuan. Look there, a high-level beast coming in our direction. We need to inform Sir Henry. 
one of the warriors said in a panicked voice. Ah, that's not a beast, stupid. Look carefully. Yuan laughed at him. The first warrior's mouth became agape as the sprinting figure started becoming clear. It was a crimson-haired boy whose clothes were drenched in blood. Rio slowed down as he neared the shelter. It took him another two minutes to reach in front of them. He waved at them and the first guy whose name was Louis looked at Rio as if he was a ghost. He had recently joined the shelter so he wasn't used to this. He hadn't seen anyone at the yellow stage running at this speed. Considering the fact Rio had eight yellow stats points, his real strength already equaled someone in the purple stage. Where have you come from? Yuan asked, raising his eyebrows as this was the shelter under the Wilson family. So he didn't let an outsider come here. I was transported to a random unoccupied shelter and someone helped me escape it. I have come here to register. Rio said with a bittersweet smile. What's your name? He asked with a stiff voice, staring at him suspiciously. Rio Havenglow, he mumbled. Ads by Pub Future. Hearing the Havenglow name, both of their eyes shone as this was a legendary surname for the human race. Not knowing this family name would be impossible for anyone unless they were too ignorant or too young. Yuan worked for the Wilson family so he kept in touch with all the news going around the Seven Silver Sword family. He remembered Rio's name as he was a hot topic. He said, let me confirm with our superior in charge of this shelter. He turned around to go inside the yellow tower. After two minutes, two people came out of the metal gate. Yuan was with another man who appeared to be in his late twenties. I'm Henry Doyle. I was informed by my higher-ups to look for the snow mountain in the shelters area nearby. We never thought you would come out on your own. Please forgive us for making you wait outside. He said politely. Can you help me register at this shelter? Rio hurriedly asked. Let's go inside. I'll immediately start the process. They went out together through a metal gate. Rio wasn't sure what materials were used to construct the building but it wasn't built by humans. There were five floors and seven rooms on each floor. A staircase was on the side. They went into one of the rooms, where there was a desk and a few chairs. A few notebooks and pens were present on the desk. Henry took out the notebook and started to slide away the pages. After going on to the most recent page, he wrote down some information and kept the note away. All done. I have registered your name. Your room is first on the second floor. You will find a portal capsule inside to return back home. Try not to go into random rooms as it would break the rule of the shelter. Infuse your mana with the button outside the door. The room will be assigned to you until you move to another shelter. Have a great time. Henry explained with a bright smile. Thank you, Rio said politely and left. He took the stairs to go to the second floor. A silver button was beside each door that he saw on the first and second floors. He tapped it, injecting some mana. The door opened and a small room appeared in front of him. A wooden bed and a portal capsule, nothing too grand. Ads by Pub Future. He walked towards the portal capsule without giving a second look at the bed which didn't even have a mattress. A text flashed on his AI watch teleport as he stood inside the capsule. He tapped it and disappeared from the yellow tower of outcast shelter. Unknown to him, Henry also went into his room to return. Even before Rio vanished, he had come hurriedly to his world to make phone calls to his superiors. Aliyah Havenglow had returned from the land of Azura and took a shower to go back to sleep. A towel was wrapped around her silky blue hair as she went to sit on her bed. Ding! Her phone screen flashed and indicated she received a notification. She didn't check it as she was tired from a long day at the shelter. Ding and ding and ding and ding and ding. Five consecutive notifications rang one after another. What's going on? She scrunched her eyebrows as she find it abnormal. She took a glance which caused mixed emotions to envelop her face. From horror to worry and so on. It was hard to decipher her thoughts from these expressions and the glint in her eyes which showed lots of concern. She tapped her phone to call. It was ringing but no one answered. Magic. 
She called again. The line connected this time as someone received her call. She called again, line connected this time. Rio? She asked worriedly after learning he had gone out of the snowy mountain. Her heartbeat wasn't stable reading the text that her little child took such a big risk. Hi. I wanted to contact you but then saw your call was coming. He replied nervously as he was amazed she found out so soon. He could guess that those three people at the Yellow Tower shelter exposed him even before he returned to the earth. Why did you sneak into the land of Azura without informing me? Her angered voice was heard on the speaker of the phone, which was mixed with bitterness and sadness. I thought you wouldn't let me go so that was the only option. I also met a girl there who was temporarily living in that shelter. She helped me get out of that place. He offered her a flat lie. Hoping she would buy it. He didn't want to sadden her but what option he had left. What if she wasn't there or had a bad intention? What if there was a beast again and harmed you? You shouldn't be so careless. She berated him with a harsh voice but Rio didn't feel bad as he could feel her motherly love in her voice. Most children would have disliked it if their parents shouted at them for being careless but Rio's heart was feeling warm and ticklish as this was foreign to him. Is this how it feels to have a mother, magic? His second mother was angry at him because she was worried he could have gotten injured by his carelessness. Sorry, I was wrong. He apologized, which flickered with a saddened tone. Hearing his sorrowful voice, she felt an ache in her heart. This caused her anger to calm down. She spoke in a sweet manner, I don't want to hold you back, child. But you need to understand that life is more precious than chasing powers. You can't just dive in because you want to be strong. Don't forget that there are people who would break down if something happens to you. His heart shook hearing her last sentence. Ads by Pub Future. Although it was a lie that he was stuck at a snowy mountain, Rio never had anyone before who would cry for him if one day something happens to him. But now, there were at least two people, if not three, who would be sad if he died. Leah, second mother, and maybe Nyla? He understood her reasoning and might have not used the portal capsule, as she advised if such dangers were involved. However, it was all a fabricated lie and he needed to fix it. There was no other way around it if he wanted to go to the land of Azura again. Yes, I understand. I won't do it again. He mumbled quietly. The second mother heard his response which came late as if he said it after understanding the sensitivity of the matter. Do you want me to come to the yellow tower of the outcast and fetch you to my silver shelter? She asked with a doting voice. I'm still at the yellow stage. Do you want to see me get along with those silver stage deadly beasts? Rio asked with a sarcastic tone. Don't worry about that, little Rio. This second mother of yours can bring you to the yellow stage shelters and help you evolve to a higher stage. She said to him with a nonchalant voice. Nah, if you keep protecting me like a mother hen then I won't be able to grow. He refused her offer. You're just like your mother, won't take help from anyone. Okay, do what you like but you can always ask me if you need anything. Be careful though. She said in her usual caring manner. Thank you. He said quietly. Ads by Pub Future. He could feel her motherly affection in her voice as she genuinely doted on him like a mother. When would I find the truth? He couldn't understand why she would be loving him like her own child. You must be tired from the long journey. You should rest. Take care, Rio. She decided to end the call and not disturb him. Rio didn't know what to say as he didn't speak anything. The connection line ended. He checked his phone for the newly frozen girl's messages, but there wasn't any notification from anyone. I wonder if Nyla will stay cold to me. He sighed inwardly. His eyes stared at his sleeves which had dried stains of blood. He scrunched his face and stormed into the bathroom. After taking a relaxing shower and changing back into new clothes, he decided to return. A white light drowned his figure and he disappeared from his room. He appeared on the couch as usual but Leah was nowhere to be found. He went downstairs to look for her. Yami was busy in the kitchen preparing for lunch. Rio didn't find her there either, so he decided to send her a telepathic message. 
Hey wifey, I'm back. Where are you? He asked her in an eager tone. I have come outside the castle. I'll come back soon. You should look for father in the castle. He wants to talk about your upcoming missions. She told him in a sweet manner. Where to find him? He questioned. Just ask Yami. She said in her gentle voice. Okay, have a good time outside. He bid her farewell. He asked Yami who led him to the castle. Dylan was in his study room doing some paperwork. Yami asked for permission from the emperor and they entered the room. Dylan indicated Ryo sat while doing his paperwork, and Yami left afterward as her task was done. He waited for ten minutes quietly and saw the emperor was closing the papers and keeping things aside. Ads by Pub Future Sorry to keep you waiting. I wanted to finish this before having a good talk with you. Dylan smiled mysteriously. No worries. It's fine. Rio wasn't sure how to respond since the emperor himself was apologizing. I was impressed by your actions last time when you protected Lia against the human prisoner who was escaping. I believe the time has come for you to start with the missions. Before that, you need to understand how the empire works. So listen carefully. The emperor said and stood up to spread a rectangular map on the study table. The map was similar to his world. The great land was surrounded by water. But the continents weren't at the gaps as it was connected to form a big one. The direction was indicated on the map with news on upright left down respectively. This is a map of the land of Azura or you can say the Blue Star. Our Shamer Empire is in the very east currently occupying 10% of the land. The other 20% consists of the wilderness and shelters we had claimed. The rest of the 70% area that we haven't claimed, we call it corrupted lands. Shamer Empire is a safe place where Azura lives. There are five major cities, managed by four great clans and three powerful sections magic. Mistblade Clan, Rainheart Clan, and Spiritheart Sect as well as Ancient Society Palace, are completely loyal to us. On the other hand, Strongblaze and Wolf Mountain Sect have neutral standing. Currently, we only have one clan that doesn't like the royal family. It is the old royal clan that ruled the Shamer Empire before us. He paused and stared at Ryo as if waiting for an upcoming question that he was already aware of. Ryo knew he would need to learn about this world's geography, history, and politics but he didn't know Dylan would teach it himself. Didn't Yami mention that the daughter of Mistblade was Leah's childhood friend? Ryo was thinking inwardly as he heard many foreign names in one go. The Mistblade and Reinhardt were the only two names he had heard before. Why don't you pluck out this rebellious clan if it's a threat to the royal family? He asked doubt as Dylan expected. The emperor continued, after receiving the question he was waiting for, the simple answer is that we don't want to have a civil war while giving humans a chance to triumph over us. Ads by Pub Future The standing of the other two neutral powers can go against us any time to support the Clifton clan if we make rash decisions. Their foundation is stable and can't be neglected. They have very deep roots, which is the reason they possess thousands of years old heritage. How is this going to help me in the upcoming mission? Don't tell me you want me to infiltrate their clan as a spy. Ryo was confused why the emperor was telling him all this so he blurted out nonsense out of instinct. Ha, huh, why would I make my son-in-law a spy? Just listen, I'm not finished yet. To suppress these neutral powers and the enemy clan we need to have more shelters under our control. It not only helps us against humans but also makes us prepare for upcoming future battles we may have among Azuras. He laughed heartily and explained. If you just have to claim shelters you can send anyone. Why send the innocent me to dirty my hands? Rio narrowed his eyes as he was suspicious of this man who wasn't honest with him in their first meeting. He couldn't forget how Emperor hid the main reason for Leah marrying Rio. Dylan told him that it was due to transferring powers which can only be inherited by someone who has not awakened innate talent yet but the main reason was prophecy. If we start taking down shelters openly, then those neutral powers along with our enemy clan may also start preparing against us. I don't want to alert them. They weren't a problem as long as I am still here. However, I barely have time left. 
before I leave, I want to make sure. They don't become a threat to Lia. His eyes shone with a mysterious saddened glint. What do you mean you barely have time left? He scrunched his eyebrows hearing him say that. His heart thumped as he felt some ominous information was going to be revealed. Don't forget this, Rio. A great sage once said, greed makes a man blind and foolish and makes him an easy prey for death. This greed became the reason for my downfall. I wanted to ascend to the unknown stage beyond the golden stage. I found records in ancient books that a place in corrupted lands has a mysterious dragon nectarine tree that can help a person ascend to the next stage. I ventured deep into corrupted lands, where I found the place with the mysterious tree in a ruin. There were ten ice-like transparent and cold fruits on the tree. In the record, it was said one can only pluck one of these dragon nectarine fruits. I took one fruit and consumed it. The effect was sudden as massive energy rushed into my body and filled the dantian to the brim. I felt that I would reach the next stage by refining the energy essence stored in my dantian. But I went to pluck two more, the moment I touched the fruit, I was thrown out of the ruin by a majestic force, and the energy in my dantian transformed into a red worm which started slowly sucking away my life essence. Dylan's voice was filled with bitterness. One could tell by looking at his expression how much he regretted the unnecessary desire that devoured him whole. Rio's face darkened upon hearing the story. He wasn't close to the emperor but at the end of the day, Dylan was the father of Lia. He didn't want his wife to become an orphan like him. He didn't know the agony of losing a father but he knew the pain of having none at all. I don't want her to be saddened. He clenched his hand as he thought about Leah's condition if Dylan passed away. He wanted to do something for her as it was always his wifey who supported him. He has never been able to repay the kindness and love she showered Rio. Is there no way to save you? He hurriedly asked with a tinge of hope. Maybe if my old man was alive, he would have known a cure, Dylan spoke with a bittersweet smile. How much time do you have left? Rio asked. Less than three years. The emperor responded without any worry. Ads by Pub Future. Three years. Rio clenched his fist and gritted his teeth. He was only in the yellow stage and he was clueless about how to save the emperor. Being weak made him helpless. The crimson haired boy was of no use because of his low strength. Don't worry about me. If you want to do something for your dear father in law, then help me claim and clear out all the human shelters around Sharon Empire. I can happily leave my body thinking Liao would be safe without my protection. Humans in these anti-parties wouldn't be a threat if we have enough shelters under us. Dylan said in a nonchalant voice looking at Rio with hopeful eyes. How are these shelters going to help? His face was painted with puzzlement. Each shelter has an emperor spirit of the region. They keep their heartstone in their statue chamber. When you drop blood on their heartstones, you will become the sovereign of that emperor's spirit and their shelter. The Devlin family has a secret technique that assisted us in becoming the new ruler of this empire. This can help us to control all the beasts under the emperor's spirits and the shelters of the heartstones we possess. So the more shelters you claim the bigger strength we acquire. Dylan spoke while looking at him with an expectant glint in his eyes. How many of these shelters do I have to clear? Rio asked with a questioning tone. There are 150 yellow, 50 purple, 30 black, and 16 red stage shelters around the Shamer Empire's border. Because these shelters collide with the Empire's periphery region, many humans attack the beasts for skills and cores that have pledged their loyalty to us. Dylan spoke with a bitter voice. 150 yellow stage shelters? 50 purple stage shelters? How am I supposed to do that? This will take me a lot of years to claim. Here I don't even know how to claim a shelter and we are running out of time. Rio complained with a bittersweet smile. Ha ha. We don't have to waste our time on the yellow or purple stage shelters as we can claim them later after we have higher stage shelters and beasts under us. You're still at the yellow stage so it's better if you go after the yellow stage shelters first that are under humans around the Shamer Empire's periphery. It will be like your practice match before the official battle starts. Dylan chuckled and explained. That's better. 150 was an astronomical number. 
Rio sighed in relief hearing he didn't have to claim that many yellow stage shelters. Magic. Ads by Pub Future. That's all you needed to know. Let me pass you the secret technique that will help you control the beasts under us. Dylan walked out behind the desk and hovered his hand in the air and pressed his palm on Rio's forehead. A glimmering light flowed from his forehead to his hand which went through Rio's forehead. A cooling sensation entered Rio's body through the forehead like the last time when the emperor transferred some skills. This process took a few seconds then Dylan removed his hand. Unlike before, it was easier this time. He didn't feel any pain or electric current. A notification sounded in his mind and a screen floated in front of his eyes, which showed him the information. You have acquired the Ancient Devlin Beast Emperor spell. Ancient Devlin Beast Emperor, beasts under Devlin's bloodline banner would listen to you as their leader. Passive. He got dazed looking at the information about the spell. It was a very powerful ability that would let him control numerous beasts under the Devlin's bloodline banner. His heartbeat thumped with excitement just thinking about it. He wanted to try this skill out but there were no Devlin banner beasts available nearby. Rio heard footsteps approaching the study room and someone knocked on the door. Come in. The emperor said with an eager voice as if he was waiting for the person who just arrived. Magic. Rio turned around to look at the figure that just come and his face became surprised with some bitterness. The emperor said with a grin as the person walked into the room, for your first mission, you don't have to go to the human shelters. First, go to the corrupted lands with this lady and get some experience on how to claim a shelter. Why do I have to go with her? Rio blurted out instinctively. The girl standing beside him didn't even find it rude and minded him as she expected this reply from him. It's your first time so you need someone to guide you. Corrupted land is not a safe place like the one in the periphery of the Shamer Empire so you need someone stronger like her to protect you. Also, you have to get familiar with the new ability you just learned. Dylan responded. Protect? I would rather feel safe with a deadly beast than her. Rio retaliated and his face shadowed with bitterness as he didn't want to go with the girl beside him. She won't harm you, Rio. Because when she was little she used to tell Lia. Dylan stopped in the middle as he was interrupted and his eyes gazed at a dagger dancing in the lady's hand. He gulped nervously and a cold wind swirled around his crotch as he remembered her vicious action from last time. What did she say to Lia? Rio frowned as he saw the emperor hesitating to complete the sentence. Cough, cough, nothing. You will find out yourself when the times come. He said hurriedly as he wanted to skip the topic. Although he liked to tease his children, he can't lose his little brother because of his blabbering mouth. Rio looked beside him and saw her playing with a dagger. His shoulder dropped in sadness as he didn't like their plan at all. She is working alone on this secret mission because she was the only one who can use the ancient Devlin Beast Emperor spell besides me and Leah. Since you have joined our family, you are also given our secret ability which can only be taught to very trusted family members. Ads by Pub Future. So from now on, you will be working with Helia together as a team to claim the shelters under our enemies' noses. When you bring a heartstone of Emperor Spirit, either give it to Lia or me as we will bind it with our blood to make those beasts under our banner. As for shelter-related missions, you can ask Helia as she will be also in charge of giving you missions to claim the shelters around the Shamer Empire. You don't have to report to me, just find her as she will be the one to guide you. That's all I wanted to say. Ask if you have any doubts regarding this matter. Emperor Dylan explained and looked at him to see if he had any questions about all the stuff he had told him. The girl who arrived earlier was the lioness, Helia. She was in her usual warrior-like armor with a sword. Although Rio found her gorgeous like Nyla, but he wasn't happy to see her as he shared bitter memories with her. When do I have to go? He asked in an annoyed tone. Now, follow me, it wasn't the emperor who said it, the blonde-haired beauty spoke coldly and walked out of the room. Good luck to both of you, Dylan said with a cheerful smile and bid them farewell. Rio followed the lioness half-heartedly as he was not given a choice to pick. They walked out of the castle to go towards the teleporter tower. Sun was brightly glistening in the sky and forming their shadow which barely touched each other due to the distance between the duo. Hey, wait! 
Rio spoke and halted his steps as he remembered something. Why? She turned around to glare at him with a frown. He wanted to tell her what he just remembered but it would be bad if others heard about it so he walked towards her and stopped very close to her face. He gazed into her beautiful red eyes and leaned forward slowly. Helia's heartbeat became faster as she saw him getting closer to her face. Her grip on her sword tightened as she was ready to teach him a lesson if he crossed his lines. Ads by Pub Future Although she said she would marry the one Leah married when she was little. That didn't mean she would allow a playboy to be around her lovely sister. She only wanted the best for Leah. If this man in front of her tried anything funny she wouldn't hesitate to slaughter him. However, she would only harm Rio if he had such perverted ideas and did what she thought he would do. But that was not going to happen as Rio wasn't that kind of person. His face was getting close to her as his warm breath brushed past her neck and a voice whispered causing a tickle in her ear, Leah has instructed me to disguise as an Azura before going to the teleporter tower. His nostrils were invaded by a fragrance of jasmine flowers as he got near her and came closer to her face. He considered her like a rough warrior who didn't have the gentleness of a lady and acted adorably but his ideas, as well as beliefs, got shattered into tiny pieces when he leaned close towards her to whisper in her ears. He only became dazed for a second and calmed himself down. At the end of the day, she was the sister of his wife. He was not allowed to think about her in that way. Helia on the other hand, loosened her grip on her sword as she realized his pure intention. He is not a playboy. She sighed in relief as she saw him in front of him. She never felt that he looked at her with lustful eyes, being a female warrior with an alluring body she had experienced it a lot of times while traveling and fighting but this crimson-haired human was different. His deep sea-green eyes never had a hint of lust since she met him. They only had fear, sorrow, and some unknown emotion she couldn't understand. Sometimes she even got to see pity and friendliness in his eyes but she never saw the lust for her and he never made her feel uncomfortable. That was also the second reason she started to dislike him less as his character was best even among Azuras. However, her face changed at an astonishingly fast speed as she saw what was in front of her. Her eyes became moist and she put down her guard because of the sight in front of her. She moved forward and threw herself at him as she coiled her hands around him. Rio, who had just used his disguise spell, was taken back. He wasn't prepared and never imagined she would be hugging him in this life. For the lioness to act like a little child was very unbelievable for Rio. His heartbeat raced due to her hugging him so dearly. The jasmine scent once again welcomed him. Rio tasted the soft and warm sensation of hugging a domineering lioness as her ample bosoms, which were tightly covered in cloths, pressed on his body from the front. The feeling was familiar as Leah hugged him usually but getting hugged by another woman was different. Helia wasn't a divine beauty like Leah but she was at a similar level as Nyla who he thought to be the second most beautiful girl among all girls he met or saw on TV. Rio felt his shirt getting wet and the body in his hug was shaking as Helia's eyes were weeping uncontrollably. The atmosphere made him dazed he didn't know how to react so he stood up like a statue. Big brother. She sobbed with happy sad mixed emotions, forgot for a second where she was standing and her brother had been long dead. She saw Leon many years ago and his image in her memory was similar to how Rio looked. There were some differences but not big and people tend to change a little as they grow up and Helia saw her beloved big brother long ago. So the sudden transformation of Rio becoming Leon caused her past blissful dream that she always wanted to happen to come true. She didn't even question what happened in front of her if it held any truth and was possible by common sense as she desperately only wanted to believe it even if it was a lie. However, after she cried for like 10 minutes, her foggy saddened mind became clear and she started questioning reality. She remembered what had happened. Her brother coming back alive wasn't possible and Rio being Leon was not possible either as he was a human. Discrimination was at its peak. If Rio hugged her then he would be a playboy but it was fine when she did the same. She was truly unreasonable. Her moistened red eyes began to tremble as she hurriedly separated herself. She was drowned in confusion as to what had happened. This was the man she wished to slash only moments before. If he had any funny thoughts. Ads by Pub Future. Why did you disguise yourself as my brother? 
she asked with a glare and demanding tone as a hint of betrayal was flickering on her expression. I have never seen your brother so don't blame me. I just randomly got this appearance on my second try. He offered her a half-truth. His intention was never to be Leon but he designed his new appearance considering Helia as his model in mind. He was innocent as it was heaven plans to give him some similarities to look like her big brother. If it's heaven's will then I should continue to use this azure I get up. At least she wouldn't harm me thinking I'm Leon, would she? He thought inwardly. Helia gritted her teeth in anger but her heart was melting, looking at the person with a similar appearance, she grew up admiring and loving. She wanted to embrace him again but her strong willpower helped her regain her sanity. What would you do if one day a person who was your little happy world appeared in front of you? Whom did you always search for and wished that he came back? Won't you feel overwhelmed emotionally? That was exactly how Helia felt. She had mixed emotions. She knew Rio wasn't Leon but she still wanted to believe he was her big brother. Her desperate heart knew no limits. Rio could see her condition as new colorful expressions danced on her face and eyes that mostly stayed emotionless. We already look alike so how about this, you can call me your little brother if you want. He asked her with a gentle smile. Although he didn't like Helia much, but after hearing her story that day he hoped that she would smile again and gain some emotions like a normal girl of her age. Our Rio was a gentleman so he offered her that she could call him her brother. Even if you look like big brother Leon. I'm never going to think of you as my brother. She said coldly, her face regaining the coldness from before but. A memory from the past was playing into her thoughts. Leah, I won't let another man take you away from me. You cannot marry to live with him in the future. Little Helia said stubbornly with a sorrowful face. But, grandfather has said that I have to marry that man from foreign land if I wish to live. Little Leah spoke to the little girl whose eyes turned moist as she heard her response. Ads by Pub Future. Big brother already left me. You will also leave me. How will I live without you both? Am I that bad, Leah? I don't want to be in this unpleasant world if you also leave me one day. A stream of tears rolled down her baby-like cheek. Leah wasn't a child who had many people close to her. She gained maturity at an early age due to the nightmares and meeting people who tried bootlicking to gain favor. She hardly trusted anyone as she considered them fake because they wanted to make a friendly relationship for their personal benefit. Since her very little age, only three people were able to create an important place in her heart which was her father, her grandfather, and her cousin sister. Ah, Helia, don't cry. Okay, I won't marry anyone. I will not go anywhere without my sister. Leah wiped her tears with her delicate hands. But what about grandfather's words then? Won't you die if you don't marry that man from prophecy? Helia asked adorably with a saddened face that had a flame of hope after hearing her sister. So what should we do then? Leah asked with a puzzled face. Take me with you to your new home when you marry and meet that man. Helia's face brightened as if found a good solution. Leah hesitated as she knew what it meant to bring her together. After thinking calmly she decided to make her understand the gravity of her words. Don't you want to have a family when you grow up? Leah asked her. But aren't you, my family? Helia asked with questioning eyes. No, you have to find a husband in the future and make a family with him. She explained her calmly. If that's the case. I choose the person that my sister will marry a little blonde-haired girl said with a determined face. But? Leah hesitated once again as this was a complicated topic. You don't want me in the future your family? Helia asked with a sorrowful voice. She didn't think her little sister would be so carefree picking the same husband as her. But one thing was understandable for her, Helia only wanted to marry the same person as her because she cherished Leah a lot. If someone loved you this much, could you easily refuse? Considering the fact that it was not that rare for a man to have more than one wife and take another woman as a concubine in the world of Azura, Leah decided to throw the responsibility to our Rio who hadn't even been to the world of Azura yet. It's not up to me but the person who will come from the foreign land. He would have to accept you Leah said with a worried look. Leave that to me. 
I'll beat him up until he agrees, Helia said with a mischievous glint in her eyes. She continued to ask, so, would you let me marry that man if he agrees in the future? She was looking at Leah with hopeful eyes. She didn't hear Leah's response as her sister was thinking deeply about her abnormal request. Helia was holding back her tears as if Leah disagreed they would rush out of her eyes again. I hope the man I'll marry doesn't hate me for this. After a few minutes of contemplation, Leah finally answered, Okay, if he accepts then we will be one sweet family and we can live together. Although she understood what it meant to share her husband but she also loved her sister who was like an orphan. After Leon and her mother passed away, she took care of Helia like a parent despite being the same age. Leah's maturity was a lot greater than a child at her age because of the nightmares she had got while growing up. She mostly spent her time in the library to find an answer to her nightmares. Ads by Pub Future It was normal for a man to take more than one wife in her world although her father never married another woman. However, she wasn't sure how the man from the foreign land would react after finding out about the arrangements waiting for him was. She just hoped he didn't dislike her sister and her for this unfair plan. Pinky promise? Helia said adorably while hovering her right hand and placing her little finger in front of her. Leah smiled and said, Pinky promise. Cheerful laughter of little girls resounded in the room as the pair of sweet sisters built the foundation of the great harem story that's going to be revealed in the future. Our Rio didn't even know his fate to marry the lioness was sealed right there right then which he couldn't escape. This was also the reason Helia couldn't agree to call her future husband her brother even though it was hard to accept Rio in her heart yet due to him being a human. Why is she so stubborn to hate me? He couldn't understand why she didn't want to take him as her little brother if it can bring a little happiness to her. Rio was unaware of all the thoughts going through Helia's mind as he was sold to Lioness even before he arrived in this world. I can't accept you as my brother because you're Leah's husband. She grumbled inwardly as she disliked it to imagine him as the person she begged to be married to in her childhood. He is a human. I can't be with someone from their race who killed Big Brother. She clenched her fist and turned around to walk towards the teleporter tower not wanting to continue this topic anymore as she was quite embarrassed. Rio was still amazed at how she hugged him and remembered her soft body pressing on his but he didn't wander around this thought much. He shook his head and followed behind her. They entered the tower and Azura's warriors gave a salute to Helia as if she was their boss. She went to the teleport glyph, room where two middle-aged men and an old man were present from the last time he had come with Leah. They all became alert seeing Helia enter the room and stood up to give a salute to Helia and looked at Rio with raised eyebrows. They saw him last time with Leah but they didn't dare to ask her about him but this time when it was Helia so the old man decided to satisfy his curiosity. Welcome to the teleporter tower, princess. The old man greeted her and looked towards Rio. He continued, I apologize but I didn't recognize this young man. Is he your cousin, princess? Helia's eyes twitched hearing him calling Rio her cousin. But she was helpless as she didn't want to blow his cover. People would be suspicious of him if she disagrees now. Although the royal family could create an identity for Rio but Helia understood that their best bet was to call Rio her long relative or cousin since they looked similar. She didn't want to risk their secret plans behind their enemy's back. If people saw a random person joining Helia all of a sudden on her expedition it would be suspicious.magic. She knew there could be spies of other clans in the royal family so she decided to play along with Rio's story. Yeah, he is my long-distance relative. His parents want me to train him so I'll be taking him to give him some battle experiences. Helia replied with a flat voice. The old man was very respected due to his old age so Helia didn't want to be rude to him. Because she grew up seeing him from little age, it was odd for her to act almighty and domineering to him despite being a princess. The old man smiled and said, young man, learn well from the princess. I wish you a great future ahead and hope you make a big name like her. Thank you, Rio mumbled politely. The old man continued while moving his eyes to look at Helia, which shelters, teleport glyph, do you want, princess? Blood sea stronghold shelter. She said with a stiff voice. Okay, give me a moment to find it. Oldman went towards the wall to a box and opened it to take out a, teleport glyph, from it. He retrieved it and said, here, princess. 
Helia took the fist-sized brown paper from his spread palms and turned around to leave. Rio followed behind to enter the other room with the circular ascended platform. She climbed the ascended platform and said to Rio who was standing below, come quicker before I kick your ass and drag you forcefully. Why is she so vicious? Rio gulped nervously and climbed the ascended platform. Seeing him beside, she tore the paper of, teleport glyph. A space rift opened and their figure vanished into it. Blood Sea Stronghold Shelter was situated in the Blood Sea of the Corrupted Land which wasn't claimed by Azuras. It was surrounded by water from three sides and Dargus Isle on one side which was connected by a bridge. A tiny slash in space appeared which increased in size to form a rift and the blonde-haired duo came out of it. Rio landed perfectly on the ground with Helia as he had experienced it once so the force of ejection was easily managed by him. However, a splashing sound was made and he find out his foot emerged in a reddish-colored liquid. The coldness invaded his leg as his pants got wet by submerging in water. The ground was similar to the ascended platform but it was drowned in blood-like water. It wasn't giving off a scent of rancid blood but was similar to seawater. The walls were made up of mossy stones with vines hanging from the ceiling. Two azuras were guarding as usual seeming to be tired and lazy. When they saw Helia appearing they became alert and straightened their body to salute her. Ads by Pub Future Helia ignored them and walked out of the room making splashing sounds on her way. Seeing her leave, Rio followed her hurriedly. A cubicle building appeared in front of his sight which had its walls made of mossy bricks similar to the ascended platform room and vines hanging from the roof. Spiral staircases were there which lead to higher floors. Magic. The number of Azura's warriors on the first floor was greater than he had seen in the Mistborn shelter as he saw a dozen of people walking around. They didn't salute Helia like the guards at the entrance as if they didn't recognize her. Helia took the route that went straight out towards the exit. The outside of the building was surrounded by blood-like water as if floating or built above it. A dome-like structure was present on top of the cubicle building of the shelter. He was amazed seeing the scenery in front of him. He hadn't seen such abnormal water in dome-like building before. So it was natural for him to be surprised. Rio could only see a bridge on the left side of the entrance that was connected to an island far away which was visible due to engulfing in the greenery. The mossy stones made bridge was 2 meters wide and 10 meters above the water level. A red light flickered around Helia and a 3 meters tall wolf-like creature appeared. It was similar to a wolf from his earth with white fur and a pointy tail with a triangular shape at the end. Its claws were as sharp as a dagger which sent a shiver down Rio's spine. It looked magnificent, majestic, and mighty. Whoa, what's this? He blurted out instinctively. It's a red stage demon tail wolf, a mount-type beast soul that we will ride to go Dargus Isle. If we go on foot it will take us a lot of time. Helia said and stomped the ground. Swoosh. She jumped upwards in the air and landed on the beast's back. Ads by Pub Future. She spoke coldly, climb up fast, we have to reach that island where your next training will start. Rio didn't think much and used his, Devlin movement technique. He vanished from the ground and teleported beside her on the back of the giant wolf mount. He sat behind her comfortably. She was a few inches apart from him as they had sat very closely. Helia raised her eyebrows seeing him use this method to climb up and snorted in annoyance. Don't fall off, grab something tightly. With a sudden warning from the blonde-haired girl, the giant wolf mount started moving on the mossy stones made bridge that went towards the Dargus Isle. It started increasing its pace as it marched with incredible speed toward its destination. Rio didn't think it would be this fast all of a sudden as he was caught unprepared. He almost slipped off from the back of the mount but his hands grabbed something soft at the last moment. It was Helia's slender hand, which caused her to turn around to glare at him with annoyance. There is nothing else to hold, Rio said with a bittersweet smile but he had to use mana enchantment to boost his voice to make it sound louder because the fast speed was making it hard to communicate while riding this mount. Rio had nothing else to grab except that and he was afraid that the wolf would get angry if he grabbed those white furs. After understanding his reasons, she didn't mind and focused on what was coming in front of her. Their clothes fluttered in the wind as they rode on Demon Tail Wolf for 15 minutes before the Dargus all started getting bigger in front of their sight. An enormous island, 
which was facing the Blood Sea, welcomed their vision. Many tall trees with crimson leaves were arranged on its periphery. Rio wasn't sure if it was due to the effect of Blood Sea or something else. Demon Tail Wolf crossed the bridge and entered the isle as it passed through the tall trees. The forest of the Dargus Island was insanely silent which caused a frown to appear on Rio's forehead. Since he had entered the Dargus Isle and passed many trees he didn't see a single wild beast so he was confused. Even the stillness of the forest appeared as if they were afraid of something terrifying. Emperor said that corrupted land is more dangerous than the wilderness around Shamer Empire so why we haven't encountered any beasts here? Rio asked with a questioning tone. Beasts in this area are only of yellow and purple stage. They won't appear or lower their guards unless I hide my aura and recall the Mount Beast soul. Helia explained with an emotionless voice. Ah, didn't she say the demon tail wolf is at the red stage? Doesn't that mean she is at least at the red stage? Realization drowned him as he forgot to notice these details earlier because he was too focused on his surroundings and getting used to riding the fierce demon tail wolf mount. I thought you would be 18 at most when I met you. I didn't know you were older than how you looked. You've maintained your beauty very well and didn't age at all. Rio teased her with a bright smile and praised her after thinking calmly. He knew that she was similar age as Leah but he wanted to confirm it. He thought she wouldn't tell him if he asked directly so he preferred going in a round way. Veins popped up on her forehead as she fumed in anger hearing his harsh comment about her age. I'm 18 years old, you idiot. She yelled in annoyance and clenched her fist to almost hit him but she was calming herself to not do it as she remembered very well who he was. How can you be red stage at the age of 18? He looked at Helia as if she was a monster. Truly, a frog in the well, she mocked him instead of answering him. She is a year older than Nyla yet she is two stage above her. I don't think there would be a single student in red stage at the Golden Seal Military School. Rio gasped in amazement as he shook his head to clear his mind to focus on what was in front of him. Ads by Pub Future The demon tail wolf had started slowing down as it was reaching a two-story building that was situated in a clearing space in the middle of the tall trees. This looks as if someone hasn't lived here for a very long time. The red bricks of the walls had wild plants grown on them as if no one took care of the building for a few decades. The four small windows, which were present on each side of the walls, were covered with thick dirt. The building was 15 times bigger than a peasant house but it was giving off a creepy aura. Is this a shelter? Rio mumbled. This is the first yellow stage shelter you will take over. I'll make it easy for you by stopping the beasts at the entrance. You need to get the heartstone of the emperor spirit of this shelter to end the battle before he kills you. Helia said with a stiff voice. Don't you have any confidence that I can defeat it? Rio spoke as he raised his eyebrows. You've just entered the yellow stage. You need to be at least at the peak level with 20 yellow stats points to be able to defeat an emperor spirit of a yellow stage. Helia said it as a matter of factly. Rio gulped nervously as he knew he wasn't at the peak level yet. Demon Tail Wolf had stopped a few meters away in front of the building. Swoosh! Helia jumped from the back of Mount straight towards the ground like a falling leaf in slow motion as if floating. Rio used him, Devlin movement technique, to appear beside her as he preferred the easy way out. She recalled the mount which disappeared with a flicker of red light. They traveled around the shelter to find the door. A large black metal gate with a fist-sized button on the left side of it. Ads by Pub Future. Was present on the opposite side of where they had come from. Go ahead and get his heartstone which would be placed on his statue in the throne chamber. The emperor's spirit would be able to control the beasts under this shelter which are scattered in the area nearby so I'll take care of them at the entrance. Helia instructed him while summoning her daggers. A pair of deadly sharp blades appeared on her hands that glistened in the sunlight. Why won't she use that sword even now? Does she use it as decoration? He sighed inwardly. Didn't you say beast won't appear in your presence and how do you actually know it's a male spirit? Rio asked with a puzzled face as he saw her bringing out the weapon. They wouldn't fear anyone when their emperor is in danger. As for the second question, you will understand when you reach my level. She responded while rubbing the sharp blade of her daggers with each other. 
Okay. He spoke and saw that Helia's eyebrows became scrunched. Rio gazed behind her, leaves had started fluttering and the stillness of the surroundings erased. A cloud of white dust started raising and the ground started shaking as if an earthquake has come. He has summoned the nearby beasts. They are all rushing to this place. You need to move as soon as possible she urged him in a serious tone without any hint of worries on her beautiful face. He heard her warning but his eyes widened seeing what came out behind the cloud of dust. A herd of crimson beasts was marching toward the duo destroying the shrubs and trees on its path. The red fur covered the rat-like body, which was 160 centimeters in height. Its long thick tail had yellow shades. There were three different sizes of beasts in the herd but the differences could be only told by the thickness and length of their tail as if it was displaying their superiority to one another. His feet trembled and cold sweat slid down his spine seeing so many horrendous beasts rushing towards him. But their yellow eyes showed a reluctance and horror in them. No one could blame him for being afraid of the scene in front of him as there were more than 50 crimson fur rats coming towards him for his life. He wouldn't be worried if it was just five but facing more than fifty was even deadly for someone at the purple stage. Hurry! You idiot! Helia yelled and her resounding voice filled with annoyance brought him back from his astonished state as he realized the biggest monster was standing beside him who even these beasts feared. He nodded and clenched his fist as a determined light flickered in his eyes. Rio turned around to go towards the gate of the shelter. He wanted to finish the fight soon so he could see her fight those beasts or have a chance to fight them. The inside of the building was strange and frightening. There were broken chairs, tables, swords, and scattered books on the floor. Rooms on the first floor were dreary and didn't look to be his point of interest. A dust-filled stair was on the right side to go up to the second floor which Rio took. If what Helia said is true then I will have a tiny possibility of winning. Should I just avoid Emperor Spirit and steal his heartstone? He carefully ascended the stairs while thinking about what to do when he faced the enemy. Ads by Pub Future. Growl, growl, growl. A bunch of painful howlings along with something heavy falling on the ground came from outside the building which was just the beginning of the massacre Ademonis was doing outside. He could already guess the outcome of those innocent beasts facing the terrifying lioness. However, his face darkened as he remembered something. Ah, shit. I didn't even ask what a heartstone looks like. He cursed inwardly. He hadn't fought an emperor spirit before so he had no idea about anything about his upcoming battle. He inspected his mind see to summon his king's silver bloom sword when his eyes glinted with hope and a gentle smile took over his expression. There was another beast soul beside king's silver bloom sword. He checked his profile on AI Watch to look for its information with a single thought. Beast Soul, Yellow Stage Mutated Armored Turtle. Type of Yellow Stage Mutated Armored Turtle's Beast Soul, Armor. Reading the data given by AI about the Beast Soul caused his nervousness to transform into excitement. Let's try it out. Ads by Pub Future. An enormous boulder like shadow shot out of thin air, which appeared to be exactly like the mutated armored turtle. The yellow stage beast soul flew to Rio's chest, turned into a yellow liquid, and started to engulf his whole body. In the blink of an eye, his figure, together with his head was all drowned. The turtle's shell-like yellow armor was full of defense and covered his head to toe as if it were a suit of medieval times where warriors on the battlefield wore metallic armor. This set of armor was filled with great defense, making Rio look majestic as if his whole body was an impregnable fortress. Magic. There were only a few gaps present near the joints which were there to not restrict his movement in any way. Rio moved around on the stairs to test how it feels and there was heavyweight as the armor looked. Instead, the body felt the same as before equipping the armor beast soul. I don't know why but this armor is giving me some confidence for my next battle. But I know one thing very well Helia wouldn't like me dying knowing her bonding with Lia. She won't send me alone if the upcoming fight was life-threatening. Let's just give it a shot. Rio started ascending the stairs at a fast pace after calmly thinking. A big hall appeared in front of him as he reached the top. A throne was placed at the end of the hall with a man's statue with a mask behind it. On top of the statue was a fist-sized yellow stone that was glowing. That's most likely the heart stone, but where is the spirit of the shelter? 
Rio frowned and looked around the room to find the owner of the heartstone. The room was giving off an eerie vibe as it was filled with darkness and only a few candles were placed on the walls decorated with dust and blood. He carefully moved towards the statue as he channeled his mana in his body and enchanted his eyes, hands, and legs. A tiny pile of dust vibrated on the floor near the statue which didn't escape Rio's enchanted eyes. Ah, this emperor's spirit can use, stealth. I need to lure him out and attack first to gain the upper hand. He knew about this ability from the game's videos he watched on TV but he never imagined, stealth, would exist in reality. He stomped his feet and launched himself toward the statue hoping to mislead the enemy thinking he was going for Hearthstone. The pile of dust flew again on the surface of the floor and moved towards to intersect Rio in his path. A black figure with a red gauntlet appeared in front of him. He was aiming its fist at Rio's head who was already nearing the statue and had no chance of escaping the attack. The black figure was a 176 meters tall humanoid creature. He was wearing black armor from head to toe with a red crow mask which was pointy at the nose revealing only his lips, jaw, and eyes. Rio could see his yellow eyes which were glaring at him with murderous intent and a victorious smile flashing on his lips which told the intruder was already dead meat. Is he wearing the mask to hide some ugly marks on his face or just doing it for style? Rio couldn't tell if the enemy had a handsome face or a scary one behind that mask he was wearing which hid half of his face. However, his lips turned upward as the Emperor's spirit disabled the stealth. He used Devlin's movement technique and vanished in thin air catching his enemy off guard. The crow-masked man felt his life in danger and decided to move from his spot but it was a little late. Bang! Rio struck the shoulder of the Emperor's spirit as it was moving away to dodge the attack. He felt as if he had hit a stone as his mana enchanted fist pained hitting the enemy. Ah, shit, my hand. He cursed out loudly. Rio waved his hand in the air vertically while a pained expression flashed on his face. Ads by Pub Future. Crow masked man raised his eyebrows after experiencing the force behind Rio's attack. It didn't give him another chance and used, stealth, instantly to vanish again. Not again. Rio complained seeing the enemy disappear. He monitored the floor for the location of the enemy. Unlike before, he couldn't find any fluctuations of dust on the floor. He kept observing while gazing with half-open eyes while summoning his King Silver Bloom Sword. Rio felt a tingle near the back of his head. This feeling again. He disappeared as his intuition alerted him of the upcoming attack just like back then at the Mistborn Shelter region against the mutated armored turtle. He wasn't sure where the sixth sensibility came from but he was filled with gratitude for its usefulness. The crow-masked man hit the thin air as it missed its target. It turned around at a fast pace to meet the upcoming blade with its gauntlet as Rio had already attacked in the same manner as the Emperor Spirit. Clank! King Silverbloom's sword's blade and gauntlet clashed as the sparks flew caused by the impact. Both of their figures bounced two meters apart by the collision of the attack. Rio stumbled on the ground and the crow-masked man wasn't any better. Their eyes flickered with an intense desire to defeat their opponents as they both rushed toward each other. Emperor's spirit didn't use stealth like before and fought head-on. They clashed with each other many times in which they were able to land some strikes on each other. Rio's mutated armored turtle armor saved him from the fetal gauntlet attacks however, the crown-masked guy had its body engraved with cuts here and there. Ads by Pub Future. I can win this. He let go of the counts and kept injuring the enemy. Crow-masked man was stalling for time as it was waiting for the beast to come and help but there was no assistance coming. Emperor Spirit gritted its teeth and decided to use its trump card. A yellow light engulfs its body as it transformed into more than a hundred sharp red daggers like the one in his hands. The daggers aimed toward Rio's direction and fell on him like hail. He used his, Devlin's movement technique, to teleport out but the range of attack covered the entire space where he could move. His figure appeared at the corner of the room to avoid most of the projectile's attack where one after another daggers hit his body which made a clanking sound by clashing with his mutated armored turtle's armor. After nine daggers hit the armor, cracks started appearing. His face darkened as he saw the armor breaking slowly. He didn't want to lose the precious armor beast's soul which were like a cheat to him. It was another matter if he had more than one but he only had a single. 
On the twelfth dagger hit, the armor almost broke. There were only two more daggers left to hit his body. He decided to call the beast's soul back since even a single hit would shatter it as he unsummoned it to mine C and moved slightly to not get hit on the vital organs. The thirteenth and the last fourteenth dagger didn't meet any resistance like before and stabbed his right shoulder one after another. Crimson blood flowed from his shoulder and intense pain invaded his body as if thousands of ants eating his flesh. His face scrunched from the agonizing sensation. Rio grabbed his right shoulder with his left hand to remove the dagger with a flushed face and looked at the sight in front of him. Yellow Stage Crow Masked Assassin Emperor Spirit Defeated Hundreds of daggers scattered on the floor turned into a firefly and moved towards the head of the statue like a falling leaf in reverse motion which vanished eventually into the heartstone. Have I won? Rio murmured and gazed at the glimmering heartstone on the top of the statue which was the same height as him. He moved towards it carefully and plucked the glowing heartstone. Heartstone of Yellow Stage Crow Masked Assassin Emperor Spirit Gained Put a drop of your blood to make a master servant contract with the Yellow Stage Crow Masked Assassin Emperor Spirit. A notification was given by the AI watch informing him about his newly acquired item. It was a transparent glowing stone that fit in his palm. The yellow color was flickering constantly with a number displaying on it. 59 colon 38, 59 colon 37, 59 colon 36, 59 colon 35. What will happen after the countdown gets finished? He mumbled in puzzlement. Thud. The loud collision of something getting thrashed sounded outside the building as he realized an intense fight was still ongoing. He moved his eyes to inspect the throne chamber once and decided to leave. His wounds were not deeper but they still caused his clothes to drench in blood. Rio walked out of the building while holding his shoulder. His mouth became agape and his jaw dropped at the sight that welcomed him. Dozens of dead bodies of beasts with their limbs and organs along with their beast cores were scattered on the ground. The rancid smell drowned the environment caused by all the slaughtering. Magic. A blonde-haired girl was walking casually as if she was taking a stroll in her garden while slashing her dagger left and right which drew blood each time with a head losing its body and flying here and there. She even used her leg to kick away some beast that tried to disturb her rhythmic dance of dual blade which caused them to get thrashed on the ground. The body turned into smithereens after colliding with the surface of the battlefield. The strength behind her kicks was enough to destroy in the air but she didn't want to dirty her legs so she rather chooses to slam them on the ground. Is she a war goddess? He gazed at Helia with complicated emotions as he saw her amazingly cleaning these beasts without any effort. When can I be this strong? He sighed inwardly. Helia stopped her actions all at once seeing Rio standing with a fist-sized glowing stone in his right hand. Command these beasts to stop attacking me. She yelled at him but her eyes showed some concern seeing his shoulder drenched in blood. Ads by Pub Future. But how? He wanted to ask the method but decided to chant a word first, halt. All the beasts stopped in their place and started looking at Rio as if waiting for his next command from their new lord. Why can I order them without contracting with the heartstone? He asked with questioning eyes. Because just having Emperor Spirit heartstone in your possession gives you authority over the Emperor Spirit itself and the beasts under its banner. As long as Emperor Spirit isn't too proud to accept you as their master and doesn't self-destruct it will work this way. Helia explained while recalling and keeping away her daggers. She walked towards Rio while bringing out a small green bottle from thin air, which was the work of, most likely, the spatial beast's soul similar to the one that Leah and Yami had. The green bottle was five inches long with the width of a thumb. A cork was placed on top to seal the content inside. She said while looking at him, remove your clothes. Hey, you can't sully my purity, Rio said in a sarcastic voice while walking backward and crossing his hands in a defensive manner to hide his chest. Veins popped up on her forehead as she rubbed the middle of her temple. If you weren't Leah's husband I would've beat you into a pulp, she snorted at him. Hearing her threatening voice, he decided to not tease her more and unbuttoned his shirt to remove his upper cloth. A fine muscular body appeared in front of Helia. He was charming and had a nice enticing body that could make a girl drool if they saw him in this state. His blonde hair and having similar look to Leon was making him more alluring to the girl in front of him as that was the man she loved most and Rio wasn't her brother at all so this worked against her to cause her to develop a soft spot for his devilish charm. 
She felt her hormones going against her and made her a little uncomfortable but she stilled her heart. She wasn't used to seeing a half-naked young man every day so it was very unusual for her. She moved her eyes to his wounds which were leaking blood. Helia was hesitating but seeing his injuries she removed the cork and bring out the content from the bottle. Ads by Pub Future. A green liquid fell on top of her fingers. She moved her hands closer to the wounds on his shoulder and applied over it with gentleness and great care. Soft slender fingers touched his shoulder and he could feel her fine smooth skin brushing against his which was delicate despite being a warrior. I wonder how she maintains her hand's smoothness after using a sword or daggers and being so a rough fighter on the battlefield. He was clueless but a scorching pain jolted him awake. Arg. Its burning Rio cried out in pain as his face became scrunched. I forgot, my sister married a kid. Helia mocked him in a teasing voice and made fun of him. He glared at her but then looked at his wounds with widened eyes which started healing at a fast pace. New flesh started forming and his wounds soon started vanishing at a rate visible to the naked eye. The skin was as new as before and couldn't be said to be injured if not for the blood marks that were left there to tell the mishap. After his wounds healed he gazed at Helia with complicated eyes. Why are you staring at me? She asked with an annoyed voice. How ironic, a month ago you were the one giving me wounds, hated me to the core, and swore to make my life hell. Today you're the one applying medicine over my injuries. Rio said with a bittersweet smile. She fell silent and turned around to walk away from him to avoid his piercing gaze. In my blind hatred for humans, I didn't realize it sooner but even without disguise, he resembles big brother Leon. Her frozen heart was slowly melting towards this annoying human she hated once. There were a few reasons to trigger this outcome. The first reason was that he was the husband of her dear sister who was the person she currently cherished the most. Because Leah took care of her when her world collapsed and she went into darkness called despair. The second reason was that she begged her sister in the past to be married to the same person Leah marries so they can be together forever. Third, the most fetal, was that he resembled Leon greatly in his, disguise, form which started breaking knots in her heart. How can she not feel her heart fluttering for someone who looks similar to the person she once loved dearly? There was a saying among women that they wanted to marry someone who took care of them and had characteristics like their father. For Helia, it was her brother. She wanted someone who was like her big brother. As if God was playing pranks with her, a person came into her life who was Leah's husband and looked similar to Leon. At the same time, he was from the human race which was her mortal enemy. Unconscious of these changes, she had started to not hate Rio and it was slowly transforming into an unknown feeling which was far from being love or hatred and couldn't be described. Even with all these reasons, conquering her heart wasn't that easy so Helia remained distant from him. He followed her while asking, what is this countdown for, and what to do with these beasts who are looking at me as if I'm their daddy? After the countdown ends, Emperor Spirit can revive and come to fight you unless you don't have the heartstone. But since you have the heartstone, it will assist you in the next battle. Ads by Pub Future. You can command these beasts to follow you for now to the next shelter. I won't help you so these beasts will be all you have against the next shelter fight. She explained to him while summoning her red stage wolf mount. Won't I lose easily since most beasts are massacred by you? He blurted it out without thinking twice. If I didn't kill them then an idiot would have got slaughtered. Although I wouldn't mind you becoming their lunchtime snacks but I don't want to see Leah upset. The next shelter doesn't have many beasts under its command so don't worry about losing. Helia said the first part in a mocking tone and the second half in a stiff voice. She climbed the mount and beckoned him to mount up. He turned around to look at the scattered corpse and remembered something. Wait. Let me get those cores. I can increase my yellow stats points he said and started walking towards a dead body nearby. They can't be absorbed by you unless you kill them yourself or have the last hit in killing them. Helia poured down water to extinguish his lit-up hope. He turned around with dropped shoulder and climbed up the wolf quietly while ordering the beast to follow him with a thought. Seeing him sad, Helia tried to comfort Rio, you can absorb the cores of beast killed by these subordinates following you since they are under your command. His eyes shone with joy as he became filled with excitement for his next destination. 
they moved towards the next area which went through the tall trees. After 30 minutes of traveling, another shelter came into their view. It was similar to the one before with a little difference of being tall walls around the structure of the building. Helia had killed over 40 beasts in the last fight so only 34 beasts were following him. Magic. Ads by Pub Future. He didn't wait for her to tell him to proceed and commanded the beast to storm inside with him through the front opening in the wall which was an open space. This time, Helia had already hidden her presence as she wanted him to face a real battle. This caused the Emperor Beast to call his subordinate beast scattered around the nearby region as soon as he detected an intruder infiltrating the walls of his shelter. Before Rio could enter through the gate, the ground started shaking. He turned around and saw beasts in crimson fur were running in his direction which was similar to the one under his commands. Their body had an additional shell-like layer that boosted their defense. They are only two dozen but their defense is greater. Although they are running slower than these beasts around me, it will be hard to tell who would win in one-on-one -on -one fight. An ominous feeling took over him because he had to fight these beasts alone unlike before when a war goddess assisted him. He narrowed his eyes seeing the beasts marching towards his way and getting closer every second. Stop them here and take advantage of their low agility caused by heavyweights to avoid injuries. He commanded them and ran inside the shelter from the big gate. The interior of the building was similar to the previous shelter with a stair on the right side to go to the second floor. Without any second thought, he summoned his sword and shield which had recovered by now. He entered the throne chamber and found the emperor's spirit waiting for him. His opponent was similar to the previous spirit only difference was that it looked bulky and had thick armor over its body. His gauntlets were not as deadly as the previous one. Rio didn't wait and charged toward the enemy. His king's silver bloom sword hit the enemy on his chest and only left a few scratches. He doesn't even care to dodge it. He raised his eyebrows and glanced at the emperor's spirit. Should I just take the heart stone and end it? His eyes moved toward the glowing stone on top of the statue's head. He shook his head slowly in disagreement and attacked the enemy again. Emperor Spirit didn't take Rio in his eyes at first but seeing him constantly striking him with great force he decided to return the favor and started retaliating with his own weapon. The heavy gauntlet was heavier in weight even if they weren't as deadly as the old one it caused his hands to become numb when the king's silver bloom sword clashed with it and sparks flew in the air. The weight caused the momentum to be greater and pushed Rio far away. What should I do? He complained in a hushed voice. Use mana enchantment on your sword, stupid. A mocking tone sounded from behind and he realized that Helia had followed him inside the shelter. She was surprised that Rio won the previous battle with some minor injuries so she was curious to watch him this time taking down another emperor spirit. The chromast figure didn't take Helia much in his eyes because she was hiding her aura and power so he could focus on Rio without being terrified by her. Ah. I didn't require it recently so I almost forgot that I can use mana enchantment on my king's silver bloom as well. He circulated his mana and it was sent to his sword. Ads by Pub Future. A confident smile formed on his lips as he bent his knees and stomped the ground to launch toward the emperor's spirit like a rocket. The chromasked man covered in his armor felt threatened by the upcoming strike and tried to move away from his spot but it didn't have a similar level of agility compared to the previous emperor spirit. It was heavier in weight just like the beast who was under his banner. The king's silver bloom sword passed through his left shoulder and eliminated the hands from his body. A pained look appeared on his face but Rio didn't give him any time and slashed back at his neck. Blood spurted on the floor while his head rolled like a red football on the ground. Yellow Stage Chromast Tank Emperor Spirit Defeated The scattered blood and body on the floor turned into a firefly and flew toward the head of the statue as it happened previously. A satisfying smile blossomed on his face. As he moved towards the glowing heartstone, he plucked it out from the head of the statue and a notification played in his mind. Heartstone of Yellow Stage Chromast Tank Emperor Spirit Gained Put a drop of your blood to make a master servant contract with the yellow stage chromast tank emperor spirit. Like before, the yellow color was glimmering with a number showing on top of the heartstone. 59 colon 49, 59 colon 48, 59 colon 47, 59 colon 46. He turned to look at Helia with a confident smile she ignored him and walked out of the throne chamber. 
he followed behind and they exited the shelter. Beasts were fighting each other even though they were now under Rio's command. He hurriedly ordered them to stop and looked around the area to observe the condition. Ads by Pub Future Seven armored beasts and two agility-type beasts died in the previous battle. He went to collect the cores from their dead bodies. Both beasts had red fur on their body and rat-like appearance. He ignored the ones that were part of his alliance and only grabbed the beast drowned in armor. A total of seven yellow stage cores shone on his hands. He sent a tiny amount of mana into the pebble-sized yellow stage beast cores as they changed shape from a bunch of cores to a small amount of liquid and vanished in his palm making his strength improve slightly. Core of yellow stage normal crimson armored rat absorbed. 0.5 yellow stats points gained. Core of yellow stage normal crimson armored rat absorbed. 0.5 yellow stats points gained. Core of yellow stage mutated crimson armored rat absorbed. 2 yellow stats points gained. Core of yellow stage mutated crimson armored rat absorbed. 3 yellow stats points gained. He gained a total of 7 stats points from these beast cores, making his yellow stats reach 15. A smile bloomed on his face as Rio advanced in strength greatly within a day. We need to report back to the castle his moment of happiness and celebration was interrupted by a blonde-haired girl's stiff voice. He turned around and saw her bringing out a teleport glyph. She was giving him a fierce glare to hurry. Rio didn't waste more time and joined her hastily as he was worried she would yell in anger. Helia activated the portal as a space rift opened up in front of them from which they vanished. They parted ways at the teleporter tower as Helia told him to give Emperor Spirit's heartstone to Leo or Dylan so they can bind it with their blood to make conquered shelters beasts under Devlin's royal family banner. After it's done, she could send the Azura warriors to guard the yellow shelters he had claimed. I would only give them to Leo as these are my hard heartstones. It belongs to my wife rather than that emperor who fabricates some evil plans most of the time. Rio mused as he left the teleporter tower. It was dark outside as the moon and stars were spreading the light around the castle. How far was the Blood Sea stronghold shelter that it's already night here? Rio thought in amazement as he realized the castle was in a different time zone than the new shelters he captured in the corrupted lands. He was already nearing the Empress Villa and didn't find Leah outside in her personal garden. The female guards didn't dare to stop him this time. Rio freely entered his happy home that he considered in his heart. Leah was arranging a big cupboard in the room. She was wearing a white dress that was revealing her ravishing figure. There were different clothes and suits for nobility in the first section while the ground level was arranged with two pairs of expensive shoes for the young couple. When she heard the footsteps coming she turned around to find the eager eyes that became happier after meeting hers. Whoa, who will wear all these clothes? He said in an amazed tone as his vision welcomed things in the cupboard. Magic. Ads by Pub Future. Do you think I'll wear these? Leah asked in a questioning voice and her face looked mad as he didn't understand for whom she bought all these clothes. Nah. But this isn't a bad idea. Especially if you only wear a shirt you will look spicy he expressed his opinion shamelessly. Her already mad face turned red like a cherry from thinking about his wild demands. Rio walked in front of the cupboard and saw the different clothes she had brought. He felt a hand touching his shoulder and saw Leah was looking at the tour clothes with a worried gaze. How did that happen? Her worried voice was filled with the motherly love that he felt from his second mother earlier today. Although she was his wife but he received the love of a big sister, a best friend, a mother, and a beautiful loving partner all from the same woman. This made Leah truly and amazingly the best partner as she was all in one. She was probably the most ideal wife a man can dream of which made Rio very fortunate for having her by his side. It's just got ripped during the fight against the Emperor Spirit. Ah. I forgot to give you this. He said in a hurried voice and took out one heartstone from both of his lower pockets. Leah's face showed surprise seeing the heartstone. She took them in her hands from Rio and asked him to be careful next time and not get injured before asking about his day. He explained everything from going to the teleporter tower to absorbing the cores as well as making his yellow stats points up to 15. After listening to him, Leah proceeded to bind the heartstone with her blood and told Yami to inform the emperor about it. 
Liao was quite happy to receive these heartstones as it felt like a husband giving his lovely wife his first salary. Come with me. She asked him to follow her as she moved towards the bathroom. A flashy room with a large bathtub appeared in front of him. This was the place where he used to get his bathing session with medicinal herbs. Ads by Pub Future. Liao filled the bathtub to the brim and beckoned Rio to go inside it. Unlike before he didn't resist and started fabricating a mischievous plan in his mind. She opened the two shower heads above with the moon-shaped switch which caused the water droplets to fall on his body. He stared at her elegant face and saw her hands grabbing his shirt then she unbuttoned them one by one slowly and revealing his muscular body. This wasn't the first time when she did it so he was waiting to see what she would do next. After she removed his upper clothes, Leah took out a bottle and some droplets of white liquid fell in her palms as she rubbed both hands and proceeded to apply on his head. Her delicate hands stroked his hair in a gentle manner and foam started falling on his bare shoulder. Am I child to you? He finally asked her after staying silent for so long and waiting for a moment to execute his evil plan. If you're not a child then what are you? She replied as she kept moving her fingers and washed his hair unaware of his unknown thoughts. Leah didn't get a reply as she was sitting on the ascended stairs of the bathtub and cleansing his hair. A hand suddenly grabbed her wrist Leah saw the crimson-haired boy was gazing at her with a mischievous smile. With a splash, she was dragged into the bathtub and her body was immersed in water. Her clothes were sticking to her skin as she was soaked in the water, revealing her enticing figure. The water droplets from the two showerheads made her fully drenched. Rio grabbed her waist while sliding away the hair that was blocking her bewitching face. He stared into her scarlet eyes that were as deep as the ocean. She was gazing back at him with a coyish face and her eyes were glinting with annoyance. Hoof. He dares to tease me. Seeing his mischievous smile, Leah dived in with her face and went towards his ears as she stabbed her teeth into his neck. A pained sensation invaded him as he gritted his teeth. Ah, why does she love being a vampire and biting me? Rio was used to her vampire fantasies and abnormal fetish of biting a lover. He tried to not show his weakness and let her give up on her own when she gets tired. Feeling him tightening his muscles and not expressing his agony through voice, Leah decided to not punish her husband and let go of his neck. Wifey, we are not done yet. He said in a roguish tone which wasn't expected from him. Leah heard his voice as she just released her teeth from imprisoning his flesh. Seeing her withdrawing face, Rio placed his hand behind her head and sealed her soft lips with his own as a rose fragrance invaded his nostril. Leah wasn't prepared she widened her eyes and blinked as she was astonished at this outcome. The sudden playful action of Rio caught her unready. However, it didn't take her long to get used to it as she slowly closed her eyes to enjoy the warm sensation of his lips pressing onto hers. An electrifying pleasure was going through their mind that gave them immense happiness. Rio was gently sucking her juicy lips caused by the ongoing shower as water droplets keep falling on the duo's body to increase the heat in the moment. He tightened his one hand on her slender waist and second on her head to guide her as they kissed intensively. Leah's feathery lips brushed past his warm ones. They kissed each other like they wanted to be kissed as it felt soft, moist, hot, and breathy. Lovebirds weren't trying to win a battle but seeking harmony and deeper connections. It was the sharing of one breath, one feeling, and a blissful moment. The hot steam rose to her cheeks as Rio's tongue touched Leah's tongue, swift and deliciously wild, then straight, resolute, filled with curiosity about the charm that lay within, seeking to taste down his wife and completely be lost in it. Ads by Pub Future a warm ticklish sensation as if many butterflies flying and rushing towards her delicate heart was the level of ecstasy she was feeling while Rio wasn't any better as words were not enough to express the pleasure he experienced. After a moment of battle, when they were almost breathless as they separated. With a coyish face, she came out of the bathtub, revealing her curvaceous body that was visible due to the wet cloths. That were sticking to her curves to make them more apparent. Leah walked out of the bathtub shyly and didn't even dare to look into his eyes. However, she didn't forget to left a set of clothes and a towel before locking the door behind her. Rio was dazed for quite some time as he was lost in his wonderland. He could still feel her delicate skin on his. That was the most beautiful feeling he had ever experienced. The lingering feeling stayed with him as the water droplets washed him. 
Rio shook his head with a bright smile as the water droplets of his hair scattered in the air. After some time passed, he changed into the dry clothes that made him look extremely handsome and walked out of the bathroom. What welcomed his sight gave him a mix of fright, joy, and amazement. The white-haired beauty had changed into a set of black clothes and it was very revealing and tight as her well-endowed bosom was struggling to escape the confinement. Her milky neck, which didn't have the ribbon she was wearing before, was bare open as if welcoming him to taste a bit. Leah was sitting on the bed with a sharp dagger in her hand, giving him an evil smile. A cold shiver ran down his spine as he gulped nervously but at the same time, he was mesmerized by her alluring figure that was encouraging him to show some courage. She traced her three fingers on the surface of the dagger and looked at him with a playful glint in her eyes. Leah beckoned him with her index finger in a seductive way that Rio found hard to resist. Magic. Did I enrage her? He slowly moved towards her direction while his legs trembled thinking of the outcome. Ads by Pub Future. After reaching the bed, a cold voice escaped his wife's cherry-like lips, Are you scared, husband? Rio felt his heartbeat thumping but he wasn't sure if he was scared of her or mesmerized by her ravishing figure. He shook his head in response as Rio was trying to calm himself. Don't be scared, you will be fine. Just follow what I say, okay? Her coquettish voice sounded as she smiled. Rio subconsciously nodded while standing in front of her as the crimson-haired boy trusted Zero her that she wouldn't harm him. Lia grabbed his shirt and dragged him onto the bed with the help of her massive strength as she lay him down beside her. The white-haired beauty was giving him a maniac smile as if she would love to drink his blood after engraving her name on his body. Is she really the girl I married? He couldn't understand how things escalated this far. Rio was nervous as he had cold sweats pouring down his forehead. He was lying beside her on the base of his shoulder while looking into her mysterious eyes. Leah used the sharp dagger and traced the surface of the blade while moving slowly from his head to his neck as if he is a delicious dinner for tonight. However, what she did next made Rio jump in fright and whiten his eyes. The sharp blade of the dagger moved towards her neck as she made a small cut on her milky white skin. Blood started seeping out in a small amount as the cut was very precise and tiny. Rio was already frightened as he wanted to stop her but if he moved he could have caused Lia to hurt herself more. She only made a little cut and said in a loving manner, in our Devlin family when our pure blood accepts their partner, we offer them our blood to show the immense love we feel for our better half. In case their partner declines, which doesn't happen, it will be considered that their partner doesn't love them. Although I accepted you in my heart long ago, but I wanted you to take that one step that you hesitated all this time. After all, our marriage was a forced one. So today, I want you to have my blood to deepen our bonding. I wish for husband to truly accept me as his wife. I have fallen for you and lost my heart to you. This Leah loves husband a lot. She was looking at him with an inviting gaze as her words were filled with deep affection for the man who conquered her heart. Her expression told that the thirst she felt can only be quenched by Rio's acceptance. Lia was resolute in her childhood that she would never be charmed by another man as she loathed the stranger. She only cared about very few people that didn't even exceed five. But the arrival of the man from prophecy shook all her common sense as she was freed of the heart-wrenching nightmares that never ended before. Rio gave her surprises one after another as he even killed another human for her while injuring himself for someone who forcefully trapped him in her clutches. Wasn't he supposed to hate her and just act like how an arranged marriage looked? What was their need to show her affection? She could never understand. This guy even went to the wilderness and got injured to gain a heartstone for his wife while presenting it into her hands with an affection-filled smile that was telling her he don't blame Leah for anything. How could she be not moved by his selfless action in a world filled with people who only wanted to make relationships for some ulterior motives? She fell for him badly and decided to offer her blood as a showcase to deepen their bonding forever. Rio felt his heart aching as he saw blood coming out of her neck but he listened to her words and remembered not to deny her. He calmed down as this was Devlin's royal family tradition. The crimson-haired boy placed his hand between her head and gazed at her inviting eyes that were nervous and filled with love. Ads by Pub Future. Rio moved down the bottom of her face and kissed her blood seeping neck to soothe the pain she was feeling. He used his mushy tongue to lick on her creamy skin in a loving manner to express his acceptance and affection for her. 
An electrifying current ran down Leah's body as this was too sensual to rise the hormones in her body. Rio kissed her neck passionately it increased their appetite to devour and have each other more. Her two massive melons were pressing down below his chest as he moved his left hand to gently grope them. MMNH. Leah gave out a sweet pleased cry. The soft sensation of her bosom caused his mind to run wild. The dreamland of every man desired in their lifetime was finally in his hand as he drowned in the pleasure of physically loving the most beautiful girl in the land of Azura and even in both worlds. He fondled those twin melons slowly while licking her neck. Rio remembered her words as she mentioned and decided to dab the blood from her neck as he sucked it with love, enjoying the moment to the fullest. It feels like a baby is drinking milk from their mother. Eh, if she finds out what I'm thinking she might use that sharp dagger to play with me. He ignored the unnecessary thoughts and focused on important business that was in front of him. The sweet taste of her blood entered his mouth and poured down his throat which caused a bunch of notifications to ring in his mind. Pure blood of ancient Devlin's bloodline consumed. Ads by Pub Future. You have awakened the Devlin might. Beast soul of Purple Nightmare Worm killed. Purple Nightmare Worm curse has been lifted. You have awakened the sealed innate talent. A bunch of notifications was heard in his mind as he drank Leah's blood. A golden light brightened his mind see and made him feel dizzy and ultimately it caused him to sway in the air and fall freely like a leaf. Seeing him fainting on her body, Leah couldn't understand what happened. Her eyes were filled with worry as she patted his face to find out more about his condition. Leah placed him perfectly on the bed and inspected his body for abnormality which made her finally see the lit-up screen of the AI watch. Magic. She read the notifications appearing on top of the screen and frowned. Purple Nightmare Worm, isn't it the cursed beast that seals memory in someone's innate talent who doesn't have mana in their body? But who dared to do it to Rio? Her face was filled with the coldness that showed she would cut apart the person who dared to harm her husband but her eyes were worryingly looking at the boy breathing in a gentle and steady manner as if drowned in wonderland. They were having a sweet loving time together but this unexpected outcome disturbed their blissful hot night. One of the silver shelters, Land of Azura. The room was dimly lit as it was nighttime and the person in the room was about to go to his bed. The maroon-haired old man present in the room raised up his eyebrows, ah, I totally forgot about that bastard. The connection with my beast soul has been severed. It can only happen if. After thinking carefully, he laughed. Ha ha ha. He has finally died, I didn't have to dirty my hand for my granddaughter. Rio found himself in a big hall which was drowned in white as if the walls were made from growing marbles but his intuition told him it wasn't as simple as it looked. A pond was on his left side with golden flowers blooming on top of the water's surface as the glimmering butterflies flew around. In front of him was a statue from which bright light was coming. To be exact, the white figure was glowing and illuminated the whole surrounding. That's strange. You have come earlier than expected. A majestic voice sounded in the hall which was feminine. Who are you? Where are you hiding? He raised his eyes and his eyebrows moved left and right to find the source of the unknown voice. That's not what you should ask, little Rio. But I'll answer you anyway and free you from your doubts so we can have a good talk. The gentle voice sounded again and he realized it was coming from the front. I'm what you call God in your world and I'm right in front of you but only my spiritual body is present here. I know what you will be asking so I'm going to answer your next question. Ads by Pub Future. You're here because you didn't take the path of evil even after the so-called gods and destiny toyed with your life as if you were their plaything. The white glowing figure said in a nonchalant voice. Rio was dazed hearing such information and he wasn't believing the person in front of his sight. It was too strange what was going on in front of him but slowly he started calming himself down. Magic. But I'm against the humans, how can she say I'm not evil and my life wasn't that bad compared to many others? She definitely doesn't know anything. Rio thought she was just trying to fool him as he mumbled inwardly. My child, equipping a weapon to slay the demons and to protect the innocent is a virtuous deed. It's not a sin as long as you're doing good karma even if you're following a path that makes you fight your own race. Most humans are vile creatures so don't be burdened by this. In this era, it's hard to find someone like you. 
You were born to be chosen as my possible heir and this is your last life in the mortal realm. The destiny stars, the heaven, the higher beings, the nature, all the other reams, and everything played to take your test to change you into who you're today. However, it won't end right there. You will have to give many other hard trials in the coming future to become my certain heir. She said in a serious voice as the goddess gazed at him with intrigued eyes. He was dumbfounded to find out that she could read his thoughts. Rio had many questions going through his mind. It took a few explanations from the goddess to answer all his doubts as they finally subsided. She continued, Your task is to take down the monarch beast in the land of Azura. There is only one monarch beast in each stage. Whenever you reach the peak of your level, you will have to defeat the monarch beast of that stage, or else you will be stuck on the same level forever. Once you reach the peak of your current stage you will have your answer on how to find the monarch beast. Do you understand? Why do you have to be so unfair to punish me with such a curse and what's this monarch beast? Rio asked in annoyance. As the name explains itself, it's the monarch of all the beasts on each stage, the one who acquires these beasts will be given a reward at the end of life. Since I cherish you my child more than others, I have put a condition on your growth so it pushes you to break past your limits. Your current self would blame me for this unfairness but your future self would understand the affection behind my doings. Goddess said in a motherly tone. Okay. He said coldly. I have two gifts for you, little Rio. You will receive it after you go through your sealed memories. But before that I want you to remember one crucial thing. Have faith in those who love you. Especially the girls who can make a greater sacrifice for you, don't hurt them with your coldness. If you don't accept them then you would lose this battle against destiny. After you exit this realm, your painful sealed memories will come to you, embrace them with a warm hug. A happy future awaits you, my child. We will meet again, my blessings will be with you. Goddess said these words as if a parent teaching their child how he should have a happy future and plan carefully. Her voice was filled with motherly care as well as a divine aura. After she completed her words, a white light enveloped Rio as he felt his forehead getting kissed and a big hug embracing him as if he was a small kid. He felt his mind relax and cry out in joy. His eyes became moist for unknown reasons as the goddess hugged him for dozens of seconds. His surrounding changed and he exited the white hall where the goddess was present. He was standing in an eerie forest, the moon was the only source of light that illuminated the surroundings. A rancid smell of blood was in the air which caused him to scrunch his face in annoyance. This is the first blessing you will be getting. Don't take it lightly as this is the future you can fabricate by the choices you make. A familiar voice of the goddess sounded in his mind. Soon, he saw himself sitting on the ground while holding a figure closely. It was a girl faintly smiling in his embrace, while a trail of blood was flowing down her lips. She was badly injured as her face was white due to being devoid of blood. Leah! He cried out in agony as his heart shook. His perspective changed and he started viewing the sight in front of him as a third person. Rio saw the white-haired guy, that was another him, embracing Leah while she was taking her last breath. A bright light enveloped his figure and the scene changed. He found himself standing in the ongoing battle. Thousands of dead bodies were scattered on the ground along with beasts, drowning the ground in air with the scent and sight of blood. The view was too sinister to make anyone shiver in fear. Dozens of warriors were fighting a lone wolf who had white hairs, a fairy-like girl was placed on his back. She was bound to him by some vines while her eyes were closed. There were azuras and humans both attacking him as if he was their mortal enemy. However, their eyes were flickering with fear as they attacked their single target. The white-haired guy tried to avoid the fatal strikes but in the end, one of the attacks hit the girl on his back which pierced her heart. No, Laia Ewa Ea. Both of the Rio fighting and watching the scene cried out in mourning tone. White light drowned him again and scenes changed one after another, but in each of them, he saw her dying at the end. Rio wasn't able to save her no matter how hard he tried. Ads by Pub Future he had enough strength to fight all the high-level enemies but Rio couldn't protect Leah in the end. In dozens of scenes, he even saw Helia supporting him in battle while Leah fought alongside him but ultimately they both died. The blonde-haired girl even apologized to him while saying if she get another life she wouldn't mistreat him again. 
After that, her body became lifeless while her eyes were gazing at Ryo with warmth and deep affection. Ryo saw one million more scenarios as his mind started getting numb by watching the person he loved most, dying painfully again and again in front of his eyes. But he failed to save them even once. His heart had already turned cold and Ryo wanted to tear apart all the Azura and humans who tried to kill his loved ones. A guy who once trembled and cried after killing a human that tried to harm his loved one, was now transforming to adapt to the fiendish world. The gentleness in his heart gradually started molding into an unwavering will to not back down. Ryo felt even if he has to destroy the world he would do that to save his Lia. This was the the part of blessing the goddess prepared for him. She wanted to give him a lesson on what would happen if he hesitate to taint his hands to clean out the evil. When goddess was assured Ryo was prepared for the savage world, she decided to end the sequence of bad outcomes. Finally, a new scene played this time. He wasn't expecting it as he was kneeling on the ground with tears enveloping his face. He saw two new faces this time, they were both familiar to him but he only remembered meeting one of them before. There were four girls, Leah, Nyla, Helia, and also a black-haired girl. Helia was making fun of Rio while Nyla supported her and Leah watched him getting bullied by her sister. Only the black-haired beauty was on his side and supporting him. Who is she? He found the black-haired girl familiar but he couldn't remember where he met her before. She was too pretty even above Helia and Nyla. Her eyes were royal blue which was filled with serenity and love. Her face was otherworldly but a single gaze would want you to praise the fine piece of art she was. Her bosom was not as big as Leah's but they were perfect and firm. Ads by Pub Future. She was the same height as Leah. He felt a strong connection that he never experienced meeting anyone before. Rio was mesmerized by the beauty of Leah when he first time met her but this feeling and familiarity with the new girl were so foreign to him. This black-haired beauty in front of his vision was someone who gave him butterflies in his heart just watching her first time. Why is my heart filled with ecstasy just looking at her once? Why don't I remember her? There seems to be a stronger connection between us just as how I feel with Leah. How is this possible? He subconsciously said with a puzzled face. Bright light drowned him. The scene changed again, and this time the five of them were sitting below a mountain. Rio had his head against the stony wall while Nyla and Helia were asleep their head was placed on his lap. The black-haired girl and Leah were hugging him from the side while their face looked relaxed. However, there was a putrid blood scent in the air. A few hundred meters away from Rio and company, was countless corpses scattered around as if a terrifying battle had taken place. The scene changed a few more times and he saw Lia alive in each of them. Among the one million and ten visions Rio got, there were only ten scenes where Lia survived. His heart was still in chaos, and he asked in a chilly voice, What's the meaning of this? There are one million and ten possible futures. I wanted you to have a glimpse of your future decisions outcomes. It's up to you now what choices you make. The voice of the goddess sounded in his mind one last time before disappearing. A bright light enveloped Rio and this time the old memories started coming to him like water escaping from the broken dam. Cough, cough. I'm sorry my child, I wish I could be with you longer to see you grow, but this is heaven's will. Remember to eat well, and, find new friends. In the future, get married to a beautiful wife and make a big family. Cough, cough, cough. Little Rio. You have been a good child all this while. The old man said with a feeble smile filled with pain, he looked devoid of any energy as if his one foot was in the grave. He was laying on a hospital bed while taking his last breath. The old man wanted to talk to the little kid for one last time before saying goodbye to this world. A nine-year-old crimson-haired boy, with sea-green eyes and a runny nose, was standing beside the bed. His face, which looked naive and filled with the charm of innocence a child could have, was drowned in redness and tears which was the result of overly crying. He was only 136 centimeters tall. Grandpa, you cannot do this to me. Don't leave me. I don't want you to go, um. Please stay with me. I won't forgive you ever, if you leave ee. -E -E. His sorrowful plea made the heart of the female doctor and nurses ache in pain. There were many cases where they had seen people die on the hospital's bed but this was the first case where an already orphaned child was going to lose his only family in a few moments. 
The old man had adopted this young kid when he was one day old and raised him with love. However, heaven was so cruel as it robbed little Rio of the only family he had. Don't be sad, little hero. Cough, cough, your grandpa love. The old man's voice stopped halfway as he kept staring at Rio with his doting eyes open and a feeble smile on his face. Beam. The heart rate monitor stopped beeping. Instead of the waving lines, it showed a horizontal one forming with a beam, sound which told them the patient was no longer alive and departed from this world. Magic. The female doctor took the card from the dead patient and decided to bring the little kid out of the room who wasn't willing to leave the old man. No. Please I want to be with my grandpa, let me hear him, please. He wants to say something to me. I beg you, big sister, grandpa is looking at me. Let me go to him. His sorrowful pleading sent a shiver down all the staff present in the room. Ads by Pub Future. Rio hovered his left hand in direction of his grandfather while crying and giving a last look as he was dragged by the lady to her office. Dr. Lady was instructed by the old man to send Rio to Whitebridge City and get him into the city's middle school after he passes away. She was very well aware Rio needs to be calmed down mentally so she brought him away. Dr. Lady wasn't a friend of the old man but she had signed an agreement to send Rio to the school and monitor him for the next four years. That woman benefited a hundred times more from this deal than she could earn from her whole career so she wasn't thinking Rio was a burden but if the woman went back on the agreement then the government would put her behind the cell. She took care of Rio as he cried to sleep in her embrace and brought him to Whitebridge City. Rio, be a good boy and study well. Dr. Lady said to Rio before sending him to the school. She had already paid the money for his living here. Rio, who was silent since his grandfather died, didn't speak to her. He just walked towards the school after getting her permission as she told him to study well. I wonder how long it will take him to come out of this trauma. Dr. Lady sighed as her motherly instinct ached her heart seeing the poor little guy in misery. Rio didn't speak with anyone at all and students started to assume he couldn't talk. They started to take advantage of him and even bully him. He would go to a nearby monument building in the neighborhood every weekend to see their hero statues. Dr. Lady used to bring him here and even gave him a weekly pass to enjoy as she told him to study well and become like them in the future. Although she left, he came daily to visit those statues. He felt as if he had a connection to this place but he couldn't point out what was it. His heart felt like he was at home whenever Rio came here. Ads by Pub Future. One year passed like that. He continued with his studies and visited the hero statues like always. One day, when he was going to enter the building through the door of Monument, a 13 years old boy came and pushed him. He took his pass forcefully and mocked Rio, You don't need to have this, kiddo. I'll borrow it for a little while. Seeing him take away his pass, Rio became enraged and went to fight him. He punched and kicked, but he wasn't able to do much. The bully boy thrashed Rio to the ground. Hearing the commotion, the crowd of children increased. Rio got up again and went to hit the bully. The bully teenager got annoyed by Rio's persistence and decided to go more violent by teaching him a lesson. He took an iron rod which was placed a few meters away and almost hit the Rio when a young girl appeared and kicked the bully away. Her royal blue eyes were flickering with emotions to retaliate against the injustice that happened in front of her. She had midnight black hair which was falling down to her sylph-like waist. There was something special about her, a serene aura that Rio could feel just by her mere presence. Seeing the black-haired beauty, the bully teenager was frightened as her strength was above his. She seemed to be skilled at basic combat training. The 13-year-old guy apologized to the girl and ran away after giving back Rio's pass. The girl took Rio to the nearby medical care and gave him first aid treatment. Rio was quiet and followed along as he didn't even look at her. What happened little guy, won't you talk to big sister? Her eyes filled with serenity and care towards the innocent boy who gave her cold shoulders. When you don't give attention to a pretty girl or ignore them, you become attractive to them by default. They love challenging things although it wasn't the case here for these two but Rio's behavior still piqued her interest. I'm also an orphan like you. So we are alike. I lost my mother when I was one year old. After that, I was adopted by another family who was a close friend of my mother. 
She spoke in a sorrowful voice as she narrated it to him. The black-haired beauty's intention was clear. She searched for his identity in the database as the girl was from a very influential family. After she discovered Rio as an orphan, her heart melted for the little guy. The girl knew that she can approach him if he finds out her situation was similar. Even if I talk to you, you would also leave me one day like grandpa did. Rio, who didn't talk to anyone for the last 15 months, finally spoke at this moment. Magic. What if this big sister makes a promise to you that she will be your friend for life? This girl was well aware of the importance behind her words but when you meet someone with a similar past you feel a strong connection with them. However, the connection they felt after meeting the first time was something that would be revealed in the future. She had a few good friends and they all came closer to her because of her being adopted by an influential family. When the girl found out about Rio's past, she knew this friendship would be more meaningful than the rest of her other bondings. Really? You will promise me that? Rio's eyes shone as if he found a new rope of hope to hold on to. She hovered her little finger and tied it around Rio's one and shook them gently. Promise, she said with a gentle smile. She took him to a restaurant nearby as a roaring came from Rio's stomach. The little boy didn't eat at first and showed tantrums. The black-haired girl took the food from the plate and brought it to near his mouth to feed him. After they were done eating, the duo went to an amusement park where they had fun together. Big sister, what's your name? Rio asked while looking at her tranquil filled eyes. She hesitated a little then said with a smile, Um, I have two names, but my mother used to call me Layla. Okay, then I'll call you Big Sister Layla. He said with a happy glint in his eyes that were also filled with affection. Ads by Pub Future. The next day they met again and today Rio also fed her with his hand which caused her heart to feel warmth. She missed her real mother when this happened. Their days went on like that. After 15 months passed, they grew closer. Rio was 12 years old and Layla was 15. The crimson-haired boy said, Big sister Layla when I grow up, will you marry me? Where has this question come into your mind? She asked with a puzzled face while laughing and taking it as a joke. Today our teacher was showing us a documentary. In the video, they showed a boy or girl has to find a partner. Big sister Layla, you will choose me as your husband, right? He said with innocence flickering in his eyes. Ah. Rio, don't make it hard for me. I cannot promise you that. Layla didn't agree as she knew what it meant. So you were lying when you said you would be my friend for life? His eyes already turned moist and he started walking away. Rio didn't even wait for her to say anything and convince him. The next day he didn't come although Layla waited for him. She came every weekend to wait for him but Rio didn't come. After a month he went to the monument building where a black-haired beauty was waiting for him. But Rio didn't speak to her as if they were strangers. Layla came to him and grabbed both of her ears and said in an apologetic tone, Won't you forgive this big sister of yours? Please, don't punish me with your silence. I can't bear to lose you. I'm sorry, Rio. But you broke your promise, Rio said coldly. That's because marriage requires two people to love. She said in a lower voice. So big sister doesn't love me? Rio asked with a frown as if he was wronged. I love you Rio but right now, you're just a child. Ask me this question if you still want me as your wife when you are 15. Layla responded in a serious tone. Would you agree at that time? He asked with an unwavering glint in his eyes. Ads by Pub Future. She nodded with a smile and a complicated emotion was taking birth in her heart. After this, they started spending time as usual. They loved each other like siblings but their young hearts were stolen by each other as time passed. Layla entered the Golden Seal Military Academy after she turned 16 which caused her to be busier than usual but she still come to meet the little guy. Three years passed. Rio was 15 and his 16th birthday was coming soon. Layla was already 19 and she was about to graduate from the Golden Seal Military Academy. He said to Layla, so my dear future wife, when are you going to marry me and be mine forever? After you complete your studies. She spoke while pinching his nose with a cute smile. Ahich, I have already passed the exams. 
just waiting for the results. They took some blood tests. They said I'll be getting an AI watch. I don't know what is that for. Rio said and scrunched his eyebrows when she pinched his nose. You will find it out, Layla said while seeing his cute face that got annoyed by her little action. I have a question for you. He mumbled. Say. She responded while frowning. Equals 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 slash forward slash forward slash equals 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 equals. Snow note. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the first love of Rio's life. She will be the center of the plot. It will be kept secret how, so the fun remains. If Leah is the Naruto of this story then Layla is Uchiha clan, around whom the plot will revolve from time to time. As for Nyla, she will be one of my favorites. No one forgot you, we also love you, Helia. Rio stared into her bewitching eyes and asked, Who do you love the most in this world? There is someone I know for a long time, I love that person the most. Her voice sounded as if a young maiden had her heart stolen by someone in talking about her crush. Who is that someone? Rio's heart sank hearing her response. There is someone special. The best person I have ever met but I won't tell you who is it. She spoke while a mysterious glint flickered in her eyes. Okay, I have to go now, see you later. Rio said in a disappointing tone. He got up and started leaving as the boy looked downhearted. Rushed approaching footsteps sounded behind him, a slender hand wrapped around his neck and a leg wrapped around his waist as the young maiden hopped onto his back. Who can be this special person, silly? I love my Rio the most in this entire universe. I know sometimes, you're a fool, but, you're my fool. She pecked his cheeks with a loving smile on her cute face. Two weeks passed. It was the day of Rio's 16th birthday. He was waiting for Layla in a restaurant while a birthday cake was placed on the table. He was checking his old watch, a memento of his adopted grandfather, from time to time. The person who was supposed to come was late. A car's tire screeched on the road as it stopped in front of the restaurant. Rio saw from the transparent window. It was a limousine black car and a limited model that was exclusively 11 in the world since it was launched. A few men in black suits came out of it and opened the door from which an old man came out. The maroon-haired old man was giving off a tyrannical aura as if the whole world would bow down to him. He was 190 centimeters in height which just boosted the mighty air around him. Unexpectedly, a black-haired girl was following behind with a moist face and redness in her royal blue eyes. Ads by Pub Future Layla Seeing tears in her eyes Rio clenched his fist in anger and left his chair to stand up. They walked into the restaurant and the men in black suits talked to others. It was emptied out by people as if it was closed for no services. The old man walked in front of Rio and raised his eyebrows, a look of disgust was flicking on his face. So you're that trash who dares to fool my granddaughter. He said to the little guy in annoyance as if Rio was a disgusting filth before clutching his neck to lift him up and throwing him towards another table. Rio crashed into the table but before he could understand anything, he was flying again. He collapsed on the rack made of glass as the small broken pieces stabbed his body. Rio could hear a girl loudly crying to stop but he was thrown a few more times. The crimson-haired boy had a few bones cracked and a body full of injuries that were seeping out blood. His figure was dyed the same color as his hair. The last memento of his grandfather was already broken into pieces and fell somewhere in the mess. Seeing Rio on verge of dying, Layla grabbed the leg of her grandfather, please don't do this to him. I beg you, spare his life. I promise you I'll never meet him again. Rio just heard these words before he felt his head was grabbed by someone. He opened his eyes a little to see the old man who was giving him a look as if the little guy was a disease. For now, I'm sealing his memory about you. If I ever see you with him again, he won't see the sun of another day in his life. That chilly voice was the last thing he heard. A stabbing pain invaded his head before Rio lost consciousness. Layla. Rio woke up yelling the name of the first love of his life, sweat pouring down his forehead and clothes drenched. Dot magic. Hey, everything is gonna be alright. A soft sensation of getting hugged by someone welcomed him while a hand was rubbing his head. Rio looked baffled as the boy realized he was woken up. 
he saw Liao was hugging him while they were laying on the bed. Rio wrapped his hand around her and hugged her tightly as he remembered one million and ten possible futures from the blessing. He was hugging her as if she would disappear if he let her go. Leah didn't say anything and just let him relax in her embrace while caressing his head as if a doting mother comforting a child who was scared. As Leah had seen those notifications, she knew Rio got his sealed memories back. She was just hoping he calms down and doesn't break down after whatever past he had gone through. The young maiden didn't know Rio was hugging her because he was worried about the possible future and not the tragic past. The young maiden didn't know Rio was hugging her because he was worried about the possible future and not the tragic past. Rio spent a few hours in this state before he calmed down. He sat up on the bed and gazed towards the window in thin air as if thinking something. Lia climbed down from the bed to draw the curtains of the windows as Rio was staring at the closed one. He broke from his contemplation when bright light invaded his eyes. Sun was glistening in the clear sky. Night had already passed while he was going through a major event. What are you thinking? Leah asked with a tender voice while turning around. Don't you want to know who is this Layla? He asked with a bittersweet smile. I do but I don't want you to go through the same nightmare again while telling me. Your wife isn't that selfish. A doting voice escaped Leah's cherry-like lips. Rio sighed hearing her words. Don't worry about that. This is something you should know. He said in a resolute voice. Leah walked to him and sat opposite the side of the bed to wait for Rio to continue. After I consumed your sweet blood, a few notifications rang in my mind before I lost consciousness. When I opened my eyes I was in front of a glowing figure in a temple. Rio started recounting everything that happened. He told her how there was only ten future where she survived. Leah could feel his dejection when he told her about how he saw her taking their last breath in his embrace. The second part, about Layla's story, was narrated in a cold voice but Leah was able to detect the fine detail in his emotional fluctuation. Her face was enveloped in a chilly expression by the end of the story. Rio was wondering if this was because of his past with Layla. How could he? A murderous intent flickered in her voice. Let's forget about him for now. He wouldn't dare to touch me while I'm with the Havenglow family. Rio said in a nonchalant voice. Leah didn't say anything but her heart was still in chaos. She wanted to cut that old man into thousand pieces for touching her Rio. After some time passed and she calmed down, Rio asked, Are you not worried if I still care about Layla more than you? I don't want to make it difficult for you by asking questions like who would a person love more, their mother or their daughter. Some questions cannot be answered. Also, if that old man didn't come between the childhood sweethearts. You and Layla would have been still together and I would have become a villain for forcing our marriage on you. She spoke in a bitter voice as she looked downhearted while saying the last sentence. Maybe it's all planned by heaven. He said with a bittersweet smile. He continued, but let me confess something. There are two people who I cherish in my heart, you and her. You both have been nice to me and loved this nobody dearly. But I can't deny one thing that Layla never came to find me because she couldn't go against her adopted grandfather while my beautiful wife Leah has even gone against her father in the whole Azura race just to hide my secrets. How can I love another girl more than my wife whose single thought flutters my heart? You don't have to butter me, she said with a pout and a hint of redness around her cheeks. But I'm not buttering you. This young man is speaking facts he said with a proud smile. They talked a little more before Liao went downstairs. Rio checked the notifications that he had received after collapsing. There were even new notifications that Liao hadn't seen when she was inspecting him. Pure blood of ancient Devlin's bloodline consumed. You have awakened the Devlin might. Beast soul of purple nightmare worm killed. Purple nightmare worm curse has been lifted. You have awakened the sealed innate talent. You have awakened the heaven's eyes. You have awakened the heart sutra. You have awakened the life sutra. Ads by pub future. Sealed innate talent? He frowned when Rio saw these words. He never imagined his innate talent was sealed. Rio always thought he was without any innate talent. 
It even became the reason for the Malin family to break the engagement and blame it on the boy for having no innate talent. He opened his profile to check for new information. User, Rio Havenblow. Race, Hewlin. Innate rank, S. Root, yellow stage. Core, yellow stage. Mana, 50 plus 50. Physical power, 10 plus 20 plus 15. White, 20. Yellow, 15. Equals sad face innate skill, equals equals. Heaven's eyes, you can see what others can't see. Heart Sutra, it's difficult to shake your mind, heart, and emotions for strangers. You wouldn't lose your calmness in hard situations. Life Sutra, you will have a higher mana, stamina, energy, and healing recovery rate. Equals sad face skills, equals equals. Ancient Devlin breathing technique. Devlin might, 20% additional stats points. This effect is boosted to 100% if you're in range of 1 mile from the person who gave you blood to awaken it. Devlin Transformation, transform your body to Devlin. In this form, your defense is boosted by 200%. Mana cost, 10. Devlin Movement Technique, teleports to 20 meters range. Mana cost, 5, magic. Judgment of Devlin, do a 1000% damage strike to finish your enemy. It has a 10% chance to insta-kill the target. Mana cost, 90% of total mana. Ancient Devlin's Beast Emperor technique, beasts under Devlin's bloodline banner would listen to you as their leader. Passive. Spiritual shock, attacks the soul of opponent. Those at the same stage or lower will faint and those at the higher stage will suffer from a stunning effect, duration depends on the power gap. Mana, 20. Cooldown, 30 seconds. Astral home fixation, mark a location as the astral home. Mana, 90% of your total mana. Cooldown, 30 days. Astral recall, teleport you back to astral home. Casting time, 3 seconds. Mana, 10. Cooldown, 1 hour. Ancient disguise, you can change the appearance of the body, cannot cross the humanoid form. Mana, 10. Innate rank S? A gentle smile blossomed on his face. His innate talent had caused him sorrow in the past. Experts on earth would of their mouths agape if they find out this boy had S rank innate talent. People on earth only had talent up to a rank. The innate rank Rio possessed was beyond a human's imagination as they never have heard about it in their history. After getting a little happier about his innate talent, his eyes moved to the innate skills on the list. There was one in which information wasn't described clearly. And what this heaven's eyes do? Rio thought about the skill, his eyes glinted slightly. Ads by Pub Future. A feeble light was moving around in the room from the outside like a transparent thick golden snake. World Energy. For some reason, this word sounded in his mind as he was inspecting it. Rio looked outside the windows, a leaf on the tree was swaying in the air but what astonished him was that he could see the veins on the leaf's surface. Those fine details were visible to him from this distance. Approaching footsteps were heard as Leah entered the room. He turned around to look at her to find a string of information floating in front of him about her. User, Leah Devlin. Race, Azura. Innate rank? Core? Mana? Physical power? It's weird. I can see her profile with this new skill but why there are so many question marks? He mumbled inwardly. Why are you frowning while staring at me? Leah questioned him. Come here and see yourself. He showed her his AI watch which caused Leah to remind him again to not tell anyone about it. She was happy for him but it would be different if someone else knew about his talent. Those question marks might be because I'm on a higher stage than you, Leah said after thinking carefully. I can find it out later. Rio resounded to her. Soon, Yami came with a cart as it was filled with food. Rio used his heaven's eyes on Yami to inspect her as she walked into the room. User, Yami Rouge. Race, Azura. Innate rank? Core? Mana? Physical power? AM too weak even compared to Leah's maid. He sighed inwardly and focused on the food. 
Rio hadn't eaten since yesterday. They ate their lunch and spend the day together. The next day, he didn't go on any mission as Leah had commanded her father and Helia to not bother Rio for a while. They spend their sweet time together meanwhile their bonding kept getting deeper. It was finally the day for his class, which reminded him that he has to leave for Earth. The duo was standing in front of the portal capsule after embracing each other. Good luck with your battle with Talia, Leah said in a tender voice. Thank you, Rio responded and stared into her deep scarlet eyes. He remembered the scenarios goddess had shown him which ached his heart. He took a step forward and pecked her on the forehead before saying, Take care, wifey. Leah wasn't expecting such a way of expressing love because kissing someone's forehead showed great care. It was normally done by a parent to their children. Still, it caused her heart to feel warm feeling. Leah felt as if she can rely on this man whose strength was a lot below her. Rio turned around to slowly walk towards the portal capsule. An unwavering glint was present in his sea green eyes that told him he was not the same person as before. This time, Rio was returning to the earth after going through a metamorphosis. The innocent naive boy that the world knew had been transformed by the goddess's blessings after going through one million and ten visions. The time he had to spend watching those deadly scenes was worth forty years. Any man could have gone insane but he had the divine protection of the goddess and a blessing that helped him adapt. The portal capsule closed and Rio vanished from the land of Azura. A figure appeared in a room, it was light outside already as the sun was illuminating the sky spreading its mighty presence. Rio checked the time as he was a little late for his theory class with Milena West. He rushed towards the teaching building while fixing his clothes. Rio didn't have to change into school dress as it wasn't necessary on normal days. Ads by Pub Future Section A of the first year was already full to the brim when he arrived. Right behind him, teacher Milena came and gave him an intrigued look as he was late but she didn't question him as the boy still entered the class before her. Talia was sitting in the front row, she gave him a mocking smile as today was the day of the challenging battle. Rio took her presence as heir and went to sit on the last seat as he liked avoiding students' unnecessary gaze which was looking at him and whispering among themselves about today's upcoming hot match. Milena West stared at all the students to confirm if everyone was present. Once she was sure, she started the second theory class of the first year for Section A. Today's class is very important as the National Military School Tournament starts in six months. You all need to have a basic understanding of the Davrik's race. So listen carefully. In our universe, there are countless planets but not many inhabitable ones, and the ones where life is possible are filled with beasts comparable to a silver stage beast of the land of Azura or maybe even stronger. The planet where the Davrik's race lived had a tear in the space which caused it to connect to another place from where many terrifying monsters invaded their peaceful cities. The rumors say that God gave their ancestors a key to escape this apocalypse which was a method to cultivate their bodies using the energy present in the environment. Although it helped them defend against the calamity, it wasn't enough to peacefully live as their population was reduced to one-fourth. Their scientists started looking for a habitable planet and that's how they found our Earth. So that's how we got invaded by the Davrik's race 200 years ago. She finished the story with a nonchalant voice. Some students had a look of disbelief as they didn't come from an influential family. Rio wasn't that bothered about it as he had met a god firsthand. One of the green-haired girls questioned, Can you tell us how do they look, and how their strengths differ from ours? Yes, I was going to explain that next anyway. After long research, we discovered that they were similar to us humans in an appearance before the apocalypse. A normal Davrix is much stronger than an average human. Unlike us who rely on the beast of Azura land to get stronger, the Davrix race strengthens their body using the energy present in the environment that come from earth and heaven, sky. As they started cultivating, the energy accumulated on their head, which took the shape of horns as their strength grew. The color of their horn shows their strength. A white horned Davrix would be stronger than an average human, a yellow horned Davrix would be equal to a peak yellow stage human in strength and it goes the same way for other stages. Teacher Milena explained in a composed tone. Students present had a look of astonishment after they received the new information on their enemies. Another student who was sitting on a seat in the mid-row, asked teacher, what happened in the battle 16 years ago? 
We know from the media that it caused Dobrix and humans to sign a peace treaty but there is not much information about the two heroes and how humans survived a desperate war against the Dobrix race. Well, this is some confidential information we do not leak to normal citizens. However, it's different for you students who may get to fight Dobrix in the future. With the first line, she made them lose hope to find out the secret but her next sentence relieved their puzzled faces. Teacher Milena continued as her facial expression turned solemn. Sixteen years ago, around 100,000 black-horned, thousands of red-horned and hundreds of silver-horned Dobrix army attacked the human countries. They wanted to eradicate the humans from their very root as Dobrix were afraid we would chase them out of this planet if we were given enough time. We had no chance to face a major force that consisted of such a terrifying strength. Dobrix as well as humans knew that it was one-way massacre that would put an end to an era where two races existed. However, something unexpected happened that nobody could have imagined which changed the fate of both races completely. She ended the sentence with a cliffhanger which caused the audience present to stare at her with a bitter and puzzled expression. Some of the unreasonable students even cursed her in their minds as they looked unpleasant. Magic. The green-haired girl from before said in a displeased tone, Can you not bully us, teacher? Milena knew how they were feeling after leaving at such a plot twist but the next information was the confidential one which wasn't known by many. I'll tell you but don't leak this information anywhere. You will suffer severe punishment from the government if you did. You guys understand, right? She asked in a solemn voice. Students were well aware of such outcomes as they had signed a few legal papers before joining the military school. They nodded with a bittersweet feeling in their hearts as the young students were already trapped by such provisions since the day of their admission at the Golden Seal Military School. When the human race was on verge of completely ending at the hands of the Dobrix race, the abandoned daughter of the Havenglow family and her husband appeared in the middle of the one-sided battlefield. Their arrival was like a messiah of humanity that brought the day of destruction for the Dobrix. Legendary Amira Havenglow and her husband, Ian Harper both fought a deadly battle against the Dobrix race for two days and three nights. The mountain of corpses and the river of blood were laid down by the savage couple. I still remember seeing a crimson sky at that time from the place where we were evacuated to. Even the moon had turned red from the air caused by all the slaughtering those two pairs did. On the third day when the battle ended, it was broadcasted on TV. We saw the scattered corpses and a dried pool of blood staining the war ground. That scene sent a chill down to everyone's core without discriminating by race. Teacher Milena's face was grave when she explained this. The students present had a look of horror, galvanize and surprise at the same time. The astonishment they felt was too great. Just two humans fought against a hundred silver stage, thousands of red stage, and one hundred thousand black stage army all alone. Not only that but they also finished the desperate battle within sixty hours in humanity's favor. Just thinking about their strength caused the students' blood to boil and feel motivated to work hard. But the number of high-level warriors Dovrik sent caused them to be wary of their enemy in the future. Everyone was dazed hearing the story however, a voice sounded from the last seat, what happened to the Amira Havenblow? Ads by Pub Future. Teacher Milena shrugged at the crimson-haired boy, who had asked this question. He looked interested in the story about the two heroes as this was also the tragedy when he was separated from his parents. She was also the older sister of his second mother so it caused his interest to be piqued. She said in a pale voice, nobody knows where the couple disappeared and what happened at the end. But we were approached by the royal family of Dovrix to race for a truce. We humans in Dovrix race signed a peace treaty and lived together in our own territory after that battle as none of us had other alternatives. Humans' two heroes had disappeared and Dobrix's power was weakened greatly. She finished her dreadful explanation of the human history and waited for students to digest the information. The students were already talking to themselves about the battle between the twin heroes and the Dobrix race. The commotion continued for 15 minutes and died down after a while. Every four years, Alliance holds an international tournament between the genius of both races to encourage good camaraderie and healthy relationships. However, the tournament's real intention is to keep in check the strength of each other's archenemies. The next international tournament will be held in a year. The maximum age to participate in the tournament is 21. So every year, the government organizes a competition between military schools. 
It is to find a prodigy they can nurture for the upcoming event between both races. She explained in a calm voice. Talia, who was sitting in the front row said, There is no use explaining this to us as we are still in our first year. We have no hope of winning against the third-year seniors. Especially when there will a lot of them coming from other famous military schools. That's completely wrong, Talia. You are forgetting that this tradition was broken by the genius of the human race. Three years ago, she won the national tournament in her first year, while being a part of Section A, at the Golden Seal Military School. Teacher Milena corrected her with a proud smile. Magic. You think there would be another prodigy like her again? It might be possible for her younger sister but she is still only 15. I don't think others can pull off the same feat Talia spoke in an assured manner. Ads by Pub Future. But we have another one from that family in our class. Teacher Milena responded in a nonchalant tone. He is not their real offspring. This trash can never defeat Lily Havenglow. She mocked Rio in an annoyed tone. The bitterness she went through, which was caused by him, was still fresh in her mind. She didn't forget the insult of that day. Talia, behave. Teacher Milena said in a commanding chilly voice which caused the girl and students to quieten down. She continued, for the upcoming tournament, you need to form a team with students of our military school. The team cannot exceed more than five and must consist of at least two. Submit the names of your team members to me by the end of this month. The winner will be specially nurtured by the government for the upcoming tournament against the Dobrix race so they will receive a lot of support on their located shelters. Additionally, top teams from our school would get thick marks on their future examination. Students started looking towards two of the seven Silver Sword family members in the front row as they would be ideal for a good team. Better find someone from third year. It will help you to increase your chances to get a higher rank in the national tournament. Talia poured down cold water on their clueless hope. The youngsters weren't aware of the harsh truth that teaming up with two of these seven Silver Sword family members wouldn't guarantee them any chance to rank up higher. However, they all ignored the third of the seven Silver Sword family members of their class who were sitting on the last seat while inspecting others with his newly awakened heaven's eyes. Snow Note Every core slash root can only absorb 20 stats points for each color slash stage. One yellow equals one physical power. One yellow equals one physical power. One purple equals three physical power. Equals 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 slash forward slash equals 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 equals. User, Milena. Race, human. Innate rank. Core. Mana. Physical power. I can't see teacher's stats either. He sighed inwardly and moved his eyes toward a brown-haired girl in the front row. User, Talia Malin. Race, human. Innate rank, B. Root, purple. Mana, 200. Physical power, 10 plus 47. Yellow, 20. Purple, 9. 57 physical power. I have a total of 45 but with Devlin Might, I get a 20% stats points boost which brings my physical power to 54. It's going to be my first real fight with a human that is also around my level. He was contemplating the stats points when Milena West's next sentence brought his attention back to her. I have received news from the school that Talia has challenged Rio. It's a battle between two young children of the Seven Silver Swords family. There is going to be a ruckus during this match so I have been assigned as a judge for this friendly battle. Since theory class is over, join the one in Golden Seal private room in the Kingdom of Beast using the VR pods. Teacher Milena instructed everyone. Students were thrilled and waiting for this duel for a week. When they heard it was going to start, students didn't waste time and started moving toward one of the VR pods. Some of them even informed the school group to inform other students about the duel time as it was a hot topic for a week. Talia asked in a requesting tone, Teacher, can I join using the VR pod at my apartment? Okay, but be there within 10 minutes. She allowed her in a commanding voice. Ads by Pub Future. Talia left the class to depart for her room. Rio also questioned Teacher Milena for the same which she answered with a simple gentle nod. 
he left the class and traveled toward his apartment. It wasn't like Ryo wasn't worried but he knew Talia wouldn't be a harder opponent than those emperor spirits he fought before since he had already inspected her stats. He entered his room and went for the VR pod before laying down on a reclining chair. Ryo put the head mounting device and pressed the start button as his AI watch flashed and a notification rang in his mind. You're now connected to the VR helmet. There was an option for login which he picked and a colorful parallel line transition happened before the boy was standing in an empty white room. He looked for an option to join the private room and teleported to the one in Golden Seal, private room. Ryo appeared in a spacious place at the old Colosseum where he had his first battle training class. Other students had already taken a good seat. His eyes glinted with surprise when he saw there were around 400 students instead of 48 filling many seats. Ryo wasn't a fan of unnecessary attention and crowd but he was helpless to avoid it while being the adopted son of the Havenglow family. A figure soon appeared beside him, it was the brown-haired girl, his opponent for today, however, she frowned looking at the white-masked guy. Unlike before, he kept his face covered this time as he saw the crowd. Ryo moved his eyes toward the judge of the match, who was standing a few meters away from him. Select the enter battle from your menu. Teacher Milena instructed the duo. She already knew it was Ryo behind the mask and his username as Milena received notification that Eastwind joined the private room. They both nodded and appeared 20 meters apart in the middle of the arena covered in grassland. Students seated around the stadium cheered seeing the duo appearing on the battlefield. They started discussing in themselves the upcoming duel. Why is there so much crowd for this match? How do you not even know about this? It's the hot topic around the school. What are you talking about? The youngest daughter of the Malin family was insulting her big sister when Nyla's ex fiance jumped in to save her. It escalated into a duel. Moreover, that Romeo is only at the yellow stage while Talia is at the purple stage. Oh, then he has no chance against her. Are you forgetting about the event that happened three years ago when one of the Havenglow family members crushed geniuses from the senior years? But she was Lily Havenglow. This boy has only been adopted for less than three months into the Havenglow family and I have heard he has no innate talent which was the reason the Malin family broke the engagement. He can't be a nobody while being a Havenglow even if he is adopted. Moreover, Malin family is bullying the childhood sweethearts. We want justice for the young lovebirds. That's interesting. I know, right? Rio. Go and crush Talia Malin who dared to insult your girlfriend. The commotion was going wild with its entertaining gossip as it was supporting both parties. The audience focused their attention on the battlefield while they kept talking to their friends. Rio would have been nervous if it was before, but he didn't show many reactions and stayed composed. Magic. Are you two, ready? Teacher Milena's voice sounded around them. Yes, Talia replied with a confident expression. However, a voice declined, not yet. Crimson-haired boy's refusal caused a wave of laughter and whisper to transpire in the audience. Is that masked guy Rio Havenblow? Yeah, he is looking cool with that white mask and black armor. But why did he decline? Ah, uh, mama boy is scared. As expected of the trash son of the Havenblow family. Shu, Don't go to a conclusion on your own. He must have another reason. Yeah, let's hear what he has to say. Teacher Milena waited for his response as she stared at him from the spacious place at the higher location in the arena where seats were located. You're forgetting to declare the wager for this battle. He spoke in a stiff voice. Hearing his response, Talia's face flickered with a hint of bitterness. Teacher Milena also raised her eyebrows, but she calmed down and nodded as she really skipped to announce the stake of the duel. This match was proposed by Talia Malin on a basis of a bet. If she wins the stake, Rio Havenglow would apologize to her but if she lost, Talia Malin would ask for forgiveness from her older sister. Do you both agree to this wager? She asked after announcing the wager to the audience. Talia nodded with an annoyed expression along with Rio who had a calm look. Ready? Teacher Milena asked again. This time no refusal came against it. Three. Two. One. Begin. Teacher Milena announced the commencement of the battle. 
Both of the contestants stared at each other without starting the fight. Ryo had his hands in his pocket and stood as if he was enjoying the view in a casual manner. Talia, on the other hand, felt irritated by his proud action. She wanted to defeat this trash as soon as possible. He insulted the young lady for Nyla in front of many students. This tarnished her reputation among her friend circle and at the school. Arrogant. She snorted in annoyance and rushed towards him while summoning her weapon. A spear appeared in her hand that she used last time during the battle training class, the triangular tip with purple stripes and thorny edges. Talia was close to the crimson-haired boy but he was just standing there with his unwavering calm posture of keeping his hands in his pocket stylishly. Ah, good that he wants an easy defeat and not waste my time. Her lips turned upwards as she saw Rio still didn't budge from his place. Those who were supporting Rio in the audience were yelling for him to shift away while his haters were laughing at his foolish act. What happened to him? Why is he stagnating on a place? Rio, move away. Don't stand there Rio. Dodge it. Look at that trash. He has become so frightened that he can't even move. All these comments were made in a very small amount of time as Talia was on her way to strike him. When Talia was about to stab her spear into Rio's chest, her spear pierced the air and hit nothing. Talia had her eyes wide open with scrunched eyebrows as her target disappeared all of a sudden. Rio had vanished from his spot using the Devlin movement technique right before the attack was going to touch his body. This fine detail and timing were done by his heaven's eyes as he could see her in slow motion. She cursed outwardly, what the hell is this? A gust of wind appeared right behind Talia to answer her call. Before she could turn around, a blade had already passed through her slender body, cutting her in two. A deadly silence enveloped the stadium as the audience stood up to see this unforeseen development. Their jaw almost dropped to the ground along with a look of disbelief plastered on their faces. Most of them knew that Rio was going to lose this battle but those, who believed in him, because he was from the Havenglow family, didn't imagine he would finish this battle with a single strike. The crimson-haired boy had simply used mana enchantment to strengthen his body, eyes, and silver bloom king sword. It enhanced his single strike to a fatal one that went through Talia's body like a blade cutting through a tofu dot magic. One of the reasons for her instant defeat was that she underestimated Rio from the start. Talia didn't even use her armor beast soul at the start of the battle. This caused her opponent to completely destroy her using a single swing of his silver bloom king sword. The downhearted brown-haired girl appeared outside the battle arena beside teacher Molina. Talia has been defeated. Rio wins the battle. Judge's voice resounded in the stadium which woke up the dazed students from their amazed condition. A commotion started among the students in the stadium. How did he do that? Maybe he also advanced to the purple stage. That trash was just lucky that Talia didn't use her armor-type beast soul. Ads by Pub Future. What are you talking about? Rio would have defeated her even if she used more beast soul. I wish he was my boyfriend. He is so cool. Nyla Malin is really lucky that she has this boy. But where is Nyla Malin? The conversation continued and Rio appeared beside teacher Milena. It's time for her to fulfill the bet. He spoke in a composed manner, which was heard by the audience as the contestants and judges' voices were broadcasted to everyone. Okay, but we would need to call Nyla, first. Teacher Milena said and started inspecting the audience list to see if she was present. Talia's face was displaying the bitterness to its full glory. She was defeated with a single strike. Who could have known this was going to happen? Oh, damn it. She was cursing her ancestors and heaven for giving her thought to approach Rio that day. If Talia didn't bother her sister, she wouldn't have become the laughingstock today in front of everyone. Hey, look. Nyla Malin is there. Someone from the audience yelled who was sitting on a seat nearby the judges. After hearing about her arrival, Rio turned around as his eyes searched for the cheerful girl. Nyla was walking towards him from the audience's seat. Her magenta hair was falling down to the ravishing milky shoulder that was drowned in a purple dress. Her signature happy smile was painted on her adorable face, which was a little rosy. 
Nyla's friends were shipping her with Rio all this time while she was watching him from the audience. It caused her heart to flutter in ecstasy. After Rio went to the land of Azura, Nyla finds out from her friend how Rio had taken a stand for her after she left in tears. Nyla also discovered that Rio had accepted a desperate challenge where he would lose with his current strength. She knew very well that the boy was only at the yellow stage. Nyla danced in joy thinking about the stake of the battle. A boy was going to duel with Talia just to make her apologize to Nayla in front of everyone for insulting his only friend. The magenta-haired beauty felt butterflies flying in her heart and jumbled up as she closed the distance with Rio. She stopped beside him and indicated with eyes to look in front as he was kept gazing at her. Nyla didn't know that Rio was thinking about the ten possible future visions in which she was along with Layla. Talia, go ahead. Teacher Milena spoke to her. I'm sorry, Talia said in a bitter voice as her face was flickering with annoyance. Saying that she exited from the one and golden seal private room. The audience all cheered after Talia apologized. Rio didn't wait further and exited after bidding farewell to Milena via whisper. Nyla, who was waiting beside him, called out hastily, Hey, wait. Seeing that he already left, she pouted in a cute manner before logging out to depart from the stadium. Rio took off his VR helmet and went to get a glass of water from the kitchen area. Ding dong. Someone rang his doorbell while he was filling a glass with water. Don't tell me. He raised his eyebrows as he had a fine idea who it could be. Rio went to open the door as he took a sip from the glass of water. A girl in a blue dress was standing there. She had her both fists on her waist, making a pout face. Why did you leave without even saying hello? She complained and barged into his room. Rio didn't respond as he saw her grabbing the glass of water from his hand before gulping down all the content in one go. Oh, thank you. I was thirsty since the morning. Nyla replied. That was already half drunk by me, Rio said in a calm voice. Don't worry about that. A wise man once said drinking or eating the leftover of a partner increases love between them. She threw a punchline with a bright smile. Why are you here? He wasn't bothered by her presence but still inquired about the vibrant girl. Can't I even come to my friend's room? We are neighbors, Rio. She spoke as if it was a normal thing to do. Who was it that closed the door on my face? He crossed his hands and looked at her in a cool-headed manner. She avoided his intriguing gaze with a bittersweet smile. Why didn't you respond to any of my messages? She changed the topic and walked into his bedroom shamelessly. I was at the land of Azura. He responded in a composed voice and followed her in. Nyla took his phone from the bed and handed it to him, here. Rio took it in his hand and gave her a puzzled look. He went through the long list of notifications. 7% battery left. 321 missed calls. 410 unread messages. He rubbed his forehead seeing a lot of notifications. His battery was also almost down although the latest phone was equipped with long-lasting rechargeable batteries. Rio hurriedly moved to check them up one by one. 318 missed calls from Nyla. 3 missed calls from second mother. 410 unread messages from Nyla. There was a heart shape beside her name which was set by herself. 318 missed call. What was it that she couldn't wait? He frowned and started reading 410 text messages. Meanwhile, Nyla, who was standing beside him, looked at him with enamored eyes as if he was the fine art at the museum. She smiled like a foolish girl while he was busy looking at his phone. If someone saw her right now, they would say the girl had already lost her heart to this man. Nyla was crushing on Rio since the moment she saw him on stage against Talia and fighting her. She didn't imagine someone would actually take a stand for her against her stepsister. But there was this crimson-haired, weird boy. He actually accepted a desperate challenge against Talia who was a whole stage above him. Which girl wouldn't have a crush on a man who would step in to take a stand for her tears and thrash the one who insulted her? The young maiden was head over heels for this man after the incident, whom she had planned to make fall for her instead. I'm sorry, Rio. I was upset after Talia talked badly about my mom. 
I shouldn't have behaved rudely to you. I had actually gone to the land of Azura after you left. My friends informed me about the challenge between you and Talia. You don't really have to fight with her. She is a level higher than you so I don't want you to get laughed at by others. I'll apologize to her so she doesn't bring the duel up. Please forgive me, Rio. Where are you, Rio? You didn't even answer when I rang the doorbell, magic. I'm waiting, but you don't reply. Please call me back when you come back. Rio? Are you so mad at me that you won't even reply? I'm sorry, Rio. Rio. Ads by Pub Future. Rio. Sweetie. Don't ignore me. Forgive me, Rio. What would I do with this girl? Rio rubbed the middle of his forehead as he went through all the messages. As the girl saw he was finished, she came out of her crushing mode. Would he get mad at me that I sent so many messages? Why was I that crazy to send him that many messages? Nyla put both her hands in front of her eyes and spread her finger a little to take a little peek at him. She looked quite adorable while doing this cute act. The crimson-haired boy was speechless beyond words. He finished reading the never-ending messages and put the phone to charge before sending a text message to the second mother that he was at Land of Azura. So? Nyla spoke after seeing that the boy didn't show any reaction. So what? He repeated her word in a composed manner. Will you forgive me for being rude to you last time? She mumbled in a pleading tone. It's fine. You don't have to apologize. I can understand how you would be feeling at that time. He said in a nonchalant voice. Thank you, Rio, you're the best, um, can we celebrate your winning? Nyla asked with a vibrant smile. No. It's unnecessary. He refused her while shaking his head lightly. Please, 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 Rio. She asked in an adorable manner clapping her hand together in a requesting manner. Ah, how long would it take? Rio hesitated as he had to return to the world of Azura. Ads by Pub Future. Around seven hours maybe? She asked while smiling inwardly. Nyla knew the art of negotiations, ask for a mile to receive more inches. No. That's not possible, how about three hours? Rio answered as he thought Liao would be asleep for five to six hours since it was night when he left. Okay, deal, let's go partner, we need to do some shopping for our little party. Nyla held his hand and dragged him out of his apartment. The duo went to the shopping area of the school to buy a few things to celebrate Rio's victory. Students were giving them a happy look as Rio had just defeated Talia. Those students, who didn't able to watch the match, were informed by their friends about the magnificent battle. It was mind-blowing where Rio Havenglow took down another seven Silver Swords family child with a single strike. Most of them believed it was more of a love war rather than a duel. They were pleased with the outcome as Romeo took revenge for his Nyla by thrashing the stepsister in front of everyone like how she insulted his childhood sweetheart in public. After 15 minutes, they were back in their apartment in Nyla's room. She had bought some drinks, food, and karaoke equipment that the magenta-haired girl set up in her room while Rio took his seat on the couch. Nyla went to serve each other food on the table that they had bought. It wasn't a lot as they had other items for the planned celebration. Here let's eat a little, then we would do karaoke and dance. She said in a vibrant voice. Okay. He proceeded to eat the food she served while Nyla placed her head on her hands. It covered her coyish cheeks as she gazed at Rio while smiling like a foolish person. Rio was busy with his food while the young maiden was enjoying looking at her crush with smitten eyes who has started fluttering her tender heart. The boy noticed that there wasn't movement by other person, he moved his eyes to find out the love-struck girl was looking at him like a silly person. Don't you want to eat? Rio spoke while scrunching his eyebrows. Don't you want to eat? Rio spoke while scrunching his eyebrows. It caused her to wake up from her stupefied state and she blinked her eyes a few times before starting to eat from her plate without making any sounds. They didn't talk while eating as Nyla was busy peeking at him from time to time. After they were done eating, Nyla cleaned the table and brought two glasses from the kitchen area. 
She arranged them along with the cocktails and mocktails bottles on the table one by one. The young maiden then stuffed a bowl with different snacks and desserts. Rio was feeling thirsty since he hadn't drunk much since morning. So he grabbed a bottle of mocktail from the table and filled a glass to the brim, ignoring the other alcoholic drinks she placed. Let's sing karaoke now. She said with a merry smile and took the microphone in her hand. I'll start with my favorite poem with the music that fits perfectly. It's dedicated to you, sweetie, so enjoy. She picked up her smartphone and tapped it a few times. A music track started playing, while Rio sipped on his drink. Roses are re re e e d. Sky is blue e e e. You have a nice but t t t. And I love e e e u u u u u. Her jolly voice was filled with melody as her eyes were closed while singing it. Rio, who was drinking juice from the glass, almost choked. Cough, cough, cough. Ah, where does this girl get her weird inspiration for such lines? She is one of a kind. Rio was amazed by her creative skills to make the vibes joyful around her. He was slowly getting relaxed by the girl's bright and bubbly behavior. It helped to comfort him as his coldness had melted slightly towards her which was accumulated after gaining those sealed memories. Rio's past with Layla made him cautious of other humans. It wasn't the case before as he didn't have those memories back when he met this vibrant girl. He was feeling guarded against her after Rio returned back to Earth and fought with Talia at Battle Arena. But Nyla's cheerful behavior succeeded to make Rio smile again and unintentionally helped her to win him back a little. It seems, you like my poems so much that you even forgot you were drinking. Since you enjoyed my lovely composition, here is another one just for my Rio. Nyla played the music again which was paused by her after she completed her first poem. Roses are e e e e d. Sky is blue e e e. You snore like a b-a-a-r-r-r-r-r. But I'm still in love with you you. She finished her shameless poem as the music stopped and gazed at the crimson-haired boy for recognition who was staring daggers at her for calling him bear. Rio nodded as if he decided to fight back and reply using her own poem. Roses are red. Ads by Pub Future. Sky is blue. You my dear friend. Belongs to a zoo o His singing wasn't filled with melody like Nyla's as he only wanted to tease her back. Don't worry sweetie. I'll bring you there too. She said with her merry voice which was musical. The renowned poet, who was best at being shameless, didn't let him win. Hearing her response Rio finally gave up on his idea to defeat her. She was at another level whom he never met before. Rio, let's dance together while I will sing. She held his hand and dragged him to a spacious place in the room. He stood there in a composed manner and watched her action. She placed the microphone near her adorable face and started singing before playing a music track for the song lyrics. Let me bang 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 your body tonight. Let me kiss you cuddle you seduce you tonight. Nyla sang her melodious song, keeping her eyes closed, and nodded her head in joy as if enjoying each of the lyrical words. She tapped the ground with her foot rhythmically which made her look quite a good feet style dancer. While Rio was distracted by hearing the lyrics but what could he say since it was a song after all? Nyla continued to follow in her footsteps and danced as the lyrics flowed with it. Let me bang 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 your body tonight. Let me kiss you, cuddle you, seduce you tonight. I'm gonna be rough, pull you close, make you surrender to me. Boy, you can do whatever to make me suffer tonight. She swirled around Rio, pulling him by the shirt towards her as Nyla coiled her slender hands around his neck. The girl stared into his sea green eyes while singing the lyrics with a sparkling expression. I'm gonna bang 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 you tonight. Cause I know you're the one and only in my heart. Tell me who can love you like me. Tell me who can kiss you like me. Tell me who can hold you like me. Would you really be able to find someone like me? I'm gonna bang 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 you tonight. Ads by Pub Future. The high beats and beautiful lyrical words match together to create a magical moment between the duo. Those lyrics had a hidden meaning as she sang them for Rio in a loving manner. Nyla had especially changed the lyrics of the original song to resonate with her heartfelt feelings for this crimson-haired boy. She wrote it earlier as the silly girl could make Rio fall for her. 
However, her plan failed as she wasn't expecting to be the one to become madly in love with this guy who fought for her glory with the evil stepsister in front of the whole school. I'll push you down, eat you up, work you all the way up, to give you a ride to heaven. I'm gonna bang 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 your body tonight. Cause I know you're the one and only in my heart. Eat you up? Ride to heaven? What kind of lyrics is that? Our innocent Rio wasn't able to understand the hidden meaning behind her lyrical words but he liked the last line of the song. She paused while letting go of him and looked toward the ground with a sorrow-filled smile. The music slowed down to resonate with the emotional melody of upcoming lyrics. I'll give you my smile when you are sad. I'll give you my heart if yours get broke. I'll cheer you up when you feel down. I'll be by your side when you're all alone. Even if you don't accept me. Even if you find me annoying. I'll only be yours forever. Cause I know you're the one and only in my heart, ever, and, forever. The mood in the environment changed completely with the last part as she sang it with all her heart and emotions expressing her deep love for the crimson-haired boy. Rio felt jumbled up emotions rising inside him as the last part moved his unwavering heart. The mood in the environment changed completely with the last part as she sang it with all her heart and emotions, expressing her deep love for the crimson-haired boy. Rio felt jumbled up emotions rising inside him as the ending lyrics started melting his frozen emotions. It was easy to handle his rejection before today. But my chest is hurting so much after gaining this goddamn feeling for this dummy. Nyla was feeling very saddened that she didn't get much reaction from this crimson-haired boy for the hard-worked performance she especially prepared for him. She had planned to mesmerize him with her cute song and flutter his heart for her but it was a failure that caused the girl to feel intense sorrow. A downcast expression enveloped her face as Nyla's eyes landed on the cocktails at the table. Getting drunk and forgetting everything seemed alluring to her right now to escape all of these complicated emotions. Rio quietly watched her actions as she went to uncap the alcoholic bottle and gulped it down her throat completely, finishing the content inside in one go. That much alcohol dose won't take her long to become intoxicated. But why is Nyla acting as if she lost something so precious? Was I too harsh on her? He felt worried about her well-being. Even Rio didn't realize he was giving her too many cold shoulders by not letting her take advantage of his naivety like before. The boy now had his old memories unsealed that were the sweet days he spent with Layla. He knew how to comfort a girl from his romantic experience of the past but Rio didn't want to give her any false hope to hurt her even more. I'm sorry, Nyla but I cannot use you as a mere tool to save Leah. You're my friend, not an object that I would use to fulfill my desires or goals and throw you away when it's done. You would be happier with a man who loves you, cherish you, and adores you. I hope you understand that man cannot be me. He thought inwardly while watching her drink to her full desire. She put the glass down as Nyla didn't look intoxicated yet. Rio, you say you don't love me and don't have feelings for me, so can you let me test if I really have any chance or not? She said in a tender voice while the magenta-haired girl gazed at him in a loving manner. Magic. How would you test? He asked while putting his hands in his pocket as the boy was still standing in the spacious place she dragged him earlier to dance to her self-composed song. Let me hug you for 20 seconds and I'll find out if you have any feelings for me or not, okay? She asked with a pleading tone but her eyes were slowly getting heavier from the alcoholic dose she consumed. Even if you weren't from Havenglow family I would have eloped with you to the land of Azura to spend the rest of my life with you in the wilderness. Ads by Pub Future Rio was her ideal candidate as she thought he was a gentleman compared to other boys she met in her life. He was also the only one due to the reason of being an adopted child of the Havenglow family. This was the root reason for her to choose him as the Malin family cannot afford to offend them. However, now it was different as she was willing to be with him even if the girl had to live in an abandoned place in the land of Azura far away from any human contact. I just pray, this helps this silly girl to give up on me and find someone else who can truly love her. Okay. He said in a composed manner. A merry smile flashed on her face as she clapped her hands to celebrate her little achievement and ran towards him as if going for the happiest destination in the world. She placed both her hands between his shoulder and the torso that was blocked because of him putting his hands in his pocket. Her hand slithered away from that little space to wrap around him as she hugged him tightly, placing her head on his chest. 
she felt immensely relaxed and a blissful joyous sensation enveloped her. Thump! 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 She could listen to his heartbeat but also heard the one beating inside her caused by hugging the person she gained sudden feelings for. A trail of tears flowed from her tipsy eyes and drenched his shirt without her even realizing it. She grew up without the love of her parents and didn't open up to anyone before. The bullying by her stepmother and stepsister also saddened her always. Nyla was keeping all of this inside her for so long as the girl didn't remember hugging anyone this closely while lowering her guard down. The overflowing dam was broken the moment Nyla was in his embrace and rushed through her beautiful green eyes. For some reason, there is a warmth sensation spreading in my chest, it feels like I would be happy as long as I'm with this dummy. She mumbled inwardly as the sweet girl embraced this foolish guy tightly. Nyla was going through a roller coaster of emotions. Those cocktails just did the work of fuel to ignite it to the next level. Never did she imagine for such outcome where Nyla would be head over heels for the guy she planned to mesmerize with her beauty and marry later on. A great person once said, no person is perfect and their imperfections are what makes them beautiful. Her intentions were not great but it wasn't bad either. We all do little things to impress the person we want to marry. The girl knew they would develop feelings slowly once they were married. She didn't want to rush things but time wasn't on her side. But she never thought that this dummy would be the one to steal her delicate heart. Rio had no clue what she was thinking all this while. He just stood there, putting his hands in his pocket as if nothing happened. An aromatic scent of orchids invaded his nostril when she hugged him. Her silky magenta hair rubbed against his jaw and her chubby melons pressed together on his chest. He was looking at the ceiling to keep his calmness and unwavering resolve, wandering his eyes that exposed his plan to not show his nervousness. More than ten minutes passed as she kept herself wrapped around him. After fifteen minutes, Nyla looked at Rio's face while her hands stayed wrapped around him. More than ten minutes passed as she kept herself wrapped around him. After fifteen minutes, Nyla looked at Rio's face while her hands stayed wrapped around him. The boy was looking at the ceiling and his eyes movement could tell he didn't know how to react in this situation. You don't like me, right? You find me annoying, maybe you hate me. Her intoxicated voice sounded as he inclined his head to look into her green eyes. But you see sweetie, even if you hate me. She gazed right into his intriguing eyes in a loving manner and a creepy smile enveloped with deep affection flashed on her moist face. I. Will. Love. You. To. The. Death. And. My ghost would. Haunt you. Forever. Those words exploded beside his ears, making him dazed and causing a complicated wave of emotion to rise inside him. Rio looked at her bewitching face which was filled with unwavering stubbornness to get him. Did my Rio think he can run away from me? Did you think, I'll give up on you? Ah, that's so cute of you. Her jolly voice escaped her cherry-like red lips and separated herself from him. He swallowed nervously hearing her statement. Rio wondered if he should be happy or cry when there was a young maiden who loved him to this level. The drunken girl collapsed right after that as a massive alcohol dose and crying caused her to be drowned in sleepiness with a heavy head. Seeing her swaying in the air, Rio caught her by coiling his hands around her curvaceous waist, which helped to not let her fall down on the ground. He held her up in bridal carry as she was lightweight and stared at her innocent face with some confusing emotions. Ah, oh, why is this happening? Rio sighed and moved towards her bedroom. They celebrated his victory but it ended up making her sad. His intention wasn't to upset this girl. Hie placed the young maiden down on her purple bed and covered her up with a purple blanket. Ads by Pub Future. Rio said with a tender voice, sleep well, Nyla. He closed the door behind him and left with jumbled up emotions inside him. After ten hours passed, the magenta hair girl fluttered open her eyes and looked around her in puzzlement. Ah, my head hurts. She rubbed her forehead with scrunched eyebrows and mumbled in a quiet voice, what happened earlier? Nyla tried recalling things that happened earlier in the day before she collapsed and fell asleep. The young maiden remembered how she was drunk and confessed her newly acquired feelings to the foolish boy. Magic. A bitterness enveloped her adorable face and she climbed down from her bed. 
she walked towards her window and drew the curtains wide open. It was dark outside, as ten hours had passed to welcome the night. Pond, which was surrounded by beautiful flowers, was engulfed in the beauty of the starry night and the moon was glimmering along the sparkling stars. The sight was dazzling enough to make anyone relax but the young maiden gazed at the moon in the sky with a sorrowful glint in her eyes. Nyla spoke word by word as she expressed her heart content. Gazing at the moon reminds me of you. Wondering if you would ever watch it together with me. I understand your heart has no place for me. Yet when I am looking at the starry night, it makes me want to dive in all for you. It doesn't matter how long it will be. It doesn't matter if I have to trudge a path of thorns. For you darling, I'll exchange my heart for a little smile on your face. For you darling, I'll cross the river of fire and curses. As long as I have hope to make you mine, I won't hesitate even a little. If fate permits, we can gaze at the moon together while our body embraces each other. If it doesn't permit. Saying that she walked towards the portal capsule leaving behind her words that sounded with a chilly aura. Then I'll trample the fate beneath me. The somber silence enveloped the empty room which witnessed Rio's celebration, where a sweet girl sang and danced, confessed and broke, and cried to sleep after getting tired by her new emotions. Our Rio didn't know that the girl he was rejecting right at this moment would become the key factor to decide his destiny in the future. Her unwavering love for the crimson-haired boy would create havoc in the stars of destiny. Even heaven would have to bow down to the stubbornness of her heart. After leaving Nyla's room, Rio decided to go back to the land of Azura but his phone started ringing. He frowned and checked it. Second mother is calling. Rio tapped his phone screen and received the call. Hey Rio, how is everything? A woman's voice sounded from the speaker. It's fine. He responded while opening the door of his room. Aren't you eating your meals properly? Why your voice sounds weak? Yeah. I haven't slept well so my voice sounds tired. Rio replied and walked into his room. I saw your duel with Talia. You defeated her with a single strike. Nicely done, little Rio. I knew my child would be as talented as his mother. But don't overwork yourself while chasing strength. Health comes before everything. Her voice was filled with motherly affection. Thank you. I'll rest properly. You should not stress about me and take good care of yourself. His heart melted slightly for his second mother as Rio knew he didn't have to promise her anything to be loved. She didn't demand him anything like others. Second mother loved him unconditionally like a real mother. Even if she hid his parents' identity he believed her. He remembered how she skipped her meals when Rio was away for a month. Maybe words can be fabricated into lies but her actions told him he could trust her. Second mother heard his concern about her and felt ecstasy. She said, I'm happy that my child cares about me. I wanted to ask you if you could come home this Wednesday. We will be having a family meeting soon. You and Lily haven't met yet. How about coming home this Wednesday to meet her? Rio rubbed his forehead as he disliked being social and meeting with others. Sorry, I don't like interacting with people. I hope you don't feel bad by my refusal and I think she wouldn't be happy to meet me either as you may know Rose already hates me. He said in a composed manner. Yeah, I know she hasn't accepted you yet but it will work out in the future. But Lily is the complete opposite of Rose. Although she is very cold towards outsiders, Lily wouldn't treat you badly. She is a nice girl, Rio. Second mother praised her older daughter in front of him, Rio couldn't see a mysterious light flickering in her eyes when she talked about the older daughter as he was using an audio call for conversation. Sorry, but I would meet her when I feel comfortable. I am not ready yet. I hope you understand. He turned her down as Rio needed some time to accept his new memories. Okay, take your time Rio, I'll wait for you to accept it slowly. Rushing things wouldn't be healthy either. She said in a tender voice. Yeah. He mumbled. What's your relationship with Nyla? Second mother asked with a curious voice but it sounded as if she was worried about something. She is just my friend. You can say my very first friend, but why do you ask? He felt alarmed and scrunched his eyebrows. 
There are rumors about you too. I hope there is nothing between you and her. She sounded concerned but didn't drag it long. Why would you say that? Rio asked. He thought that even if there was something between them it shouldn't be an issue. They had nearly engaged after all. It would be problematic if I tell you now. You will find out when the time comes. Second mother spoke with some hesitations and didn't reveal it. Understood, I'll wait. He replied without taking it seriously. Okay then, I won't disturb you more today. Take care, my child. She said in a doting voice that was filled with warmth. You too, and have a good day. Rio bid her farewell in a polite manner. Saying that he disconnected the call and walked towards the portal capsule to return back. Ads by Pub Future. After the duel between two children of the seven silver sword families, Rio had become popular around the human country. Everyone praised how he thrashed Talia with one strike and took revenge for his girlfriend. Someone even uploaded the video on the school internet forum that they had recorded while inspecting the match. At the beginning of the video, it was told how Talia bullied her older sister and Rio jumped in to defend her. It escalated to a challenge which Romeo accepted in the end. Magic. In the clip, it was even mentioned that the Malin family is trying to separate the childhood sweethearts. The video had gone viral, as it received 40 million views in a few hours after the clip got uploaded. The sweet couple had become a celebrity for the younger generations and a favorite of many even older one. However, they didn't have any pictures of Rio's face as he was using the white mask during the battle. Unaware of any of this event, Rio appeared on the couch of his bedroom at Empress Villa. Lia was laying on her bed in an adorable manner and her bewitching eyes were closed while she was hugging a pillow. She looked like a sleeping princess who was waiting to be kissed by the prince to wake up from her slumber. Rio walked towards the bed carefully to not make any noises and watched her fairy-like face that made his frozen heart feel ecstatic. Even though the boy had become cold to everyone, the main reason behind it was Lia, the person he treasured the most. Rio saw her dying a million times which caused him to be cold to others and his unsealed memories with Layla that he became cautious of everyone. Additionally, he was blessed by goddess during this trial which granted him, Heart Sutra. It protected his heart and mind from the overwhelming emotions of strangers while helping him to keep a calm mind. After an hour, Leah's eyelashes shook lightly and she opened them. What welcomed her sight was a crimson-haired boy gazing at her with affection-filled eyes. A bright smile blossomed on her face and she sat up on her bed. When did you come? She asked in a sleepy voice while rubbing her half-closed eyes. I don't know. Maybe an hour? He replied while taking a seat beside her on the bed. Why didn't you wake me up then? She asked in a complaining voice. He shrugged with a gentle smile. Leah didn't investigate much and moved to the next topic. How was your match with Talia? She asked while sitting in a meditation position as if waiting for an entertaining story to start. Well, when I went back. As expected, Rio narrated the whole story from start to end, telling her about the Davrik's race as well as the two heroes he heard about from teacher Milena. He told her how the boy inspected Talia with, heaven's eyes, and defeated her using, Devlin's movement technique, and the silver bloom king sword his lovely wife had given him. Rio also told her how Nyla and he celebrated his victory, how she sang an abnormal song for him, how she danced, how she confessed her feelings, how she hugged to test if he loved her or not, how she cried and collapsed at the end. If Rio wanted he could have hidden it from Leah but the boy decided to tell her as always. She just listened to the very end with a serene face. Would you have accepted her if you weren't bound by the oath? Leah asked with a curious gaze and monitored his face for every detail that may tell her answer. Would you have accepted her if you weren't bound by the oath? Leah asked with a curious gaze and monitored his face for every detail that may tell her answer. What do you think? He asked mysteriously, keeping an unperturbed expression. Hey, that's my line. She jumped onto him and she dived in to bit his neck. Arg, my wife is a vampire. He cried out in a sarcastic manner. Leah let go of him after a while as she was just being playful. The young maiden was sitting on his lap while her legs were coiled around his waist and her hands wrapped around his neck. Answer me. 
She asked in a questioning tone and a fierce glint in her eyes. Do I look stupid? He asked with a scrunched face. Obviously, you do, Leah said with a lively smile while gazing at his sea-green eyes that were looking at her as if this question was meaningless. I wouldn't consider that option even if you become less loving or less adorable than already you're my empress. Moreover, I wonder who would want to eat mortal realm's food outside when you have a hot heavenly dish at your home. He gave her solid facts with examples in a nonchalant voice. So am I just a heavenly dish for you, she asked in a chilly voice, looking extremely adorable. And also a sexy vampire, my wifey he teased her while pinching her cute nose. Yub. She was going to say something but her lips were sealed by him as he kissed her. The tender lips brushed past each other as the lovebirds drowned in the pleasure. The blissful moment lasted a few minutes before they separated. Lia went downstairs to ask Yami to send them food before washing her face to get ready. They had breakfast together and Rio left to meet Helia to do his mission. The boy needed to focus on getting strength if he wanted to save the person he cherished. The morning sun was spreading its warmth around the castle as it welcomed the new day. He asked about the whereabouts of Helia from the guards and found her at the castle, who was having breakfast alone. Ads by Pub Future. You're back? She asked with a frown. Your eyes work fine, thankfully. He replied in a stiff voice. Hey. She didn't expect such reply as the blonde-haired beauty stared at him and discovered his eyes were missing the old naivety. There was an additional layer of coldness and maturity in them as if he wouldn't lose his peace in any condition. What happened to this guy that he gives an aura of an expert warrior? Helia narrowed her eyes at him but... The boy didn't falter from her intimidating gaze. Are you here to start with your second mission? She asked him. Yeah. He said in a calm voice. Rio wasn't cautious of Helia as she was on his side, 90% of the future visions he saw and she wasn't demanding him anything like Nyla. Helia was actually a good ally to protect the person he cherished. However, Rio didn't know he was already given to her when she was of very young age. It was all up to the boy and lioness to decide if they wanted to be together. Although it would be hard for the duo to develop such relationships. This was all in the future. Moreover, if he could make her regret her past actions for mistreating him on their first meeting then she should have had to serve him as her master. Your next mission is to claim shelters under humans around the Shamer Empire's border. Make use of ancient Devlin's Beast Emperor technique to bring beasts under our banner to defeat those scumbags at your targeted shelter. When you chase them away from their shelter or you kill them off, link that place to the teleporter tower by using this artifact. You can activate its mechanism by inserting some mana inside its body. She explained his next mission and gave him a transparent spherical object that had tiny stars glimmering inside it. He inspected the little starry ball before keeping it inside his pocket. Bronze Crest Shelter will be your starting point for the new mission. Use Beast under this shelter to claim one of the neighboring shelters marked on this map. Helia bring out a folded white sheet and gave him. Rio opened the paper to check and found there were locations pointed out on the map. Only Bronze Crest Shelter was mentioned on it. Magic. Good luck. She said in a nonchalant voice, hiding the worry that was flickering in her red eyes while watching his calm face. He nodded as her hidden concerning look didn't escape his, heaven's eyes. Rio turned around to leave the room and traveled in the direction of the teleported tower as he used the, ancient disguise, spell to change into his third appearance. I wonder what happened that changed this guy completely. I don't like the new him. He gives a vibe as if he would snap at me if I said anything bad to him. He became so intimidating. Helia sighed inwardly as she saw him walking outside of the room with an appearance similar to her big brother Leon. Give me, teleport glyph, for bronze crest shelter. The blonde-haired boy asked with a stiff voice. The old man nodded and gave him hastily while recalling his past visits with Empress and Princess Helia. There were two glyphs he handed, one was for going to the bronze crest shelter and the second for returning to teleporter tower. The old man didn't know Rio could come back using astral recall. Rio walked towards the ascended platform he used two times in the past that was reserved for royalty. He tore apart the teleport glyph and vanished into the space rift. 
After going through many trials and training, the boy went on his first mission against the humans where he would have to face them head on. Bronze Crest Shelter, at the border of Shamer Empire. A blonde haired boy walked out of a tower like building that was located in a dense forest. He changed his facial appearance into one of Azura's guards as his figure started advancing far away from the shelter. This would save me from exposing my face until I find a mask. Ryo didn't want to reveal his disguised appearance that was similar to Helia's big brother Leon. He thought it was bad to taint the reputation and make others hate Helia. Although Helia wouldn't stop killing humans mercilessly but Ryo wanted to approach the lioness to convince her not to harm the innocents. As he traveled further away from the bronze crest shelter, a field of grassland appeared in front of him. His sight spotted a beast around 120 centimeters tall that was darting in distance to somewhere else. Ryo was able to observe its bodily features with the help of Heaven's Eyes, as it boosted his eyes' abilities. Beast's sharp teeth were protruding from a rodent-like head. Its body and tail with yellow stripes were covered with defensive spines that were very sharp at the end. There were three thick purple lines on its forehead that went vertically down. Those purple lines are similar to the royal family's guard's armor. A sign of Devlin's family banner. He mumbled inwardly. The boy recalled the information he gained from his first visit to the land of Azura and his first theory lesson with Emperor Dillon. Ryo used his, heaven's eyes, to inspect this tall rodent-like beast to find out more about them as he was expecting his innate skills to work on these monsters and reveals their stats. A long string of information was displayed in front of him. Name, Normal Fierce Porcupine. Race, Beast. Core, Yellow Stage. Mana, 75. Physical Power, 10 plus 26. Innate Stats, 10. White, 10. Yellow, 16. Beast Soul, Projectile. As I guessed, it even works on beasts. It's quite handy while wandering in unknown lands. He sighed and looked at the beast's various stats. This normal yellow stage beast has 1.5 more mana than humans in Azura. He mumbled while reading the information. The crimson-haired boy gazed at the beasts and commanded, Hey, you. Follow me. This single line seemed funny to hear when it wasn't directed to a person. Ryo spoke in his mind and sent a telepathic message to the beast, who looked at him with intrigued eyes in his direction and then started running towards him as if it could understand the boy. One is done but how would I summon the rest of the beasts in the area that aren't visible to me? He thought for a few seconds and mumbled, all the fierce porcupine in 100 kilometers region, I summon you. The moment he said these words, a cloud of dust started rising in the four directions around the bronze crest shelter. Ads by Pub Future the ground was vibrated by their galloping impact as a herd of beasts marched towards the crimson-haired boy after hearing their master's call. Magic. Ryo could easily see them even when they were far away with the help of Heaven's eyes as it was enhancing his vision range. He calmly looked at fierce porcupine beasts one last time and brought out the map from his pocket that Helia had given him earlier in the day. The marked location is in the southeast direction in a forest near a stream of water. I should start moving, there is no use waiting for these beasts to catch up first. He thought inwardly and pocketed the map. Ryo didn't notice it but compared to the last time when he saw a herd of beasts and got scared by their terrifying number, he wasn't fearful at all. He simply checked the map while many beasts were coming in his direction. Although they were his allied beasts still he would have shown a little reaction to these terrifying beasts march if this crimson-haired boy was the old Ryo. He enchanted his foot with mana for faster movement as Ryo traveled southeast of the bronze crest shelter. The grassland was spread to a vast region. There were a few trees and shrubs at a far away distance. He also traveled past a small green lake without giving it much attention. The fierce porcupine yellow staged beasts were following him at their own speed as Ryo's stats were higher than theirs. The boy could have ridden these beasts but their sharp spine wouldn't feel good to his chubby bum. Moreover, they would have slowed him down. After traveling for an hour, a forest with birch-like trees came into his view. He halted his marching right outside the forest as the boy saw a battle happening between two monsters. Ryo gazed at the wild beasts that were fighting each other. It looked similar to the fierce porcupine but the spines on its body were not sharp but grouped together to stop any form of physical attack from harming its body. There is actually a pattern with them. 
Beasts of the same family are not at far away distance from each other. Rio remembered how at the Dargus Isle, the beasts of both neighboring shelters were from the same family, and the only difference they had was their physical qualities. One family branch was good at agility while the other one had a great defense. He inspected the one that was overwhelming the other beast with his, heaven's eyes. It was even taller than the opposing party. Name, King Armored Porcupine. Race, Beast. Core, Yellow Stage. Mana, 75. Physical Power, 19 plus 27. Innate Stats, 19. White, 10. Yellow, 17. Beast Soul, Armor. Ah, King Tier Beast. Rio summoned his King Silver Bloom Sword and bolted toward the beasts. He was sure that the second beast was at most a mutated armored porcupine so the boy didn't bother inspecting it. Rio slashed at their bodies, and with two normal attacks they were both cuts neatly apart in their internal organs with blood scattered on the ground. Yellow stage mutated armored porcupine killed. Absorb the core of the mutated armored porcupine to gain 0 to 4 yellow stats points randomly. Yellow stage king armored porcupine killed. Absorb the core of the king armored porcupine to gain 0 to 6 yellow stats points randomly. Beast soul of yellow stage king armored porcupine gained. This was the first time he killed a king tier yellow staged beast in the wilderness. Yet he received the beast soul. A yellow light shone and a yellow stage king armored porcupine beast soul appeared in his mind see. He grabbed the pebbled size yellow core and absorbed them as usual. Core of yellow stage king armored porcupine absorbed. For yellow stats points gained. Core of yellow stage mutated armored porcupine absorbed. Two yellow stats points gained. Rio heard two notifications which confirmed his yellow stats points raised by 6 and became 21. He entered the forest and paraded at a fast pace. The location map pointed was ahead of him. The fierce porcupine had caught up to him. They were many in numbers, Rio was sure they were at least a hundred. He commanded them to follow without causing a disturbance as the boy didn't want to alarm his target. If humans find out there was a beast raid on them they would go back to Earth to ask for help from neighboring shelters. Rio wasn't sure how long the battle would take to capture the shelter so he was making sure to not give them more time. A stream of water came along his path as it was shown on the map. He halted his steps to bring out the map to find the exact location. The map says it is around here but where? He scrunched his eyebrows. He rotated all around on his spot to look for any ascended structure that appeared like shelters but the boy failed to locate any. Rio rubbed his forehead as he couldn't find the marked location of the targeted shelter near the stream of water. He walked at the edges of the river to follow closely nearby the indicated spot on the map. Soon, an underground cave appeared in his sight as it was perfectly hidden on the ground. Rio sighed as he didn't expect the targeted shelter to be hidden underground. He was looking for some tall buildings or something higher from ground level so the boy failed to discover it. Two human warriors were guarding the entrance of the underground cave and a staircase went lower into the ground level. They were hidden behind birch-like trees. If not for Rio following the map closely while keeping his pace slow, he would have wasted more time finding this underground shelter. All the fierce porcupine, take your positions and surround this place without revealing your location. The crimson-haired boy gave a command in a calm voice but a hint of hesitation was flickering in his sea-green eyes. Toby Perry was a peak yellow stage warrior, who was the head of the Iron Wing underground shelter. He was in his early thirties and had a goal to become the head of the purple stage shelter under one of the seven silver swords families. Throughout his fifteen years of career, he made some good connections by bootlicking higher-ups and as he didn't mind lowering his head. The middle-aged man had a sharp tongue for people he disliked or those weaker than him and a good buttering method to please those who were in a higher position than him. This was also the reason Toby Perry succeeded in his life and became the head of the Yellow Stage Shelter despite being having a bad innate talent. One of his good colleagues told him that Toby could become the head of the Purple Stage Shelter under one of the seven Silver Swords family as long as he advance and break through to the next stage. He had a pretty bad relationship with his close relatives and didn't see his family much in his eyes as the man was blind in the greed of chasing power and position to get ahead in life. 
Toby Perry knew that he wouldn't have to worry about money and woman again if he succeeded to reach the Purple Stage and become the head of the Purple Stage shelter at one of the Seven Silver Swords families. However, this highly ambitious man was currently reading reports in his room sitting in an office of Iron Wing Underground Shelter, unaware of destiny knocking on his door. A mana enchanted voice reverberated around the Yellow Stage Shelter, which caused the man to frown in exasperation. Good afternoon, everyone. This shelter you're currently occupying belongs to the Azura race. You have been living on someone else's property. Leave the shelter within five minutes or you would face a calamity. Don't say later, I didn't warn you. A calm voice of a young man resounded and announced a concerning message disguised as a warning to all the humans around. The middle-aged man, the head of the yellow stage shelter, became enraged as he went towards the exit with an annoyed face and fumed in rage who dares to be arrogant outside our yellow stage shelter? Toby Perry asked in an exasperated voice as he walked out of the Iron Wing underground shelter's exit. He saw the two guards at the entrance taking a fight stance as they had already summoned a weapon but the duo were on standby and waiting for others to come instead of going on their own head-on. Hearing this kind of cocky announcement around the shelter, other people also rushed out of the Iron Wing underground shelter with infuriated expressions. They had already summoned their armor, weapons, and other beast souls on their way up. A blonde-haired man in his mid-twenties was standing 50 meters away in front of their shelter. He looked very relaxed and composed. There was not a single hint of nervousness on his face for standing against 32 human warriors all at once. Has this Azura's dog lost his brain? Those fools had sent one man here with their hateful proposals? Ah, what a joke. Toby Perry mocked Azuras and Rio, who didn't use violence directly as he believed talking would be better than blood shading. You have two minutes left. His serene voice was heard again which didn't seem to be nervous at all. Others human warriors started conversing with themselves. He only looks to be in his mid-twenties. We can easily overwhelm him. What if he is a black stage warrior? Nah. Even if he is talented he would be at most in the purple stage. Azuras wouldn't send their most precious genius to a tiger's den. Ads by Pub Future. They thought Azuras wouldn't send a worthy opponent to their door to die but these people weren't aware the Azura emperor had sent his own son-in-law to seal their fate. Toby, who was standing at the front, said in a provoking voice, You think we would be afraid of a single Azura? Even if you brought a battalion with you we would beat you all to a pulp and chase you guys away to the end of the world. You filthy Azuras are just disgusting insects that we would crush beneath our feet. This land belongs to us humans who are superiors to you monster-like Azuras who don't even know how to behave and have a mosquito-sized brain. The awful man started berating Azuras' race for his rotten character. You have one minute left. Rio counted the timer without giving him a look but he was sighing inwardly at their upcoming fate. Failing to intimidate the blonde-haired haired man, the enemy leader decided to overwhelm him with numbers as Rio was standing all alone. Everyone, attack! Toby commanded the human warriors around him as they all marched towards the blonde-haired Azura. Rio, who had failed to convince them which he already expected, shook his head in disappointment. Give them a good beating for taking away your home and your fellow beasts from your family. I hope you will be merciful to the innocents. The blonde-haired man commanded the beast using telepathy to attack while leaving it to human decisions if they retreat or fight. Human warriors' hearts stopped beating for a second in fear as they saw the astronomical numbers of beasts coming out who were hiding behind the trees. Howl! Their enraged cry rang out in the forest as they remembered how these evil humans had killed their family members and friends. One of the female fierce porcupines remembered her sad past and the inflicted pain these hateful foreign creatures did to her to destroy her happy life and her family. She was two months old pregnant with her unborn child when her husband went out to bring food for his small family. That day, a group of human warriors killed her husband while ganging up on him like cowards. She was informed by another fierce porcupine who was able to escape from human warrior's clutches and save his life while witnessing this sorrowful incident in front of his eyes. Soon after this tragedy, the pregnant fierce porcupine had a miscarriage because of excessive crying and for being depressed about her husband's death. Her unborn child died as well, giving her another wound to the heart. It was just a story of one of the fierce porcupine beasts, there were many with such heart-rending stories.
Since the day humans invaded their land they hadn't been able to spend a day or night peacefully. Their sleep and happy days were ruined. They were always worried about getting attacked and losing their life because these humans considered each beast a way to increase their strength. Ads by Pub Future When Yellowstage human warriors saw the swarm of beasts popping out in front of them from their hidden spot, they took an 80-degree spin on their position and ran towards the entrance of the Iron Wing underground shelter. Who would be fool enough to face an army of beasts that were more than hundreds in number? It would be suicide to stay when death was slithering towards them in form of terrifying beasts. Ah! This is insane. How did the situation turn around against us? Oh, damn it, I need to save my life first. Toby Perry also retreated to see the beast's tide approaching him. His cocky expression had vanished as if it was never present firsthand. The ambitious man loved his life more than anything to stay arrogant in face of an upcoming disaster. What use would be of being head of the Purple Stage Shelter at Seven Silver Swords family if he wasn't even able to keep this precious life of his? The man even forget to use the Spirit Stone to command the Emperor Spirit to support them, who lived in this shelter, as the terrifying fierce porcupine didn't leave him a choice to think with peace of mind. He always wore and kept this Spirit Stone around his neck in the form of a pendant while staying in the land of Azura. A four-meter dwarf-like humanoid creature was sitting on a black throne in his chamber at Iron Wing Underground Shelter. His hands to shoulders were covered in spines while there were two sharp brown tusks protruding from its closed mouth. The Emperor's spirit had already heard the commotion but it didn't bother helping the humans as Toby Perry forgot to give a command to support them and it had a bad impression of the humans. After going inside the Iron Wing Underground Shelter, they all darted towards the portal capsule chamber hastily to save their life. The hall was packed with the 32 humans within a few seconds as they all raced toward the portal capsule. Some of the humans had jammed packed the portal capsule by filling it with the numbers as it was not very spacious and others were screaming outside. Hey, you bastard, let us in. Go out of my way you idiot. Why are you all coming in, it won't close. Push him out of here. Don't close the portal capsule. Are you forgetting we all can't go at once? Let's use it one by one. A ruckus started among humans as unity and leadership was missing among them as they were afraid of losing their precious life. A ruckus started among humans as unity and leadership was missing among those who were afraid of losing their precious life. The door of the portal capsule couldn't be locked as it was blocked by others' interruption. One side of human warriors was closing the door while the other side was pressing the button to open it for themselves. They didn't think carefully of a solution to escape this calamity on their head. Everyone wanted to save their life but they forgot one fact, the capsule can only let one person teleport out at one time as each one of them came from a different part of the earth and everyone's destination was set to a different location. Beasts stormed inside the Iron Wing underground shelter as the distance wasn't much between them and humans. Some of the intelligent ones started realizing their desperate situations as they discussed among themselves to find a better solution. These stupid people didn't leave us a choice. We better fight our way out of the entrance and find another shelter. Are you out of your mind? The entrance is blocked by more than a hundred porcupine beasts, and a strange azura is guarding outside. We don't even know his actual strength. Do you have any better idea, magic? Several human warriors came forward to fight back as they knew they have no other option left. They turned around to take their fight stance to face the upcoming enemy. Human warriors were lower in number compared to the astronomical number of fierce porcupine beasts. Their strength paled in comparison but their desire to live boosted their will to fight back. They summoned various beast souls that they had as their survival instinct kicked in since there was no other option left. Beasts' eyes had turned crimson red from rage and hatred towards the humans. This was their chance to take revenge for their lost kin souls. Several humans and an overwhelming number of fierce porcupines attacked each other. Humans had an advantage of fighting in this packed room as not all the yellow stage beasts could enter this place all at once as there was a lack of space. They made an efficient strategy to fight as the one with shield beast soul defended while others with offensive weapons fought from behind. This helped them to drag the fight longer and avoided instant defeat against the fierce porcupine beast who was craving for their blood. Those who were busy with the portal capsule also got affected by the free fire of this battle so they had no chance but to join in and support their fellow comrades. 
As this happened, a brutal battle happened between fierce porcupine and humans of the yellow stage as they clashed inside the Iron Wing underground shelter. The spacious room made for the portal capsule became the war ground for humans and beasts. The boy disappeared from the entrance and went inside the Iron Wing underground shelter. His, Devlin's movement technique, had 20 meters range. It was enough to avoid the attention of others. He searched for the whereabouts of the throne chamber in the underground shelter and discovered a staircase going down to the deeper level. This might be the way. Ryo discarded their fight as he had a more important enemy to face and went towards his final destination. Ads by Pub Future. If he could get the Heartstone, the boy would be able to avoid unnecessary hassle. He expected that the enemy would have already called the reinforcement beast but Ryo wasn't aware of a secret, which he would find out in a few hours. Toby Perry saw the chaos inside the portal capsule chamber, after running his brain for survival he decided to ask the Emperor's spirit for assistance. Armored porcupine Emperor's spirit heard the call for assistance in the fight when a young blonde-haired man walked inside the throne chamber. Ryo summoned his king's silver bloom sword and appeared behind the armored porcupine emperor spirit. The dwarf-like spirit's eyes were filled with surprise as it saw the blonde man vanishing from his sight. It felt a chilly shiver around its neck but it was too late for the armored porcupine emperor spirit to defend itself or move out from his place. The head of Ryo's enemy severed from its neck and rolled down on the floor like a moving football. Yellow stage armored porcupine emperor spirit defeated. On top of the statue, a transparent glowing stone appeared after vanishing from the pendant of Toby Perry. Ryo had heard from Helia that the stone would appear on top of their statue once he killed the Emperor Spirit. Ryo plucked out the heartstone that was flickering yellow and a notification played in his mind. Heartstone of Yellow Stage Armored Porcupine Emperor Spirit gained. Put a drop of your blood to make a master servant contract with the Yellow Stage Armored Porcupine Emperor Spirit. 59 colon 30 59 colon 29 59 colon 28 The blonde-haired Azura commanded the armored porcupine beast around the Iron Wing underground shelter's region to reinforce him. He turned around to go back to the ongoing battle scene. The portal chamber room had 29 humans left, it appeared three of them succeeded to escape through the portal capsule. They may have realized it would only work if one person go at a time and sent the three women, who were among 32 warriors, first. The remaining human warriors looked beaten and blue, with a lot of injuries as blood was flowing from their wounds. There were numerous spines of fierce porcupine beasts stabbed on their bodies from which their blood dripped, dying on the ground in red. These men were struggling hard to keep defending themselves to save their life. As Ryo entered the portal capsule room, he saw the desperate fight of human warriors. I should support them and free them from their sufferings. Ryo spoke as he decided to join in to finish the battle as he was impressed they had some morals left by letting women escape first. Although he wanted to conquer the Iron Wing underground shelters, Ryo wasn't a cold-blooded murderer. He felt pity for their tattered condition. To save his Leah, he had to taint his hands with the blood but that didn't mean he would kill them mercilessly. He would pick the other options if there were any. The reason he wanted to join in was that Ryo had an easy method to end this desperate battle. The boy remembered the words Leah told him after giving him a spell scroll to learn. Spiritual shock will help you during your upcoming missions that father is going to assign you. It will activate a human's AI watch to send them back to Earth. This skill attacks the soul so the brain sends signals to the AI watch that the body is in danger. Ads by Pub Future. Security mechanism will activate instantly and teleport the human out of the land of Azura for a day at least since the damage was only done to their soul and they can recover it after a good sleep. Ryo carefully checked the spell information again as he was going to use it. Spiritual shock attacks the soul of opponent. Those at the same stage or lower will faint and those at the higher stage will suffer from a stunning effect, duration depends on the power gap. Mana, 20. Cooldown, 30 seconds. 30 seconds and 20 mana. This will also allow me to see the effect of my Life Sutra, innate skill as it says to be giving a higher mana recovery rate along with other beneficial effects. He proceeded towards the first target as Ryo gazed at a brownie man and activated Spiritual Shock. A blue light flickered in his eyes and a human warrior at the back felt having a sudden ache in his head as he collapsed on the ground. 
A white light came out from his AI and it enveloped the fainted warrior's body within a few seconds. White light gradually faded away as the collapsed man vanished from the portal capsule room, leaving behind a yellow pill. This incident caused his comrades to frown in fear as they thought it happened because of the beast's fatal attack. Fierce porcupine spine was the weapon they used to attack as it released a projectile arrow from its back towards the enemy from time to time to injure them. Ryo took advantage of this chaos and attacked human warriors one by one. He discovered the mana recovery rate was 1% per second, which brought a joyous to his heart. Don't kill them, just continue to harass them. I'll send them out from here. He instructed the beasts and sent the humans out of the Iron Wing underground shelter one after another. Toby Perry had also suffered the blonde-haired man's turbulence as Rio sent him along with his comrades back to the earth without killing them. A total of 29 pills were scattered on the ground along with blood left by the human warrior's injuries. There wasn't even a place to stand. He heard a galloping sound approaching outside. Seems like they are here. He guessed the armored porcupine beast had arrived to give him reinforcement but Rio was already done with the fight. Go, wait for me outside. He commanded the fierce porcupine to stay out of the underground shelter as the boy decided to execute his next task. Rio walked towards the portal capsule and collected all the yellow stage pills scattered in the room. He didn't have to go for it as all of them were stacked in front of the portal capsule for the desperate fight. These spherical pills were the one-fifth size of a medicine capsule and flickered with a yellow light. It was cold and fleshy to the touch. Rio stored them inside his inner pocket. The boy changed his appearance back to the one that looked similar to Leon as his face changed back to a young boy. He took out the tiny transparent star's glittering spherical object that Helia gave him to use after chasing away the humans from the newly claimed shelter. He placed it at the closed door of the portal capsule and injected some mana to activate it. With a hang. Sound, it connected to the portal capsule and started spinning. Ryo retreated his steps and moved away from the activated spherical object. It sent a projection ray on the floor in front of the portal capsule, which created a big magic circle similar to the one that was present at Teleporter Tower. The line of the magic circle started illuminating with blue light as if it had come to life. A space rift opened right where the magic circle was, and it expanded to become double the size of a regular door. This place is similar to the room of the teleporter tower, magic. He could see a big hall behind the open space rift. There were Azura's warriors standing on the other side with some tools and devices on the ground. When they saw the young blonde-haired boy, a look of admiration shone in their eyes. Why are they looking at me as if I'm their hero? Ryo couldn't understand the reason behind their expression. Azura warriors had already received the orders from Princess Helia to be ready with all the tools and guards for a new shelter. One by one, ten Azura warriors and an old man came out of the space rift. Well done, young man. I'm Isaac Jordan, head of the teleporter tower and also the chief who is managing all the shelters under Devlin's family. Along with Princess Helia, we are working on a top secret mission to take down the shelters. These warriors are trained under me and Princess Helia to take care of these shelters. Today I received news that a young boy has been recruited to our classified work. I was going to send my subordinate to handle the setup of each shelter but then I was summoned by Her Highness. She told me to personally supervise everything. It appears you are very important for Her Highness. The old man gave an amiable smile and explained the classified information about his mission. Isaac Jordan continued, you need to take this Spacelink teleport artifact with you and give it back to Princess Helia. I would take the charge and handle the shelters set up from here. This would take at least an hour. He retrieved the tiny transparent star's glittering spherical objects and handed them to Rio. The blonde-haired boy nodded and received it, who was calmly observing him and listening to his message. The old man walked towards the portal capsule as he indicated with his hands to bring something to the portal capsule. A few Azura warriors carried some magical tools from another side of the space rift and started arranging them up in the portal capsule room. Ads by Pub Future. One magic tool was taken by Isaac Jordan who used it on the portal capsule. He pulled out the portal capsule from the walls and floors. The Azura's warriors were instructed and carried it out of the space rift to the teleporter tower. 
Ryo didn't bother them further and let the old man handle the shelters from here on. He took the stairs that led to the exit and came out of the Iron Wing underground shelter. The blonde-haired boy saw the fierce porcupine and armored porcupine waiting for him outside. The swarm of beasts was more than 200. It was an imposing arrangement of force for any yellow stage shelter to handle all alone. Ryo's eyes shone with an unwavering glint seeing his personal army consisting of brave fierce and armored porcupine beasts as a new plan of conquest started fabricating in his mind. More than 200 beasts, it would be easy to take down any yellow stage shelter with this arrangement. Human warriors may take some time before they wake up and the government collects information about this incident from other 29 humans. I should better hurry and take this chance to claim all the neighboring shelters and not give them time to prepare for similar situations. Rio brought out the map given by Helia and looked at the pointed locations that he needed to claim. There were a total of 149 remaining dots on the map after he claimed the Iron Wing underground shelter. He stored the map inside his pocket and took out the spherical yellow stage pills. Rio injected mana inside it and a bunch of notifications started ringing in his mind. Orb of yellow stage stats points absorbed. One yellow stats points gained. Orb of yellow stage stats points absorbed. One yellow stats points gained. Orb of yellow stage stats points absorbed. One yellow stats points gained. Orb of yellow stage stats points absorbed. One yellow stats points gained. Beast soul of yellow stage fierce porcupine gained. Beast soul of yellow stage armored porcupine gained. Beast soul of yellow stage giant rat gained. Ads by pub future. Beast soul of yellow stage demon ant gained. Emperor called it pills while the AI recognizes it as the orbs. He read the notifications and mumbled quietly. A total of 19 yellow stats points and 29 beast souls were gained from this expedition. His yellow stats points finally reached a total of 40. He was qualified to break through to the purple stage but due to goddess's task, Rio was stuck at peak of yellow stage. He narrowed his eyebrows and turned around to gaze far away in the distance. Monarch Beast. It's as if it is calling me. Rio could feel a new location in far away land from here. It was on the other side of the Shamer Empire in the corrupted land. The boy even knew the name of the place for some reason but he put it aside for now. I don't even have any idea how long this task with Monarch Beast would take or what unforeseen development waiting for me on the other side of this land. I need to finish this conquest of the Yellow Stage Shelter around the Shamer Empire first so it can be helpful to Leah's future. The blonde-haired boy said with an unfaltering voice as his sea-green eyes shone with a hint of warmth for his wifey. Rio kicked the ground with his mana-enchanted foot and bolted towards the next shelter that was situated in the neighboring region. His speed was faster than before as he was at 40 yellow stats points. Like a dazzling meteor strike, a 16-years-old human boy was racing at the border of the Shamer Empire for the Azura's race future with unwavering resolve in his heart. For an hour, he ran along with his beast army of porcupine beasts. The blonde-haired boy heard a notification that the armored porcupine emperor spirit was ready to be summoned as the cooldown of revival had finished. Rio halted his speed as he had already reached the next location for his subjugation and was waiting outside carefully. Armored porcupine emperor spirit frowned seeing the blonde-haired boy not making his move. Why are you waiting, master? Porcupine emperor spirit asked in puzzlement. You can also talk? Rio was astonished to find out that the Emperor Spirit could talk like a normal human. He had never expected that they could speak the human Azura language. Yeah. Even beasts can talk at a higher stage as their intelligence reaches a certain realm. However, we spirits are considered an intelligent race than the beasts which is also the reason we become their guardian. The dwarf-like figure explained with a proud look. I'm waiting for good timing so the enemy emperor spirit doesn't get a chance to summon the beast of this area for reinforcements, Rio said in a composed manner. That won't happen, master. It's a classified knowledge among us to never reveal this secret so we can protect the beast from others. I was surprised that you were aware of this confidential information. But be assured that the emperor spirit of this shelter or any wouldn't reveal this secret to humans and help them summon a beast to support them. 
If we, Emperor Spirit, had exposed this piece of information, those cruel humans at a higher stage could have asked us to summon beasts around the shelters and let them do massacre of these innocent creatures so they can farm easy beast souls and stats points. We would never reveal this secret knowledge to evil humans as we don't want the unnecessary slaughter of the beast. The armored porcupine emperor spirit said and explained in a sorrowful voice. Hearing dwarf-like figure words, Ryo discovered that this classified information about the controlling beast with the help of spirit stone was a secret probably only known to Devlin's family and maybe a few others parties he didn't know about. His sea-green eyes were flickering with a resolute glint as he decided to proceed without waiting any longer. Magic. The blonde-haired boy commanded his porcupine beast army to attack the shelter. His next target was conquered with very little effort as he even had an armored porcupine emperor spirit by his side to restrict and intimidate humans. The blonde-haired boy continued the same method of using his spiritual shock spell to send human warriors back to earth as he disliked unnecessary bloodshed of innocence. Rio carried on with the subjugation of yellow shelters for his beloved wife without stopping after conquering the second shelter. His army of beasts increased to more than 300 by the time he claimed the third one. A blonde-haired man went to one shelter after another, it was a terrifying sight to see as more than thousands of beasts joined his army by the end of the night. As the darkness enveloped the border of the Shamer Empire, Rio reached another forest where he claimed another yellow stage shelter. He activated the Space Link teleport artifact near the portal capsule. A double door-sized space rift opened up. As the other side became visible to him, his eyes widened in surprise seeing the person standing and waiting for him. A white-haired beauty along with blonde-haired girl was gazing at him worriedly. Other Azura's warriors and Isaac Jordan were standing behind the two beauties, bowing their heads in respect. Rio's eyes became tender seeing his adorable wife as Leah came out of space rift towards him and instructed Azura's warriors to carry on the shelter's setup. The trio walked out of the shelter to find an empty place so they could talk freely and have some privacy. The couple didn't want to reveal their secrets to outsiders for now. Except for a few very loyal ones, nobody knew that Rio was married to Lia. Even Isaac wasn't aware of this classified information. A swarm of beasts had surrounded the nearby regions and covered most of the areas around the shelter. Even Helia frowned seeing the striking numbers of Rio's beasts' army. New claimed shelter was located at a spacious location in a forest with taller trees. Moon was glistening in the sky along with twinkling stars, witnessing the trio under their light who had found a good place to set up a temporary open camp. Leah took out a blue couch and a big circular table to place in the middle for themselves. She looked at Rio with a cold face and indicated him to sit. The blonde-haired man had changed back into his young boy disguise on his way back here as there was no enemy he had to hide from. He went to sit on the couch while Helia gave him a look of pity as she knew heavenly turbulence was going to strike the boy for being careless in a few moments. Did you have to go this far? You could have taken it slowly. You're doing a month's task in a day. Why do you have to be in such a hurry? Leah's vexed voice escaped her cherry-like lips. Ads by Pub Future. She was quite mad at him for tiring himself out and incautiously going shelter to shelter to conquer them. He was continuously on his mission to take down yellow stage shelters around the border of the Shamer Empire. The white-haired beauty knew very well how much havoc this boy's action was going to make. When Leah found out what abnormal task he was doing she decided to come by herself. White-haired beauty wanted to convince this careless boy to slow down and give up on his daring continuous conquest. A gentle smile blossomed on his calm face. Don't you think it's better this way? Even if humans sent a force from the purple stage shelter it would take them time to reach and even if they come, they wouldn't able to handle this overwhelming army of beasts. Moreover, I'm not going to stop until I take down the last yellow stage shelter at the border of the Shamer Empire. There is no use convincing me. Rio spoke in a composed manner and a feeble smile was present on his face. Leah sat beside him and looked at him in an anxious way as she was worried. Do you have to be this stubborn? She asked in a bitter voice, as the white-haired beauty was annoyed at him for not listening to her. These yellow stage shelters won't be much help to you but at least this weak husband of yours can only afford this as of now. You can stop me by confining me into shackles. It's up to you if you do that. But this is what I want to attain. We, mortals, think we have a lot of time but it waits for no men. 
As you know wifey, I have a battle with the destiny so I cannot just wait and sip some tea at the Empress Villa. Hope you understand me. Rio said in a nonchalant voice as he wanted to finish it before going for Monarch Beast's battle. His heaven's eyes had boosted his sixth sense and spiritual power to a greater level. Rio was having a bad premonition that his life was going to be in great danger in near future. The boy wanted to do something for Lia as much as possible before that ominous incident happened. I know what I'm doing is risky. But it's not as dangerous as what's upcoming. He gazed into her scarlet eyes which were anxiously looking at him for not able to convince him. What would I do with you? She said in a defeated tone. How about a kiss, even a vampire one would be fine. He whispered to her in a romantic manner. Cough, cough. Helia, who was standing there, coughed and announced to the couple that she was also present there. The lovebirds had completely forgotten her earlier because of their deep conversation and realized Helia was also with them. I hope you will be careful. If you see any risky situations, send me a telepathy message as soon as possible otherwise I will really bind you at home and won't let you go ever. Lia said in a doting tone that was mixed with threats. Ads by Pub Future. Yes, your highness. Your wish is my command. Rio said in a vibrant voice, bowing his head like a faithful subordinate. He could feel from her tone she wasn't joking. Helia, don't stand there like a stranger. Come sit with us. Leah moved her eyes to look at the blonde-haired girl who was standing a meter away from the couch and watched the duo in silence. She hesitated quite a bit but looking at her sister's inviting gaze, the lioness had no choice of declining as she sat beside her sweet sister. I didn't imagine this annoying fellow would have such deep bonding with Leah. They act like lovey-davy couples in such a short time. Helia didn't have her fierce look while she was around Leah. She appeared like a tamed lioness, resembling an adorable kitten who didn't even bite or scratch. Aren't you hungry yet? Leah asked Rio while bringing a few meal containers from her spatial beast soul. It was a container made from transparent white material as it appeared to be very expensive. My new innate skill, Life Sutra, is helping me against getting tired, Rio answered in a relaxed voice. That's okay but you still need to take your proper meal and a night of good healthy sleep. Since you have decided to continue doing this mission, I'm going to make sure husband doesn't stay hungry or go without sleep. Lia said in a domineering voice. Rio knew very well this white-haired beauty wouldn't take no for an answer. She placed three plates on the circle table and brought out food from the meal container to serve her sister and husband. They ate their food together, Leah kept telling Rio to be careful as they had their meal. This is the first time we are all having our meal together, Leah said as she recalled it was their first time as trio. Did you used to eat alone before imprisoning me? Rio asked in a teasing manner. No. Helia and I used to have meals together off dash, what did you say? Leah paused midway and glared at him as she understood his playful sentence. She processed his words slowly in her mind as the white-haired beauty was distracted in conversation and didn't expect him to be mischievous. Rio completely avoided her fierce look, which looked as if she would bite him if not for her sister being around, and asked in a nonchalant voice, why doesn't she join us on our meals then? I noticed she was having her breakfast alone in the morning. Rio didn't want to steal Helia's sister from her. The boy knew Lioness's only source of familial love was Leah and she wasn't that close to her uncle, Dylan. Cough, cough, cough. Helia, who was eating like an adorable kitten, almost choked as this annoying fellow exposed her. She had a good reason for having her meal alone as Helia didn't want to be a third wheel between the newlywed couple. The blonde-haired girl was also embarrassed to join them on their meal after what she had done to Rio on her first meeting. Helia, didn't you say you wanted to accompany father on breakfast from now on so you wouldn't be joining us? Then why were you having your breakfast alone? Leah asked with questioning eyes and looked at her suspiciously. That? Helia was speechless as she couldn't think of an excuse. She might be shy to eat with us and doesn't want to disturb us, newlywed couple, you know. Such a thoughtful sister-in-law I have. Rio praised the lioness as he had put down his cold demeanor around Leah. Ah, I hate this annoying boy so much. Helia was cursing Rio in her thoughts and even punched him a few times but she couldn't show it on her face. 
but Helia needs to get used to this as she asked me in childhood thought. Lia was interrupted as Helia put her hands to seal her mouth to not let the white-haired beauty reveal the forbidden secrets. Lia gave her questioning eyes to ask why she did that while Helia returned back a pleading look as if begging her not to say those embarrassing stuff. She let go of her after Helia saw her beloved sister understood her heartfelt request. Even Emperor was saying she used to tell you something when she was little and now you as well. What was it that you guys are hiding? He scrunched his eyebrows and looked at his wifey with a doubtful gaze. Magic. Leah said with a calm voice, she is probably not comfortable telling you right now. Give her some time, she may reveal it to you on her own. Rio heard her puzzling sentences and narrowed his intriguing eyes as he wasn't able to understand their twisted conversation. They finished their joyous meal together. Leah stored the used plates and meal containers in her spatial beast soul. Rio had a total of nine heartstones, he had already asked Isaac Jordan for a bag so he can use it to store these as it was hard to carry them while sprinting from one shelter to another. He took out those glowing stones with yellow light and hovered his hand in front of Leah to offer his hard-earned wealth, here. Won't you need them tomorrow? Leah asked with a worried expression. I still have, ancient Devlin's beast emperor technique, for my beast's army. He reminded her in a nonchalant voice. But having these emperor spirits would be helpful in case more danger appears. She pushed his hand to his chest and made him keep it to himself. Okay, wait a few weeks and I'll return them to you in fifteen folds, Rio said with a resolute expression on his face, an unwavering glint flickering in his eyes. Leah asked guards to set up a bed in one of the rooms at the shelter for her husband and herself. The white-haired beauty made sure that Rio have a sound sleep. Helia also took one of the rooms to spend the night at the shelter as she didn't want to leave her sweet sister alone. Love was something that made Rio's soul crawl out of its hiding place. Being loved by Leah gave him the strength to embrace the hardships while loving her back gave him the courage to face his own race. Even Lia, Empress of the Azuras, didn't shy away from sleeping in a low-grade shelter that was previously used by someone else. The standard wasn't even compared to a four-stars inn but the white-haired beauty didn't mind it for her dearest husband. It was the same for Helia, she stayed there for her beloved sister and wasn't ashamed to use a room that was previously occupied by the race that she hated most. Ads by Pub Future But why? What was making them do these things? It was all the doing of deep affection they had for each other. A great musical artist once said, Love is silence, lust is a roar. Love is a sacrifice, lust always wants more. Love is giving, lust only takes. Love is a mending of heart, lust only breaks. That night, at the border of the Shamer Empire, the moon, the stars and more than thousands of beasts witnessed the trio of royal family sleeping in a common yellow stage shelter who would one day engrave their names on the golden history of this world. Rio woke up early in the morning after just four hours of sleep. He saw a white-haired beauty was sleeping beside him while her hands were hugging his chest. Her fairy-like face brought a gentle smile but the boy didn't want to disturb the beauty from her slumber. He carefully climbed out of bed after placing a pillow in his place so that her hands could hug. Rio inclined closer to her ravishing face and pecked her delicate forehead. Lia was lost in her dreamland unaware of his affection-filled action as her breathing was relaxed and gentle. He walked out of the room to discover that guards were all around the shelter and guarding it cautiously. His sea-green eyes also detected a familiar figure. Why is she awake? He saw Helia was also on her watch around the shelter. It seems Lioness didn't sleep so she can take care of Leah's safety. His heart filled with pleasant emotions but he didn't wander too much on it. Rio commanded his army of beasts and streaked into the dark forest like a meteor using his mana-enchanted speed. His, heaven's eyes, was enough to give him direction as it boosted his eyesight. After two hours? Lia woke up from her deep sleep and found no one besides her. Ads by Pub Future. Ah, he is so stubborn. She shook her head and left the shelter with Helia. The blonde-haired boy continued his way through shelters for the next seven days. Rio avoided going to his targeted location in line to avoid the predicted patterns and only attacked the ones that had a long distance from each other. Even after all this strategy, there were a few times when his targeted shelter had reinforcement waiting for him but the number of the beast under his command was a few thousand. 
they easily crushed the enemy without any hitch, shattering their pipe dream into smithereens. Some of the people who went hunting didn't dare to approach him as they saw a terrifying army led by the blonde-haired man. A chill ran down their spine just watching the swarm of beasts marching toward the next shelter. The time to conquer each shelter reduced as people started using portal capsules to teleport away on their own as the blonde-haired Azura asked them to leave. This news of Rio's taking down all the yellow stage shelters spread in the human world like wildfire to the dense forest. It caused havoc among people on Earth, they started talking about the blonde-haired Azura. The government had found out more information as some of the mentally wounded warriors by spiritual shock started waking up from their deep slumbers. They told the higher-ups and their close friends how a new demon lord of the Azura race greeted them and asked them to leave Azura's property. Human warriors also described how the blonde-haired Azura doesn't kill them directly and sends them away by using some mental attacks. Some people blamed the dead wouldn't be alive to tell they were spared by the new demon lord. This news became a trend on the internet as it started spreading on social media and online forums. Most people cursed the newly blonde-haired Azura but there were a few human warriors who showed gratitude for his merciful act. They even drew his blonde-haired picture, which was actually the disguise of another Azura's black-haired guard. Some of the escaped women from yellow stage shelters were even bragging about how the demon lord was so handsome and talked to them politely. Rio had become a bad boy crush for numerous women for his evil mixed kind act. Several human experts made a suggestion to find a counter to the enemy's spiritual attacks but in the end, they had to give up on this idea as the astronomical number of his beast army was not something to fiddle with and take as a joke. Human world experts had almost figured out the pattern of how the blonde-haired Azura was only attacking shelters near the border of the Shamer Empire but they were helpless to do anything about it as the pattern changed quite a bit. The reinforcement from the purple stage shelters would take time to send as the yellow shelter was far away from higher level 1. Some of the sent reinforcement reached the destination to find out that it was already guarded by many high-level Azura warriors. Once a shelter was linked to the teleporter tower, they could summon several high-stage Azura experts if they faced danger so it wasn't hard for them to intimidate the punny human warriors. Strong families focused on increasing the defense at their own shelters and didn't dare to leave as they were afraid more Azuras might attack their base if they went to support. Seven Silver Sword families didn't even bother thinking about it as all their shelters were in the corrupted lands. The human warriors around the human countries on Earth were told to report to their yellow stage shelters immediately to protect each of their bases. In the end, the government gave up on looking for a viable solution as it was only a little portion of yellow stage shelters in the land of Azura that was located at the border of the Shamer Empire. There were a great number of yellow stage shelters in the corrupted land that they could focus on. Additionally, the demon lord of Azura wasn't even killing anyone which just assisted in the decision to shut their eyes to all of these incidents. In the span of seven days, Rio took down 58 yellow stage shelters. His innate skill, Life Sutra, helped him with higher mana, stamina, energy, and healing recovery rate and assisted in finishing his conquest as it reduced his resting time. He didn't have to worry much about getting rest but Rio still slept for four hours every night at each shelter because of his loving wifey. Lia was always making sure to feed him well and force him to sleep while Helia accompanied her cousin's sister. After finishing his one-hour theory class on Monday, Rio went to continue his mission to conquer all the yellow stage shelters at the border of the Shamer Empire. Although he was already qualified enough to search for the monarch beast, Rio decided to finish his mission for his wife as he didn't know how long the quest for the monarch beast might take. On the 19th day after starting his mission, he took down the last yellow shelter under humans at the border of the Shamer Empire. The bag on his back was full of heartstones. It's time to return. With a feeble smile, Rio decided to go back to the castle. Rio, with a thankful heart, commanded all the beasts of his army to return to their home shelter's territory. Emperor was extremely happy and smiled ear to ear as he never expected or demanded his son-in-law to take down all the yellow shelters at the Shamer Empire's border. Who would have thought heaven would bless me with the best son-in-law? He only asked Rio to just go after a few yellow stage shelters as a practice match and not waste his time on it as Emperor didn't want to burden him with so many low stage shelters. At first, Emperor Dylan was quite against this idea of marrying his beloved daughter to a human but he had no option as the prophecy foretold this would save his precious Leah's life. 
But now, he was thanking his late father in heaven who predicted his daughter's courageous husband who took down all the 150 yellow stage shelters at the periphery of his empire. On the other hand, Lioness started seeing Rio in a new light as he had done something that she never dreamt of or thought of. Because his army of beasts had reached more than 15,000 at the end of this subjugation that shook the human world. Ads by Pub Future on the evening of the 19th day after he started his conquest, Rio returned to the castle to the Empress Villa. You shouldn't have done what you did, Leo said in a concerned voice as she was already unhappy by his daring actions during the expedition. Why? He asked and walked towards her. It was very risky. What if they had sent High Stage Warrior? She said in a worried tone and watched him coming closer to her. I could have always asked you for help, Rio responded and wrapped his hands around her curvaceous waist. But it would take time for reinforcement to reach your location. From now on, I won't allow you any more such continuous missions. Also, you're staying away from these conquering shelters missions around Shamer Empire's border until you're strong enough to at least face a black stage warrior. Leah announced her decision in a commanding tone. Hearing her decision, he placed his forehead head on her shoulder and said in a defeated tone, As you say, my lord. Rio sighed hearing her and surrendered. He had a mission on hand to go find the monarch beast of the yellow stage. So the boy was not planning to take any more such missions until then. I wonder what benefits I'll get from this quest of monarch beast. His attention went to his bag and said, Here as I told you a few weeks ago. By the way, I have many yellow stage beast souls, do you have any usage for them? You should ask this Helia. She might take them for the trained warriors. Leah took the bag and said with a joyous heart before pecking his cheeks with her cherry-like lips. This was hard-earned heartstone by her husband which made her quite pleasant. For the next three days, Rio spent his time with Leah at the Empress Villa and transferred around 18,000 beast souls to Helia for the low stage Azura warriors they had under them. The lioness was happy receiving numerous beast souls all at once as it would increase their yellow stage warrior's strength. He went back to attend his theory class at Golden Seal Academy where he heard his classmates talking about the new bizarre incident and chaos he had caused in the human world. Why the government didn't do anything against that demon lord of Azura? They probably feared if we harm him he would start slaughtering the humans that were going to be present at his claimed shelters. But it's still very unfair. Now most of the returned warriors fear using the portal capsule again as they will get randomly teleported to the land of Azura and might end up in one of Azura's claimed shelters. What can we do against it? Rio heard their concern but he wasn't planning to help them in any manner anytime soon. He had a more important task at hand to defeat Monarch Beast that would ascend him to the next stage. The crimson-haired boy hadn't met Nyla for the last three weeks. Ads by Pub Future. I wonder what she is doing. Rio went back to his apartment and used the astral recall to go back to the Empress Villa. Three weeks ago. Have you found out where is his shelter? A magenta haired beauty asked on a phone call. Magic. Yes, young miss. Rio Havenglow is currently registered at the Yellow Tower of the Outcast. A middle aged man's voice sounded from another side. You mean the Outcast Tower under the Wilson family? Nyla said in a surprised tone. Yes, young miss but why you asked for this information? The middle-aged man asked in puzzlement. His classmate Sophia Wilson should be at the Purple Tower. Ah. I need to hurry and go to him before he gets closer to her. A competitive glint flickered in her eyes as she clenched her fist. A coldness drowned her adorable face. She said in a commanding tone, arrange a secret expedition. I want to be transferred to the Purple Tower of the Outcast. Why do you want it to be a secret expedition, young miss? If we keep it classified we won't able to ask high-stage warriors for your escort. This will increase the difficulty of the journey the middle-aged man replied in a concerned tone while being puzzled. Just follow my instructions and keep it confidential. I can't let others find out. Nyla said in a chilly voice. Okay miss, I understand. However, this will require at least a month for you to go from your shelter to the Purple Tower of the Outcast Shelter. We will need to use a safe path which would require many detour routes. He spoke to convince her for the last time by telling her the disadvantages of keeping it secret. Okay, 
prepare this as soon as possible. She instructed him and cut the call. The middle-aged man sighed and went to prepare for the secret expedition. I'm coming, darling. Nyla said with a cute smile as her eyes were filled with unwavering glint. The cheerful girl didn't know that her action was going to change many people's fates. A terrifying storm was roaring at the other side, waiting for the girl's arrival. The stars of destiny were arranged to bully a lone shining star in the middle of their encirclement. But a few miles away, a streaking stubborn purple meteor was rushing in their direction at full speed. They were unaware of the upcoming uninvited guest but this was going to shake them to their core. Oblivious of these matters, Rio walked towards the teleporter tower. Rio walked towards the teleporter tower. His destination was Bright Forest Watchtower Shelter. It was a purple-tier shelter under Azuras in the corrupted land. This was where he was getting a calling signal for Monarch Beast as if it was inviting him to their place. This also felt as if a living compass was in his mind, he could sense the direction. It's better Lia doesn't find out. I don't want her to get worried unnecessarily. Rio thought worriedly and changed his appearance into Leon. He received a teleport glyph for Bright Forest Watch Tower Shelter from the old man. Rio entered the reserved room for the royal family with the fist sized brown paper. After climbing up the ascended platform, he tore apart the teleport glyph for his next destination and disappeared into the space rift. The Bright Forest Watch Tower Shelter was situated in Sun or Forest. It was a landscape far from the Shamer Empire and any human shelters. The reason was simple. This forest had a strange phenomenon that no beast lived there. Humans had no reason to wander in this land's direction due to a lack of treasures to satisfy their greed. Rio walked out of the bright forest watchtower and his vision welcomed a lengthy grassland in front of him that was expanded too far away in the distance. Rio was getting a calling sensation for the monarch beast that was beyond the grassland. He didn't waste any time contemplating his choices and kicked the ground beneath him to bolt in his target's direction. The blonde-haired boy traveled past the grassland after sprinting for an hour. His yellow stats points were double that of a yellow stage warrior so it helped to boost his speed. The Life Sutra, innate skill helped him with stamina and mana recovery to keep him refreshed. A green mountain, whose top peak was hidden in clouds, appeared in front of him. It was extended to both sides and had a detour to go past it. There should be a way. He activated his, Heaven's Eyes, which helped him see the detailing of mountains from his location. There was a narrow path made at the bottom. Found it, the calling of Monarch Beast is beyond this mountain. He spoke in a quiet voice and entered the narrow path that was covered in vines. It led him deeper and reduced the distance to the other side of the mountain. The number of vines increased as he traveled further away. Ah, even many enchanted hands aren't enough to tear it. He summoned a silver bloom king's sword to slice them apart to clear his path. Rio had to use mana enchantment on his silver bloom king's sword to finish this weary task. Magic. After crossing the straight path, Rio saw an enormous green lake whose ending was invisible to him even using the heaven's eyes. Ads by Pub Future. There were moving circular stones on the surface that were big enough for two people to stand on it. These floating platforms were moving to the edges of the lake to wait a few seconds before going to the other side whose ending was unknown to the blonde-haired boy. He looked around to look for another route but it was of no use. I need to use these to go to the other side. There doesn't seem to be another path. Rio saw a returning circular stone in his direction and walked towards it. When the floating stone appeared in front of his foot, he calmly landed on it. After waiting for a few seconds, it started flowing towards the other side of the enormous green lake. Rio finally departed as he kept traveling on the surface of the water using the floating stone towards his destination. After half an hour, the boy was closer to the other end as he could see a huge green dome in the distance and a small island was visible in front of him. So this is where Monarch Beast lives. As Rio reached closer, with the help of his, heaven's eyes, he could clearly see a majestic dome that was enormous. It was covering the whole island inside its body as if protecting it from the outer world. This huge dome was made of transparent green light, covering a dense green forest inside its perimeter. As he landed on the island, the transparent green bubble surface was in front of him. 
he saw a big board placed to the side which had a message written on it. Uninvited guest would burn. Usage of the beast soul is forbidden. The monarch beast is calling me. Ain't I invited already? He mumbled and summoned his beast soul. A defensive layer covered his whole body, head to toe, enveloping him in a protective yellow light. Let's see. He walked towards the green bubble that was part of the huge dome and placed his left hand's index finger inside it. As soon as Rio's finger entered the dome, it lit up on the green flame. Within a second, the armor on his finger was damaged. The blonde-haired boy instantly withdrew his hand as it was his human instinct to retreat in danger. My finger didn't hurt? He inspected his left-hand finger, the beast's soul's part was burned there but his bare skin was completely unharmed. Rio tried putting his finger without the beast's soul. Fortunately, the outcome was positive. He sighed inwardly and recalled his beast's soul as it would be bad to waste it unnecessarily. The blonde-haired boy entered the bubble to land inside the green forest with a pleasant heart. Thick trees had jammed the place with a small path going towards the monarch beast location. Ads by Pub Future Wherever his eyes moved he only saw greens enveloping in its embrace. Azure and white butterflies were fluttering their wings as they flew around to go towards the same path he was traveling. Sun barely entered this dark place as it was covered by the broad crown of thick trees. But the surrounding area was illuminated by a blue light whose source was unknown. He moved deeper into the dense forest. A small waterfall was falling down from a heap of stones that formed a small stream of green water. After traveling for five minutes, the color of the trees changed as their branches were filled with pink leaves. The ground was also dyed pink by the fallen leaves. The scenery became surreal the further he walked. Rio could see a bright glowing light in distance, he fastened his pace towards this direction as monarch beasts' whereabouts could be felt there. The calling was getting stronger as he traveled deeper into the forest. He wasn't nervous at all as, Heart Sutra, helped him to keep a relaxed mind. As he marched past the pinkish land, a place with small tree-sized mushrooms came into his view, which was in three different shades of red, blue, and yellow. A large pond was in the middle with fireflies flying around along with many butterflies of azure and white color dancing alongside them. There were big red lotuses on the water's surface and colorful bloomed flowers scattered everywhere, making this place appear like wondrous land. But all this magical scenery failed to get his attention. His eyes were fixated on a beautiful figure, a ravishing girl who appeared as if she was part of this magical fairy tales like garden. This lady looks as if she is one of the artistic flowers in this magical forest. A gorgeous figure was gazing at him with her green eyes while sitting on a root that was covered in moss which was spread horizontally a dozen centimeters above the ground as if it wanted to let the dazzling beauty sit there and use it as her throne. A cold smile was flashing on her plumpy red lips. Her long, pointy ears poked out of her orange-red hair that was falling down on her firm bosom. The elf beauty's ripe melons were showcasing their charm as she was drowned in a one-piece white dress with cyan patterns on her shoulder that barely covered her curvaceous body. However, it was enough to hide all her important jewels. Her sexy slender legs gave her a seductive appearance as it was boldly revealed to the audience. Any other man would be charmed by her ravishing figure and it was said that elves' beauty was blessed by nature who lived for thousands of years. Rio had heard about elves in fairy tales but he never imagined he would meet one. Even in the land of Azura, it was a rare experience. Welcome, Rio, I have been waiting for you. Haven't humans or Azura taught you that it's a bad manner to make a lady wait this long? TSK. I thought you would be a gentleman. Aish. A charming voice escaped from her plumpy red lips. The orange-red-haired beauty spoke in a tone as if she was disappointed by this young boy but her coquettish voice also showed the girl was just teasing him for fun. Equals 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 slash forward slash forward slash forward slash equals 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 equals. Snow note. This elf was supposed to enter the story at this point but I don't know how well her character will be developed and how much screen time she will get. Hope it goes well. The designing of the whole fantasy forest and setup took a lot of time. This location is going to stay in the story as an important place so needed to create well. She was as if one with the flowers around her. Rio could feel a vibe of nature filled in her melodious voice. 
All the way to here the blonde-haired boy was planning how would he fight the monarch beast. He was prepared to summon his silver bloom king sword and a beast soul armor just to take down his long-awaited target. But who knew it was all going to be for nothing? His quest for monarch beast was a beautiful lady who was finding joy in teasing him. She even greeted him when he arrived at the invited location. The boy didn't imagine such an orange-red-haired beauty to welcome him like a good host to her garden-like home. Ryo was taken aback but he adapted soon to the new situation as, Heart Sutra, helped him to maintain a serene mind. Hi. He responded in a calm voice to the elf girl. She frowned at hearing his reply and looked as if someone had done wrong to her. Just a hi? How boring. The orange-red-haired beauty said in a complaining tone. I was expecting a fight right after encountering you. Who would have thought you would welcome me as if I were your guest, Magic? It's also surprising that you already know about me and here, I have no clue about you or what I should call you. Rio responded in a nonchalant voice as he decided to play along. She doesn't seem to be vigilant of me. I should find out more by talking to her. He was on watch out for her actions and observed her closely. The boy knew to not put his guard down even if she was a dazzling beauty. I thought you would have known about me. Since you don't then I'll introduce myself. I'm Eve, the empress of the elven race who had been transported to this world. So, unfortunately, I'm no longer an empress as I am living on this planet, that you know is the land of Azura. Orange red-haired beauty spoke in a proud tone but there was a loneliness in her voice. Rio didn't say anything as he could guess she wasn't done with her talking. As expected, Eve continued, I was hoping Goddess would have informed you everything about this quest before you came here but it appears she hasn't told you anything yet. So let's just proceed to the next stage. And what's the next stage? He asked her as she was smiling mysteriously while gazing at him. This guy doesn't seem to be affected by my charm. He is even very relaxed and has zero nervousness. The orange-red-haired beauty was monitoring him closely because she found his calm demeanor irritating and fascinating to her taste. With an evil smile, she announced, You need to defeat me. Do I have to fight you? He scrunched his eyes as his elegant opponent's words did not resonate with her intentions. Are you scared? She said in a hushed tone and giggled in an adorable manner. The orange-red-haired beauty wasn't trying to seduce him but her actions could tempt any man to fall for her alluring charm. Not really, Rio said in an unemotional tone and tried inspecting her with his, heaven's eyes. Name, Eve Sage Green. Ads by Pub Future. Race, Elf. Innate Rank. Root. Mana. Physical Power. Don't worry. This monarch lady is a true apostle of peace. Violence is not allowed in my territory, you should be aware of it since you have traveled to my place. If I ever fought, it would be on the bed where I wouldn't mind getting conquered by a kind and gentle man I cherish. She said in a coquettish tone. Eve narrowed her eyes and stared at him who was calmly reading her status. Orange red-haired beauty said with a cold tone, you're a bad boy, it's a bad manner to look at someone's information without their permission. How did she find out? Rio was speechless as it was hard to tell that he used, heaven's eyes, on her. He tried changing the topic as that was the better option to go with. So how do I have to defeat you, Rio asked while staring into her green eyes that lost their coldness hearing his question. By showing that you understand the people around you. Rio, I have been watching you since you were little and observing all the people you have met until today. I know things that you don't know. I know everyone's true character and their heart. Your test will be based on your analysis and understanding of other people's hearts. If you fail this trial, you will be staying with me here for the time being and your root, as well as cores, will be sealed until you learn your lessons as I'll train you personally. She explained to him while watching his facial expression for any horror or nervousness. The orange-red-haired beauty wanted to see a hint of fear on his face but she failed in her attempt to discover any. With a disappointed heart, she snapped her fingers. A green equal arm balance scale device appeared in front of them. It had two pans made of yellow materials suspended on opposing sides of a lever. Eve snapped her fingers one more time and six white pebbles hovered in front of them which was at an equal distance from their spot. 
Each one had a name engraved on it, which were patents, adopted grandpa, second mother, Layla, Leah, and Nyla. What does she want to do with these? He frowned slightly looking at this setup of her which consisted of the name of people and an equal arm balance scale device. This is a heavenly treasure I borrowed from the goddess for your trial. These are the white petals that consist of the name of people who loved you in your life. A petal will weigh more if the person representing it loved you more in your life. Unconditional love and pure love would win. So this trial is where we both will pick one white petal. If your white petals weigh more than you win and if the one I choose weighs more than you're staying with me here. She described in a nonchalant voice but at the end her tone became vampish. Rio carefully listened to her explanation and grasped it as he needed to prepare for the upcoming trial. I'll go first. She spoke with a smile. Ads by Pub Future. Eve moved her hands and hovered her hands in front of the white petals one by one. Her hand swayed between Leah, Patton's, and Layla but after teasing him by going on all of them one by one she stopped in front of her parents and tapped the space in front of it as she was sitting at some distance from it. The white petal with the parents tag flew to the left side of the yellow pan and landed on it. The left pan instantly declined toward the ground and became unbalanced. Your turn. Chose a white petal with a person's name whose love weighs as much as your patents or more if possible. If you succeeded you will get one point. She said in an amusing tone. Whose love weighs as much as my parents? I have never met my parents so how would I know how much they loved me? Rio asked as he scrunched his brows. Oh boy, if you're having trouble then just pick one that loves you unconditionally like how a parent does. There is only one among these five who loves you for who you're. That love is as pure as a mother's love. Also, don't forget that you cannot fail even once. A friendly tip, just for you. Keep the bitterness of heart away from your mind or else you will lose. Eve said in a mysterious tone. The names on the white petals were written as adopted grandfather, second mother, Layla, Leah, and Nyla. Did my parents really love me unconditionally? Rio was taken aback hearing the requirements but he kept his calm and focused on the task at hand. Loves me unconditionally? He started running his brain and thought about each person one by one to filter out his options. Can it be the grandpa? He adopted me when I was little but it's a mystery what happened in the past. Grandpa might have some connection with my birth parents. Let's put this option aside for now. Rio mumbled inwardly and moved his eyes to the next white petal which had the name Second Mother engraved on it. Or is it Second Mother? She appears to be a real mother to me but she is still a mystery. I don't even know what happened between my parents and her. Second Mother said she adopted me because she knew my birth parents so her motherly love for me is because of the old bonding she had with them. If I wasn't related to them she wouldn't care about this nobody. She does love me unconditionally now but it is because of my parents. Why is this so hard to choose? He disregarded the petal with the second mother name for now and sighed inwardly. Rio's eyes moved to the next option. The name engraved on the white petal made his heart pleasant. Equals 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 slash forward slash forward slash forward slash equals 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 equals. Snow note. Who can guess the answer? Who actually loves him unconditionally among the five? Is it Leah? Second mother? Adopted grandpa? Layla? Nyla? Let me know if you can guess it correctly. Rio's eyes moved to the next option. The name engraved on the white petal made his heart pleasant. Leah? She treated me best since I met her although wifey was a little hesitant at first. She loves me the most for sure but Leah mentioned that she needed to marry a human to reverse her wheel of destiny. Yeah, she loves me unconditionally now but it didn't develop without a base of a condition. Marriage and prophecy were the foundation of it. However, she seems to be the ideal right answer more than others. He thought in a self-assured manner. His eyes moved to the next white petal in line that took away his joy from him. Layla? No, she didn't try to contact me again. It cannot be her. With a sour heart he moved to the next one. Nyla? This girl is a mystery herself. 
I thought she was just chasing me for her goals and had gained intense attraction for me after I had dueled with Talia who apologized to her. But I didn't realize it was love toward me. This monarch Eve said it's a heavenly treasure from goddess so it shouldn't be wrong. However, Nyla wanted to use me as a tool to escape her arranged marriage with that playboy. So her affection for me didn't start without a reason. It can't be her either. Rio sighed inwardly as the last two choices were the easiest to decide. He moved to the three he had to pick from and thought carefully about each of them. Who could it be? Grandfather or Lia or second mother? I used to think grandfather was a single old man but later I found he was enveloped in secrets and riddles that hit him well. He pretended we don't have money so we can stay in a small town. It would go that way of hiding me from second mother if grandpa didn't find out he was going to die. It feels like he wanted to hide me away from second mother for some reason. This makes me certain to doubt him as well. If I'm not wrong he may be related to my birth parents. As for second mother, if grandfather wanted to keep me away at distance from her then he should have had a good reason. Not forgetting the fact that she is connected to my birth parents. It also removes her from being the person who loves me unconditionally. So ultimately, it can be only Lia. There is no one who loved me like her. She even went against her own father, Emperor Dylan for me. She is hiding my strength from everyone or else I might have been killed already for having core and root at the same time. So it's Lia. Rio smiled gently and hovered his hand to tap the white leaf in front of him that he chose. However, a tingling sensation flickered on his neck, his heartbeat became faster and he halted his hands from tapping the space in front of him. Rio hesitated as his sixth sense kicked in at right time to warn him that something was perilous happening. Why am I feeling this tingling? What's wrong? He started thinking about everything carefully from start to end since the boy arrived at this place and remembered what Eve told him. Keep the bitterness of heart away from your mind or else you will lose. As if this was the key to the puzzle of the unsafe feeling he processed her words meticulously. Why would she say such things? His eyes moved to each of the white petals and stopped on the one that made him feel bitter. Layla. A scene of newly unsealed memories of childhood started playing in his mind. Ads by Pub Future. A girl rushed to save a little boy. He was just a child. She brought him to medical care and even tried to cheer him up. What benefits could I have given her at that time? Money? I don't have that and she is probably one of the richest people in the human world. Rescue from an arranged marriage? We were too young for that. A person of prophecy? These are not even common on earth. A child of someone she knew? Her grandfather wouldn't thrash me if that was the case. I had nothing, I was a nobody. Rio mumbled inwardly and a forced smile flashed on his cold face. What's happening to him? Eve observed the blonde-haired boy contemplating alone as he was deciding which white petal to pick. Meanwhile, Rio was lost in his memories as a few more scenes from old times played in his mind. A 16-year-old girl, whose face could make anyone feel peaceful with a single look, had her cheeks moist as her eyes were red from tears. What happened, big sister Layla? The young boy asked in puzzlement as he sat beside her. He was a 13 years old and had a face full of naivety but his eyes were filled with concern for the beauty beside her. Government has sent my AI watch. Grandpa said I have to stay in the land of Azura until I reach the purple stage. The black-haired girl said in a sorrowful tone, forgetting the fact she had to hide it from others. So why are you crying? The crimson-haired boy asked with questioning eyes, he didn't think to ask about the land of Azura or the purple stage as his first priority was not to see her in tears. Won't you get mad at me and blame me that I forgot you because I wasn't here with you because of the training? Layla said in a quiet tone while her tears slid down her cheeks as she looked at him with expectant eyes. Are you crying because you're worried I'll blame you? Don't worry about such things. I'll never blame you in my life no matter what happens in the future. Because I know big sister Layla is the only person who loves me and she will come back again to me even if it takes some time. He assured the black-haired girl with a gentle smile and ruffled her hair while wiping away the tears from her wet cheeks. Would you really wait for me? Her voice was filled with sadness but her eyes flickered with a glint of hope. 
As time passed, they had become best friends of each other. For her, he was her only best friend. Deep down in their inexperienced hearts, the duo had profound feelings for each other. Ads by Pub Future They were like siblings who loved to bicker with each other. They were genuine best friends who knew each other's secrets. They were like loving partners who cared for each other and thought about what would benefit them. They were each other's mother and father who adored one another when they were upset and loved unconditionally. The little sweethearts had both found the little family in themselves that they always craved. I'll always wait for you. I promise. He said in a resolute voice. Won't you miss me? She asked again with an expectant expression. Layla thought he doesn't care much that she is going away for many days. I don't want to be the reason to hold you back. Although I always miss you on weekdays. It would be like living in hell to not be with the only friend I have. He said with a bittersweet smile. Rio also was sad by hearing the piece of news of her departure but he didn't want to sadden her by showing his tears. He wished only the best for her, a happy life where she would be happy. Am I just a friend to you? She asked in a bitter voice while gazing into his innocent sea green eyes. You're my best friend. My future wife. Don't ever forget that. He said in a commanding tone to the black-haired beauty who brought serenity to his heart as they giggled together. Two years later. When Rio turned 15 Dr. Lady gave him the inheritance that his adopted grandfather left for him. There was enough money to rent his own accommodation. He was tired of living in school dormitories and wanted to spend his time alone. Rio decided to rent one bedroom hall kitchen apartment nearby his school. He decided to buy local ready made food to eat for his meals as the boy didn't know how to cook. This routine continued for a few weeks, but one day he fell sick and caught a high fever while Layla was away at the land of Azura. He was laying on his bed in his new rented one bedroom hall kitchen place covered with a blue blanket that Layla had bought for him. Someone called him on his cell phone as it started ringing. He was laying on his bed in his new rented one-bedroom hall kitchen place, covered with a blue blanket that Layla had bought for him. Someone called the crimson-haired boy on his cell phone as it started ringing. Hello? He picked up without looking at the name on the screen as the boy knew there was only one person who could call him. Rio? Why does your voice sound so weak? What happened Rio? Are you okay? A worried voice sounded from the other side of the phone. Yeah. I am Fee, and E. Rio said those words in a light tone, trying to be as normal as possible to not let her know about his condition. Cough, cough, cough. However, his illness wouldn't listen to him and exposed the cautious Rio in front of the black-haired girl. Rio, I told you not to buy unhealthy meals from the local store. They don't cook the food properly but you didn't listen to me. Layla said in her motherly instinctive voice. She was scolding him for not listening to her words. But I don't know how to cook, what would I eat if I don't buy it from the shop? He said in a weaker and leaden manner. Why didn't you tell me? I would have taught you how to cook. It's not that hard. Layla questioned him as she was worried and pacing in her room. You would have asked me to cook in the future every day when we live together if I learned to cook, cough, cough. Rio said in an amusing laggard voice as he could barely talk. Rio, it's not a good time to joke. Please wait for me I'll come soon. She berated him for his mischievous speech. On the other side of the phone, the black-haired beauty's face was full of concern and a saddened glint could be seen in her eyes. Nah. I'll be fine soon, you shouldn't come for trivial matters or your grandpa will get mad at you. He said in a leaden voice and tried convincing her to not worry. It's not a small matter for me while you're sick and I'll make an excuse of going to another shelter or getting lost in the land of Azura. Just wait for me. Saying that she hung up the phone. Layla walked towards the portal capsule in her apartment at the Golden Seal Military School to sneak out from her registered shelter as she thought it may take more than a day to return from her boyfriend's place and wanted to take care of Rio properly. If the black-haired beauty had to hide this fact from her grandfather she had to first go away outside her registered shelter and find another one to return to her room at the Golden Seal Military Academy. 
If our boy had seen her apartment he would have become stupefied to find out his apartment at the Golden Seal Military School was the same one she was living at. Their fate was closely linked to each other that nobody was aware of. Heaven had bound these two lovebirds to each other even before they were born into this world. Three hours later. His apartment's door opened and a black-haired girl entered the big hall. She had a spare key to Rio's new rented apartment as they had decorated this place together. After all, it was also going to be her house in the future as well. The couple had planned to buy this place when they marry in the future. Ads by Pub Future A male doctor followed behind Layla. He was a middle-aged man with brown hair. They went to the bedroom where a human was sleeping while covered in a blue blanket. Layla went to his bedside and removed his blanket slightly to reveal his face. A boy peeked from inside to discover the girl's anxious face. Rio, I'm here, let the doctor examine you. She said in a worried tone and ruffled his hair in a loving manner. The doctor sat on a chair beside the bed and inspected the patient using the medical devices he had. After checking the crimson-haired boy doctor had a frown on his forehead. What happened doctor? Layla asked in a concerned tone, her face had darkened seeing his scrunched eyebrows. He has contusus tonsillaris. It's a contagious disease. We need to shift him to a separate room at the city hospital where others cannot be in contact with him or we will be affected by this disease. The doctor responded in a serious tone. He was already thinking to run away from this place and get a bath as soon as possible. But as a doctor, this was his job and had to come to check on Rio as he was paid handsomely by the black-haired beauty. Is this a serious problem, doctor? How did he catch this contagious illness? She asked with intrigued eyes. It would get serious if he doesn't recover from his fever in 48 hours. He has most likely got it from eating contaminated food. Good care is required to fix him and giving medicine on time. So we need to shift him to the city hospital. He responded in a worried manner. If he goes to hospital they would treat him like a disease and seal him in a room to keep others from getting into contact with him. No, I cannot let them mistreat him. They wouldn't take good care of him. You said he needs good care and getting his medicines on time. So can I look after him at home to recover his fever? Layla asked in a concerned voice. Yes, you can. But you may also get infected by the virus. It's dangerous for you. So we should shift him to the city hospital. He warned her as the brown-haired man didn't want her to get sick as well. I understand, doctor. Thank you. She said in a gentle voice and indicated the doctor to leave after getting the medicine prescription. After bidding the doctor farewell, she boiled hot water so that Rio could drink. Drinking cold water would be bad for you. She mumbled while placing her hands under his head and ascending it slightly to help him consume the hot water. After his head was placed on the comfy pillow again he gazed at her serene face and said in a worried voice, you shouldn't stay around me. I don't want you to get infected by me. Shut up. Layla glared at him with puffed cheeks and covered him with the blanket. Rio kept quiet like a good little boy. Ads by Pub Future. I'll go buy medicine and some food. Call me if you need anything. Layla went outside the apartment to purchase the things she needed. Rio just slept on his bed, his heart felt a hot sensation that he had never felt before in his life. After 30 minutes, he heard approaching footsteps coming toward his room. She had placed the food ingredients in the kitchen and brought medicine to him in his room. You need to take these medicines on empty stomach. She brought glass water along with her and helped him get the medicine. After that Layla went to prepare healthy food for him. Magic. When she came back with a hot soup, the black-haired beauty found him asleep. She sat on the bed and placed her head on the pillow beside him as the girl gazed at his fatigued face which was currently lost in dreamland. I wish I was sick in place of you and you were all fine, Layla mumbled quietly as it ached her heart to see him in this condition. The girl waited for him to wake up and watched him sleep quietly. After an hour passed, Rio woke up to discover a pair of royal blue eyes gazing at him that was filled with affection and concern for him. Seeing his eyes getting fluttered open, Layla said, let me make soup so you can take your medicine. Rio saw a bowl of soup on the table beside him and said in a feeble voice, you can just boil this one. 
you don't have to make it again. I'll have that for myself later. You need to drink healthy and fresh to get better soon. Saying that she turned around and went to cook another bowl of hot soup for him. After 15 minutes, she came back and put the bowl with the spoon on the table beside the bed. She climbed the bed and placed Rio's head on her chest carefully as the black-haired beauty embraced him in a hug. He watched her affection-filled face and felt his face getting pressed on her firm chubby melons. An aromatic scent of lily invaded his nostril as Rio's cheeks could feel the warmth of Layla's skin. She climbed the bed and placed Rio's head on her chest carefully as the black-haired beauty embraced him in a hug. He watched her affection-filled face and felt his face getting pressed on her firm chubby melons. An aromatic scent of lily invaded his nostril as Rio's cheeks could feel the warmth of Layla's skin. Rio enjoyed the sensation but he was too sick to get excited about it. Layla was a black stage warrior so she had enough strength to lift him up with one hand. She picked up the bowl from the table beside them and feed him hot soup with a spoon as if spoon-feeding a toddler. Rio didn't dare to say anything just drank the delicious soup quietly like a little boy although he was 15 this year and Layla was 18. After the bowl was empty, she put it aside and took the medicine to give him as he was hugged by her like a little child. Good boy. Layla said with a smile as he finished consuming them. She wiped his lips with her fingers after he was done. Layla finished with the task, she was about to place him in his sleeping position on the bed and go to heat the soup that had become colder earlier so she could drink it as she hadn't eaten anything and rushed to reach his place as soon as possible. A tender voice, who was below her head in her hug, asked, Can we stay like this for a little longer? Okay. Layla nodded with a gentle smile and said in a dotting tone as she ruffled his crimson hair. She lay down on the bed while Rio's head stayed in her hug. He could hear her heartbeat and felt relaxed being this close to her that filled him with the warmth of love. I wish I could stop the time and stay with him like this. I wish I could stop the time and stay with her like this. They both thought inwardly the same thing. Layla could feel his hot breath on her plumpy bosoms as he was drowned in a dreamland. The black-haired beauty also fell asleep while hugging her boyfriend. After getting a night of good sleep, Rio fluttered open his eyes. He was sleeping while hugging a black-haired beauty below her. The boy's face brightened seeing her close to him. My fever has gone, thanks to her. He showed gratitude towards her inwardly as Rio was afraid to wake her up. The crimson-haired boy moved closer to her face and pecked her forehead which caused him to raise his eyebrows. Ah, her body is heating. She caught a fever. Layla shouldn't have come. He felt sad as the girl got sick because of him. Soon, Layla's eyelids shook slightly as she woke up. A sorrowful face of Rio welcomed her sight. Why do you look so sad? She asked with questioning eyes. Ads by Pub Future. You got infected by that contusus tonsillaris. You shouldn't have been with me while I was sick. He said in a saddened voice. Layla narrowed her eyes and said in a cold voice okay. I won't do it again next time. You should also maintain a distance from me since I have a fever right now. Rio's heart shook as he heard her unreasonable words. New. No. He retaliated in disagreement as it was unacceptable. Why no? She asked with a chilly face. You know why. I can't let you be sick alone, don't put such restriction. He responded with a smile. That's what I wanted you to realize silly. You can't ask me to not take care of you when you're sick. Do you understand now? She said in a gentle manner as her voice was filled with affection for him. Rio nodded like a good boy as she was sick and he didn't want to sadden her by being stubborn. He asked with questioning eyes, can you teach me how to make soup so I can cook it for you? Rio gazed at the black-haired beauty who was looking at him with her dotting eyes while she was sick. Okay, Layla responded to him with a smile. Magic. Rio brought her phone that was left in the hall and opened the menu to call her. He connected it via video call and gave her one phone while bringing the other with him to the kitchen. Put the container on the induction while pressing the white button. Let the water boil first. Layla instructed him from the other side of the phone and Rio followed the steps closely. After the hot soup was done, he brought it to the bed and climbed onto the bed to feed the girl the same way she did yesterday. 
He carried her up which brought a smile to her adorable face as she didn't resist. Rio hugged her closely before feeding her spoon by spoon. This tastes so good. You need to make this for me every day in the future. Layla complimented the boy which brought joy to him. Is it that good? Let me taste too. The boy had never cooked before so he wanted to try the food he cooked so well on the first try. No, let me have all. Layla grabbed his hand so he doesn't drink it. Just one spoon. He didn't stop and put the soul-filled spoon in his mouth. A very salty taste invaded his tongue as the soup was almost not edible. He scrunched her face and looked at her confused. Why you said it tastes good when it's cooked so badly with excessive salt? He asked her with questioning eyes. For me, it's the most delicious soup I have ever drank. Because you especially cooked it for me. It's filled with your love so how wouldn't it be good? She said with a sweet smile. But? Rio was speechless hearing her sentence. No. But? She placed her finger on his lips to stop him from speaking. The black-haired beauty was pleasant to drink the soup he first time made for her. She would even say no to a heavenly dish in exchange for something her lover cooked. Let me cook again. He said and carefully placed her back on the bed. This time Rio made it perfectly and tasted it before feeding Layla. He gave her medicine and pecked her forehead before putting her on their bed so she can rest. Ads by Pub Future. Rio wanted to hug her to sleep but Layla refused as he may catch a fever again although she knew he was once already infected so he had gained antibodies against the contusus tonsillaris disease. But still, the black-haired beauty was worried as the antibody wasn't fully immune to the disease. When Layla woke up again she rubbed her forehead. Fever has gone already. She looked down below and saw a crimson-haired boy was sleeping in a chair beside her as his head was placed on the bed beside her belly. He looks so adorable. She mumbled inwardly and a gentle smile shone on her serene face. A mischievous glint flickered in her eyes as she came out from her blanket and moved toward his face. After getting closer she blew air into his ears while her eyes wandered left and right in a slow and adorable manner. Um. He patted her hand away as it was tickling and continued to sleep. Even when the boy would be awake Layla usually did this mischievous act to annoy him. A playful expression brightened on her tranquil face as she went closer again with a cute smile. Layla blew into his ear again as she knew it would make him feel tickled. This time Rio opened his eyes and had a pleasant smile on his face seeing her bright face. He stared into her royal blue eyes and they both smiled at each other. Rio grabbed her by the shoulder and pushed her towards the bed as he climbed above her waist. Layla's heart started thumping frantically as she looked at her boyfriend. Rio declined and went towards her face which was turning red from being shy. He stared into her royal blue eyes as she had a coyish look and a gentle smile on her face. Rio looked at her plumpy cherry-like red lips and moved closer to her as their face became closer Layla covered herself with a blanket to dodge the upcoming kiss. She peeked out of the blanket to look at him with a bashful face that was beat red from shyness. Rio smiled back and withdrew without showing any dissatisfaction but Layla could see a hint of disappointment in his eyes which caused her heart to ache. He didn't force his desire on me and stopped seeing my little refusal. Why he is so adorable. Any girl would be lucky to have him as their partner. Layla felt lucky to have such a man as her boyfriend and future husband. She grabbed Rio's t-shirt which took him by surprise and pulled him closer to her to embrace him closely. Layla pecked his cheeks and ruffled his hair as she tightly wrapped her hands around him. Rio felt relaxed in her hug as he enjoyed his face getting rubbed against her rounded bosom. Layla didn't mind it as she had long ago decided to spend the rest of her life with this boy. The lovebirds enjoyed being in each other's embrace. Thanks for watching, please like, share, and subscribe for the next part.